न्यूमेरिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू over to you sir so guys it is not going to be a formula revision session it is going to be complete so complete so means we are going to cover each and every concept in detail like we are going in the classes so you are going to get the same feeling it would be a good revision as i already said it would be acting like a audio book for the complete subject and you would be using it again and again for the revision so guys i welcome you all once again uh, in this session and me and abhinav sir would be completing each and every topic one by one so just be there till the completion of the session definitely you are going to be perfect in this subject after this session and you would be getting a lot new things also which you may not be having before so definitely this combo is going to help you so guys just like the session share the session so that other student can also join and more number of student would be there you will also get the idea of your preparation so that is also required yes 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 guys so hope everybody is ready for the session yes great 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 yes sir so guys uh, complete so will be done and we'll be just telling you that uh, what will be the sequence and uh, how we'll be taking this session hai na what topics i'll be taking and what topics i will be taking everything will be telling you okay so are you all excited ab to ladko ladkiyon ki line lagegi okay 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 so guys just let me tell you first of all this is my abhinav negi the dheera sir okay and uh, this is the complete schedule okay we'll be sharing this complete pdf whatever we are teaching now with ink whatever we are teaching with ink we'll be sharing in our respective telegrams so right now me uh, me and dheera sir is taking then for civil engineering steel structure environment geotechnical and this complete schedule for mechanical tomorrow is thermodynamics and so on okay the every day one single subject will be there Now you can join us on Telegram also for Dheera sir. You can join mechanical by Dheera sir, and for me you can join civil by Abhinav sir. And guys, yes, in today's session it will be complete so complete so through revision, formula, derivation, every chapter, numerical concept, everything. But yes, tonight we are coming again, again we are coming tonight, and that will be purely 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 practice session tonight at twelve. Okay. Tonight midnight at twelve. And guys, for civil tomorrow is Sausa Steel session. Complete steel will be here, guys, from ten a.m. And for mechanical thermodynamics, ten a.m. tomorrow. So today is the day of SOM for civil mechanical both, and tomorrow it will be uh, steel for civil and uh, thermodynamics for this. Now, guys, let me tell you that uh, let me, this whatever do 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 guys, we are super ready. Okay, these are the different topics that uh, is completing the SOM. and we will be covering each of them now let me tell you that first chapter me and dheera sir both will be taking abhinav sir also dheera sir also stress strain curve dheera sir will be taking okay and uh, this dheera sir will be taking and these topics i will be taking hai na sir yes sir okay so first i'll be taking this 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 and then remaining two topics dheera sir will be taking now the second chapter dheera sir will be taking sfd bmd Now third chapter bending stress and shear stress I will be taking. Then transformation of stress that is Mohr circle. Dheera sir taking this. Dheera sir taking shear center spring column I will be taking and pressure vessels I will be taking and deflection we both will can take at the end. Okay. So guys, please one small request. If you are having a pen copy with calculator along with you, it's fine. It's super fine. But please don't write those things that are already here because we'll be giving this PDF. so anything which is not here any formula or any concept or any point that is not here in this ppt please only write that thing otherwise whatever written here will be giving you this yes you will get the pdf on both the telegram channels of ours so you can uh, get that definitely this will also further help you like short notes for revision purpose so guys each and everything is going to be covered and in this complete marathon series all the subjects of mechanical and civil will be covered so even if some of the students are facing difficulty in one to two subjects that also would be recovered by these marathon sessions so guys it is not going to be a revision when you are going to have the notes and you are feeling bored and then you are just closing the notebook and then enjoying with the shorts 
so guys when you would be having here with the faculties definitely it is going to be very very interesting as well and definitely with that you would be in a flow to complete the subject in one go otherwise when you will revise a subject you take two to three days but here in the same day you are going for the subject plus practice session also and also in between you are getting the time for your revision as well because if you are completing at six and once again meeting at midnight you have enough time for revision also and even if you want to appear for a subject wise test in between you can also do that and thoda sa rest bhi le lena wo bhi zaruri hai okay yes so guys complete zoom will be there and somebody is asking please share the telegram link guys we will be sharing telegram link dhiraj sir will be sharing yes. okay i have already shared okay and uh, this is my telegram link i will share telegram link here throughout the day we'll be all here we'll be sharing the telegram uh, channel couple of times okay so i hope you all are ready can you please let me know in the comment section that from which part of the country you are and what is your most 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 difficult topic that you want to revise in very thorough manner where you face more difficulty that also share so that we can give you maximum out of this session and you can get complete benefit of that whatever be your diffi uh, difficult topic where you face difficulty okay sir i feel from all over india we have the students someone is from lucknow hyderabad tamil nadu okay bihar so i feel sir pan india <laughs> students are watching us <laughs> sfd bmd okay karnataka hyderabad hyderabad more circle गोदावरी ओके डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक मोर सर्कल मोर सर्कल ओके कश्मीर ओके सलाम आई एम हिमाचल प्रदेश ओके डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ बीम गाइस एवरीथिंग विल बी कवर्ड एवरीथिंग वुड बी कवर्ड गाइस है ना बस वन स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट गाइस दिस सेशन विल बी वेरी बेनिफिशियल एंड सर आई थिंक नंबर ऑफ स्लाइड्स आर टोटल फोर हंड्रेड टेन समथिंग अराउंड फोर हंड्रेड प्लस स्लाइड्स आर दियर एंड गाइज many of the ppt part we have already uh, taken uh, from last one week we are making this ppt and guys you will believe me or not guys, up to yesterday 5 am or today 5 am today 5 am we are regularly in the phone calls at this point how to write this figure how what should be the thing at 5 am we sleep and then next two hours we again came to office and then we are here up to the evening and then again coming 12 in the midnight for all of you okay so the whole effort is done by whole team yes of course by faculty but in the back end there are so many people so guys this will be very beneficial if you take it in a right way that means guys please if it is possible then please be in a sitting position many of my sir in aise karke dekh rahe honge please be in sitting position just like a proper class guys it will be very beneficial for you if you take it seriously okay So uh, we are coming here. How's the Josh, guys? Everyone, please let me know in the comment section. Please put a heart sign if you are ready. Please put a heart sign if you are ready. Let me just tell you that uh, apart uh, from last thirty plus years, this is the trend for various topics. Okay, but yes, if last five years we see it was almost same topic that you can see that from column moment of inertia and spring, you can see uh, you can see the less number of questions are there. But first chapter properties of material, SFD, BMD, deflection. principal stresses you can expect more number of questions now what is that exact graph exact value that will be given in your pdf okay now uh, this is the sequence in which we will be going today i already told that this first chapter will be done by both then this is by dhiraj sir okay this is by me shear stresses by me this is by dhiraj sir this is by dhiraj sir theory of failure is not in gate for civil mechanical hai sir machine design machine design mein ho jayega theek hai this i'll be taking This I'll be taking. This I'll be taking. This I'll be taking. And this both we'll be taking. So guys, uh, there are two topics. One is theory of failure. Other is testing of properties, which are uh, they are for mechanical, not for civil. Theory of failure is the part of machine design for mechanical. There we will cover, and testing of property we will be covering with material science. Okay, so here we are going to see all other topics. Okay, Bhumika and Mrs. Singh said, C M E both combined syllabus revise. How to consider which M E? Everything, whatever talking we common, are here, na, is for both civil and mechanical. And in actual syllabus also, ninety nine percent is same. Whatever one percent is different, na, that sir will be taking in machine yes, design yes, yes, and yes. differently. So theory of failure and testing of properties are the two topics which are not for civil. That are uh, we are going to cover in uh, machine design and material science. respectively one one 
so all other topics would be covered today they are for both mechanical and civil even if you are preparing for XC paper that syllabus would also be covered but in XC you need to prepare for mechanical uh, sorry strength of material engineering mechanics and vibration part so that also some part would be covered today only so it is equally beneficial for XC paper also so don't worry about that because yesterday also I got some uh, some students were writing messages sir, what about XC and PI so that part also would be covered today only yes any other doubt guys you can ask and then we are starting uh, dear schedule you would be getting on the telegram channel of mine and abhinav sir there the entire schedule of civil and mechanical would be shared okay so don't worry about that so sir i feel uh, shall we start the session yes 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 students are eagerly waiting for that okay 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 let's go let's go guys this is an ESE okay we'll be covering the syllabus of gate today for civil mechanical complete syllabus we'll be doing and if you see that what are the topics from which objective questions are asked so these yellow ones more objective questions will be asked you cannot never see the subjective question from these topics and other topics you can find objective and subjective both yes of course at particular point of time we are covering the entire syllabus okay and more focus towards gate okay now if we talk about the length of the chapter then first chapter the stress and strain that both of us will be taking is the biggest one then this is triple xl then double xl are these white one okay and then uh, green and yellow are little bit uh, this yellow one are the smaller topics okay now for book you guys you can refer for gary and tim Chongke for concepts but numerical here will be more towards the practical life not uh, the questions like that comes in the examination for numerical you can approach any other book like BC, sir, what you uh, BC, Punamiya, BC Punamiya you can recommend or for concept uh, this is the be best, uh, best book, book but other than that if you have RC Hibler is also good one so these two are for concept and for practice like sir have already mentioned here uh, you can also refer BC Punamiya or this book RK Bansal I think okay so sir this is guys <coughs> guys we are starting with the first chapter we are starting with the first chapter. Please put a heart sign if you are ready, guys. So, first chapter, both me and Dhiran sir, both will be taking, guys. Both me and Dhiran sir, both will be taking the first chapter. Okay? Sir will be taking stress and curve part and properties of material, that elasticity, plasticity, ductility, everything. And I will be taking all other things, elastic constant, deformation of bar, temperature, stresses, poison ratio, everything. Okay, okay, okay. So, guys, before coming to the first chapter, let me tell you what is SOM. Guys, strength of material is a subject which deals with deformable body. Strength of material is a subject which deals with deformable body. What does this mean, deformable body? There are two types of body. One is deformable body and one is, one is rigid body. In engineering mechanics, you study rigid body. In your 11th class, 12th class physics, you study rigid body. Now, if this is a body like this, and in this body, if you apply n number of forces, one force this, one force this, one force this, one force this, and this is the point one, and this is the point two, this is the point one, and this is the point two. And if by applying n number of forces, if by applying n number of forces with any magnitude, with any high magnitude or any direction, any magnitude or any direction, if you are applying forces and the position of A and B is not changing and the position of A and B, the relative position of 1 and 2 is not changing, then it is a rigid body. Then it is a rigid body. Okay. And if 1 and 2 come closer, 1 and 2 go apart or 1 and 2 orientation is changing, <coughs> then in that case, it is a deformable body. Guys, let me tell you in real life, let me tell you, in real life, everything, in real life, everything is deformable. Even this remote is deformable. If I apply the force, it will elongate. It will elongate. If I apply this kind of force, it will compress. Yes, that compression and that elongation is not visible by naked eyes. That elongation and that compression is very, very small, 0.0001 into 10 power minus 11 meter or mm. That will be very, very small. Okay, so SOM deals with deformable body and engineering mechanics deals with rigid body. Okay, so in actual, everything is deformable. Rigid body is just an assumption. If you as say that this body is a rigid, that is an assumption. Okay, now SOM deals with internal forces and engineering mechanics deals with external forces. What is internal forces? External forces 
I will tell you just in next 2-3 minutes. Okay, like this. If I apply the force, this will be compressing. If I apply the force, this chappal, this slipper is compressing. That is a deformable body. Actually, everything is deformable. Iron is also a deformable body. But that deformation is not visible by naked eyes. So, a student entering into the science stream, learning physics, first time he study a deformable body in strength of materials. In school, in engineering mechanics, every body is considered to be rigid body. Now, this is SOM. So, in SOM, we study about the deformed body. How much is the deformation? How much is the elongation? How much is the change in angle? How much is the elongation? Everything we are studying here. Now, this is the first chapter that me and Dheera sir both will be taking. Okay. And then, uh, in between also, we will be telling you that uh, in this order, we will be going. Okay. Now, let us come to the quickly, 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 Let's start with the first chapter. Om Ganesh Ja. Okay. Now, first thing, what is stress? Now, most of the students from last 10 plus years, if I'm asking that what is stress in this body, here if I'm applying a P force in this body here, and here if I'm applying a P force in this body here, what is the stress here? If the area of the cross section is A, if the area of the cross section is A, what the students are saying that, sir, the stress value I am representing by a sigma word, okay, a Greek letter sigma, they are saying that, sir, stress is force by area. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Now, let me tell you what actually is stress. See, if this is a body and here you are applying a P force, here you are applying a P force, Suppose I cut this body from here. Ah, 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 ah. Suppose after cutting this body, I name this part as 1 and I name this part as 2. I name this part as 1 and name this part as 2. Then from here, if I draw the free body diagram of one part, if I draw the free body diagram of one part, this is P and free body diagram of two part, this is P. Now, my friends, my champions, my commandos, if I cut a section and this was part 1 and this was part 2, now what is happening? Whatever I am telling you now in SOM that I will be repeating this marathon at least 50 times. At least 50 times I will be repeating this. Now see, now see, if this is a power body, this is the equilibrium body, equilibrium body, here P, upward, here P, downward, it is the equilibrium body. If a body is in equilibrium, remember my words, if a body is in equilibrium, that small part is also in equilibrium. If Abhinav Negi is in equilibrium, my nose is also in equilibrium. It is not going to Khandala. If Abhinav Negi is in equilibrium, my hand is also in equilibrium. Okay. So, my friends, my commandos, if whole body is in equilibrium, small part is also in equilibrium. Right now, it is not showing in equilibrium. Therefore, when you cut a section, here internal force should be coming. Here comes the internal force. Now, it is in equilibrium. See, whole body is in equilibrium, small part must be in equilibrium. It is right now, it is not in equilibrium. For downward P force making it equilibrium, this is P acting. So, these blue forces are internal forces. Guys, whole PDF will be giving you. These blue forces are internal forces. Internal forces are those forces. Internal forces are those forces which we obtain once we cut the section. Which we obtain once we, it is not, act some, it is not written something here. There are no forces here. Okay. So, see, I am standing here. Yeah. This Abhinav Negi is standing on the ground. Here is some reaction. Here is some reaction. But that reaction is causing some tension or some compression in my legs. That inside my legs, inside my legs, the forces are internal forces. But the ground reaction is external. Similarly, here these two forces are external. And once we cut the section inside the legs, that are the internal forces. And always, it is asked in one marks also in many, many PSUs and many state service examination and can become in gate also. Guys, always remember, for a equilibrium body, internal forces are always equal in magnitude. Equal in magnitude for equilibrium body. Equal in magnitude and opposite in direction equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Both are PP, PP, both are PP, one upward, one downward, opposite in direction. Okay. So, actually, the stress is not this force by area. Stress is not P by A. It is actually P by area, internal force by area. 
This is the internal license. Now you will say, what is this sir? In examination question answer will be coming same. In examination it is not like yellow P by A, external force by A, internal force by A. No. <laughs> in examination if you don't know this concept you may go wrong because once a question is asked like this. Now everybody please tell me. Once a question is asked that this is a body. Please see. This is a floor and friction is neglected mu is equal to 0 and here I am applying F force area is A what is the stress what is the stress can you please let me know if I don't tell you this concept please tell me what is stress here on the comment section please tell me on the comment section what is the stress here guys very interesting things will be coming guys okay so manas okay manas what about others Dinesh Swapnil Okay, UPSC question. Okay, not in UPSC only, yaar. not in UPPSC, various examination desires. So, stress here is zero. Because if you know this concept, you will be saying stress is force by area, but actually, stress is internal force by area. And here, internal force is zero. Here, internal force is coming. Here, internal force is coming because I told you that whole body is in equilibrium, so small part must be in equilibrium. Whole body is in equilibrium, small part must be in equilibrium to make it equilibrium for this yellow P internal force P is coming. But here this is not in equilibrium. Actually it will be accelerating with force by mass. Okay, if I cut a section here, if I cut a section here, for this F I don't have to make this F uh, left hand side balancing it. If I draw the free body diagram of one part, I don't have to make a balance F left hand side like here. Because here I have made, because the body is in equilibrium. Have we got this concept guys? Various new concepts will be getting, getting guys and revising the things. Okay. Now, actually we take stress like this P for this P. This is the P. But actual, these two bodies, one and two are not connected only here. One and two bodies are not connected only here. They are connected throughout the cross section. So, for this F, small, 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 various internal forces are coming and the summation is F. Okay, I for making you understand, I only make one P. But actually, those two bodies are not connected at a single point. They are connected through whole surface area. Okay. Now, so small, small forces are coming, that is F. Now, this all thing I told you, it is written here for your revision. So, everything will be giving you. Now, moving further guys, there are two types of stresses, normal stress and shear stress. Normal stress is perpendicular to the body and shear stress is tangential to the body. Shear stress is tangential to the body. Now, everyone please see, suppose this is a body, I just told you, this is P force, this is P force, for here the stresses are coming as P by A, of course internal force by area. External force by area is what? External force by area is what? Please tell me. External force by area is what? External force by area is, external force by area is pressure. External force by area is pressure. Got it? Got it everyone? Please let me know. Okay. Even, 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 let me tell you one thing. Pressure is also not external force by area. Suppose this is the area A and force is acting like this. So, pressure is not F by A. Pressure is perpendicular component of F. That is F sin theta by A. Okay. Now, guys, this is normal stress. Now, what is shear stress? Guys, we are quickly coming. We are quickly coming into the things that you want to know. Now, tangential forces. <coughs> this is P. Suppose this is exactly at the center, this is P by 2, this is P by 2. So, if we cut a section here, if we cut a section here, XX section, name this body as 1, name this body as 2. If I draw the free body diagram of 1, if I draw the free body diagram of 1 and free body diagram of 2, okay, then here, <coughs> this is P, this is P by 2, this is P by 2, whole body is in equilibrium whole body is in equilibrium, so small part is also in equilibrium, so for this upward P by 2, this downward P by 2 is coming, okay, and for making it balance, I am not considering movement equilibrium right now, only force equilibrium, 
So this p, this p by two, so upward p by two. Internal force always equal in magnitude. P by two, 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 p by two. Equal in magnitude, in opposite in direction. One down, one, one upward. One down, one, one upward. One down, one, one upward. So here this is not normal. Here this is not this p by two to this area. This p by two to this area is not normal. It is tangential. So it is tangential force. It is represented as sigma. It is represented as shear. Okay, shear is shear force. That is tangential force upon area. Okay. Now moving further, guys. Types of normal stresses, types of shear stresses in torsion will be seeing this everything. Bending stress will be seeing the normal stresses. Now, can I ask you one thing, guys? Stress is a vector or tensor. I know most of you will be giving this correct. I'll be going beyond this. I'll be going beyond this question. Stress is a vector or a tensor. Stress is a vector or tensor. Everybody on the comment section, guys. Stress is a vector or tensor. Yes, most of you will be saying tensor because yes, normal stress has stress has magnitude. Stress has stress has magnitude. Okay, guys will be coming with quotient also in between. Stress has magnitude and stress has direction. Internal force by area with there will be some magnitude direction perpendicular or tangential it is the direction, but it is not a vector because in school N C R T it is written wrongly. In school N C R T it is written wrongly that it is written wrongly that stress is oh okay vector is a thing which has magnitude and direction no for being a vector three things are required not two those three things are. <coughs> those three things are magnitude direction and they should follow parallelogram law of addition they should follow yes ajay gupta they should uh, follow parallelogram law of addition stress has magnitude has direction but it does not follow parallelogram law of addition parallelogram law of addition is if this is vector a this is vector b so this is a plus b stress does not follow that so stress is a tensor but now i am going beyond this most of you know, knowing this i am asking you what is the order of tensor what is order of stress tensor whatever i am writing on board you will be getting this what is order of stress tensor can you please let me know this this question if comes in exam then many of you might not be attempting it correctly please tell me manas is champion Stress is a two-order tensor. Answer I am writing so that you can get in PDF. But now my question is why two-order tensor? Why two-order tensor? Why two-order tensor? Why two-order tensor? Why a two-order tensor? Please let me know. Why a two order tensor? Okay, so just for that, why it is two order tensor? I'll be telling you a stress tensor topic. There I'll be explaining it. Okay, now what happens in equality of shear stress? That suppose this is a body or it is a point. I'm showing it on a zoom way. I'm showing it in a zoom way. Suppose this length is this is a cuboid. This length is A. This is B, and this is C. And suppose here the shear stress is acting tau one. Here the shear stress is acting tau two. At the bottom, at the bottom, bottom part, some shear stress is acting. Let it be tau three. Let it be tau three. And here, let it be tau four. Let it be tau four. So on that cuboid, on four faces, the stresses are coming. Tau one. Tau two, tau three, tau four. Everybody, please <clears throat> see now very carefully. Okay, okay, guys. Now, guys, if a body is in equilibrium, if a body is in equilibrium, if a body is in equilibrium, now in that particular case, summation F Y has to be zero. Summation F Y has to be zero. So vertical forces, shear stress into area, 
स्ट्रेस इज फोर्स बाई एरिया सो फोर्स इज स्ट्रेस इन टू एरिया सो वर्टिकल फोर्सेज आर अपवर्ड फोर्सेज दिस टाउ टू स्ट्रेस इन टू एरिया इट इज एक्टिंग ऑन बी सी एंड डाउनवर्ड इज टाउ फोर इट इज एक्टिंग ऑन ऑल्सो दिस इज बी एंड सी दिस इज ऑल्सो बी सी सो फ्रॉम हियर टाउ टू इज इक्वल टू टाउ फोर ओके 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 वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग आई एम कमिंग हियर समेशन एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर इक्म सो एक्स डायरेक्शन दिस टाउ वन स्ट्रेस इन टू एरिया दिस इज ए दिस इज बी दिस इज ए दिस इज बी टाउ वन ए बी राइट हैंड साइड एंड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड दिस टाउ थ्री लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज दिस टाउ थ्री सो टाउ थ्री एंड ए इन टू बी सो हियर इज टाउ वन इक्वल टू टाउ थ्री नाउ गाइज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन आर आक्स इन टाइम्स दैट अपोजिट फेसिस दिस टू एंड फोर आर अपोजिट टू हियर फोर हियर टू हियर फोर हियर अपोजिट फेसिस वन एंड थ्री आर अपोजिट अपोजिट फेसिस स्ट्रेसिस आर इक्वल अपोजिट फेसिस स्ट्रेसिस आर इक्वल ड्यू टू ड्यू टू ड्यू टू फोर सिक्लोरियम दे विल राइट ऑप्शन फोर सिक्लोरियम मोमेंट मूवमेंट इक्लोरियम टॉर्क इक्लोरियम यू हैव टू राइट इट एज फोर सिक्लोरियम वन एंड थ्री टू एंड फोर आर अपोजिट फेसिस ड्यू टू फोर सिक्लोरियम वन एंड थ्री आर अपोजिट वन एंड थ्री आर अपोजिट ड्यू टू फोर सिक्लोरियम नाउ आई एम कंसिडरिंग अ पॉइंट हियर टू इन 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 टू दिस रेड पॉइंट Let this red point name be O. So for being in equilibrium, for being in equilibrium, summation of moment about any point has to be zero. Summation of moment about any point has to be zero. This three and four are passing from that point only. Let that point be center of mass. Is passing from there there only. So moment of tau one, tau one is stress multiplying by area A into B. So this is stress. It is acting on AB. Stress into area, so multiplying by stress into area, it becomes force. It becomes force, but I am writing movement. So movement will be force into distance. This into distance is distance about this point is C. So force into distance is movement. This is clockwise. Tau one is rotating it clockwise. Now tau two. Tau two is rotating anti-clockwise. Tau two is stress acting on B and C. And distance about O point is A. So from here, tau one equal to tau two. Now, many of you know that these stresses are equal, but you should be knowing one point beyond that opposite are equal due to force equilibrium, and one and two are adjacent. Adjacent are equal due to moment equilibrium. Opposite faces stresses are equal. Shear stresses are equal due to force equilibrium. And adjacent faces shear stresses are equal due to moment equilibrium. So all one and two are equal, two and four are equal, one and three are equal. That means all the stresses are equal. Tau one equal to tau two equal to tau three equal to tau four. All the stresses are equal. So usually we represent a point like this. If I write one times it is tau, it's sufficient. Sufficient. If this is tau, I am representing all are tau. Either it will be like this or it will be like this. If this is right hand side, uh, left hand side, so this will be right to make it balance. If this is upward, this will be downward for making it balance. Usually, we call it positive shear. We call it negative shear. If I write tau, that all means all are tau. Are you getting this, guys? Are you all getting this? Please let me know in the comment section. If my speed is fine, should I increase my speed? Should I decrease my speed? Yes, we will be taking numericals. But yes, many numericals will be taking derivations. Everything will be there, guys. One small request: just stick to your screen. you will get benefited automatically and one small request again many requesting i am making here many request i am making please 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 if possible watch this session on the bigger screen laptop or tv or whatever small request small request watch it on bigger screen watch it or watch it on bigger screen okay Watch it on bigger screen so that your eyes will not be strained. And I will be taking most of the current green color in the background so that it will not be like this. Decrease a little, increase a little. Okay, I'll adjust. I'll adjust. Okay. So now, guys, let leave this. Leave this. Don't see this. Don't see this. See here. See here. Suppose this is x direction. Suppose this is y direction. And suppose this is z direction. Z direction is that direction that is coming from the board to your face. That is coming from your board to your face. This is x. This is y, and that is z. This is x. This is y, and that is z. Now, everyone, please see here. Suppose this is a point. I'm just 
making that point in a zoom way, elongating. This is not a body, this is a point. This is a point. This is a point, not a body. Now, guys, please see. Please see. This face, this face name is given as the direction of outward normal. If outward normal, outward normal is in which direction? Tell me in the comment box. Outward normal is in which direction? 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 Outward normal in which direction? Outward normal is in which direction? X direction, positive X direction, positive X direction. Okay, so this is a X phase. This is a X phase. This is a X phase. Guys, which is what is this phase? What is name of this phase? Tell me on the comment section. Tell me on the comment section what is the name of this phase? What is the name of this phase? What is the name of this phase? This phase outward normal, not inside normal. Outward normal is going in minus x direction. This is negative x phase. Yes, excellent. Excellent, my commandos. This is negative x phase. Just yeah, stick, stick, stick. You're getting very various good things here. This x phase. Now, can you tell me what is this phase? Two, 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 two. What is this phase? What is this phase? <laughs> what is this phase? So outward normal here is in going in y direction. Outward normal is in going in y direction. So this is y phase. This is y phase. And what is this phase? What is this phase? What is this phase? What is this phase? Outward normal is going in z direction. So this is this is z phase. This phase is z phase. Okay, what is the bottom phase where it is kept? What is the bottom phase where it is kept? Bottom this one, two in, two in, two in, this one. Outward normal, not inside normal, not inside the body. Outward normal, away from the body, is going in negative y direction. So yes, it is a negative y phase. Excellent, excellent. Ashish, Mayur, Arun, Umar, Vijay, excellent. Now, guys, here the stresses are, this is normal to this. Normal means sigma. In which phase? First letter is phase. X phase. In which direction? In which direction? It is in X direction. Now on this X phase only. On this X phase only. What is this tangential? What is this tangential? So it is here. First letter is name of phase. In X phase. In Y direction. What is this? On this X body. Tau X in Z direction. Okay. What is this? What is this? This is normal sigma. This is sigma on which 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 plane? Y plane in y direction. So this is what? On top phase, this is tangential. So it is shear in y plane in x direction, and this is shear y plane in z direction. Okay, okay, okay. What is this? This is sigma in z plane in z direction. This is shear in z plane in y direction and this is shear in z plane in x direction have you got it have you got it have you got it okay 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 so on total on a general body on total on a general body we have nine stresses this question is asked in the previous gate examination total there are nine stresses sigma xx or we can write like this sigma xx sigma yy sigma zz tau xy tau yx tau zx tau <coughs> xz tau yz tau zy total we have nine elements to represent a point by any inclined or any general loading we have total nine values nine stresses guys of course if it is sigma xx here it will also be here sigma xx okay i'm talking of this i'm talking of this if it is sigma xx in this plane also it is also sigma xx same value to be in equilibrium. We study equilibrium bodies in SOM. Okay. Now, total if this, this they are asking, total will be, total if they are asked in gate examination, it will be 9 elements. But if say they said distinct, how many of distinct? It will be only 6. Both questions are asked in the gate examination. Because why distinct 6? Because we just see that adjacent faces shear stress are equal. 
this x y and y x both are same x y so out of these two only one is required z x x z adjacent faces only one is required both will uh, other will be same y z and z y y z and z y both will be same magnitude so actually we should be knowing only six values one two three either of these either of these either of these because other two values both of these two values are same both of these two values are same both of these two values are same so we know we actually require six distinct are six total are nine got it guys everybody please let me know in the comment section otherwise i'll be taking your doubt otherwise i'll be taking your doubt otherwise i'll be taking your doubt please let me know your doubts guys come on गाइस बहुत पूरा मेहनत लगा यार सुबह पांच बजे तक पीपीटी बनाए यार मैं धीरज सर है ना तीन चार सौ पेज की पीपीटी है चार सौ प्लस और रात को फिर बारह बजे आएंगे प्लीज हम रिक्वेस्ट इफ इट इज पॉसिबल शेयर द सेशन ओके नाउ दीज नाइल एलिमेंट्स आर रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द स्टेस्ट आंसर फॉर्म एंड द स्पेशलिटी ऑफ दिस टेस्ट आंसर इज नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स आर नाइन ना ऑर्डर ऑफ टेंसर इज डिसाइडेड बाय लाइक थ्री की पावर एक्स इज इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इन अ जनरल लोडिंग थ्री डी डायरेक्शन जनरल लोडिंग इट इज हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स नाइन सो वट एवर इज द एक्स वैल्यू कमिंग ना दैट इज द ऑर्डर ऑफ टेंसर वट इज द एक्स वैल्यू इज कमिंग दैट इज ऑर्डर ऑफ टेंसर दैट इज ऑर्डर ऑफ टेंसर We just have to write three ki power x is number of elements in three D case, not two D case. So whatever x is coming, that is order of tensor. Let me tell you one thing that you might, most of you might not be knowing. What is the order of tensor direction? X, Y, Z. So what 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 is the formula? Three ki power x is number of elements, number of representing things. So there are three things: x, y, z. So x is equal to one. So order of tensor for direction is one. Now, what is the order of tensor of magnitude? Magnitude two is a magnitude. Only one thing is required for representing magnitude. Only one thing is required. One hundred two. Abhi now weight is eighty two kg. Only one thing is required. So three ki power x and number of required things are one. So x is equal to zero. X is equal to zero. So order of tensor of magnitude is zero. But actually, that is not in syllabus. Now, what is the beauty thing here? That if we take this as diagonal. This is a mirror image. This is a mirror image. Mirror image. How? 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 Mirror image? Because this x y and this both are same. <coughs> this x y and you can represent is x y and y x both are same. Okay. E e e e e e e e e e e e e e e. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It should be. Y x here. How to write it? Y x. Okay, 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 okay. Let me do so that you will be using this as. I am doing all this because I know that you will be using this as notes also. Okay, so let me do like this here and cut it. Do like this here and no, only this one I want to cut. Okay, now little bit computer. I also know. Okay, 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 okay. Shapes this and uh huh uh huh. Shapes I have taken as twin. Oh, rectangle. Let me take. So let me cover this. Let me cover this. Okay, okay. <coughs> let me show you that all these nine values are not represented like this. All these nine values are represented. Like this. First, all x faces, sigma x x, tau x y, tau x z. Then all y faces in this way. I am doing all this because I know that you will be using this in reference. Then all z faces and is represented like this. Okay, this is the stress tensor matrix. Now, this is a principal diagonal. Okay, and is a mirror image. Why mirror image? Why mirror image? Because x y and y x value are same. Why mirror image? Because x z and z x value are same. Why mirror image? Because y z and z y are same. It is mirror. And why this is mirror image? Due to which equilibrium? Can you please let me know in the comment section? <coughs> It is mirror image due to which equilibrium? 
इट इज मिरर इमेज ड्यू टू विच इक्लोबियम इट इज मिरर इमेज ड्यू टू विच इक्लोबियम इट इज मिरर इमेज ड्यू टू मूवमेंट इक्लोबियम बिकॉज दीज आर एडजस्टेंट फेसेस एंड एडजस्टेंट फेसेस आर ड्यू टू मूवमेंट इक्लोबियम इन टू डी ऑफकोर्स जेड टर्म विल नॉट बी दियर सो ओनली दीज टू आर इन टू डी हाउ मेनी टोटल इन टू डी हाउ मेनी टोटल फोर हाउ मेनी डिस्टिंग हाउ मेनी डिस्टिंग थ्री बिकॉज यू नो यू वॉन्ट टू नो दिस यू वॉन्ट टू नो दिस बोथ ऑफ दीज आर सेम सो आई दर ऑफ दीज टू Please let me know your doubts also in between. Now let's come to the strain. This was all about stress, normal stress, shear stress, stress matrix. Now coming to the strain, and let me tell you, let me tell you, strain is will, will be covered very easily, very fast. Guys, we are covering off. We are covering in some deformable bodies. We are covering in some deformable bodies. Okay, deformable bodies. So now, if I apply the load, there will be deformation. Might be that deformation is not visible by naked eyes. <coughs> i am applying the force it is deformation is not visible by naked eyes but there is a deformation so if this is a body and i apply the force like this and after application of forces it is elongated like delta original length was l so the strain is delta by l change in length by original length what is true strain Uh, and uh, what is true strain that zero sir will be coming when he is telling you the graph okay that is the strain value delta change in length by original length now my question and 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 it you have to promise me that you have to reply it very fast in 5 seconds if i apply the force in this body compression that strain will be in micrometers or meters that strain will be in micrometers or meters everybody fast on the comment section that's normal strain will be in micrometers or meters micrometer or meters please tell me please tell me excellent sapnel excellent 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 and apart from 3 4 students all are wrong all are wrong strain is unitless it is represented as ratio or percentage you have seen in stress strain graph na dheera sir will be telling you here 0 0.002 0 0 0 1 5 it is not mm both are units of length it will be cancelled out Okay, so this is the strain. Now see, normal stresses, the perpendicular forces causes the normal strain. Similarly, there will be shear stresses. One is normal strain represented by epsilon. Shear strain is represented by gamma or phi, anything. Now shear strain. See, we are studying deformable physics. We are studying deformable physics. So after this, deformation will be something like this. So earlier the angle is ninety. Now the angle is ninety minus gamma. So change in angle is shear strain. Gamma is shear strain or phi, whatever you are representing. Whatever is the change in angle due to this kind of thing, it will be change something like this. So earlier the angle is ninety. Now the angle is ninety plus gamma. So change is change is shear strain. Now one very interesting fact. Generally, this is called positive shear, and here we call it positive strain. This is negative shear, this kind of direction, and this is negative strain. Due to positive shear stress, positive shear strain, due to negative shear stress, negative shear strain. Let me tell you in books now, various complicated sign convention is given on positive phase, on positive direction. If angle is reducing, it is positive. No, very simple. Positive shear whenever positive shear strain. Simple. Negative shear stress, negative shear strain applicable everywhere. in books it is very written complicated in positive phase in positive direction if angle is decreasing it is positive shear strain like this i am telling you very simple positive shear stress positive shear strain now moving further to into e to e to into e to e to what i was telling i forgot yeah now yes very that when i was in college na when i was in college i was not knowing about this for next two years always mera dimag ekdam samajh nahi aata tha जैसे कॉलेज में मेरे को डाउट क्या रहता था ना कि ये टाव दिया ये टाव दिया ये टाव दिया अब एक टाव है तो चारों टाव है भाई अभी डेरिवेशन किया है डिक्रीजिंग चेंज और इंक्रीजिंग चेंज इस ट्रेन ना वट माई डाउट वॉज that why they write after this that this is gamma by 2 and this is gamma by 2 how they know that how they know that how they know that 
how they know that the, if the change is gamma then here is also gamma by 2 here is also gamma by 2 can you please let me know in the comment section yes questions will also be solved guys don't worry let me just tell you the concepts now let me just tell you the concept then we'll be going to the questions also so how it is why it is gamma by 2 if the change is gamma it can be it can be that 0.3 gamma change here 0.7 gamma change here why gamma by 2 both sides why gamma by 2 both sides? Yes, Yadav ji. Yes, Yadav ji. Yes, Yadav ji. Because all tau's are equal. Tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau 3 equal to tau 4. We just have done the derivation. All tau's are equal. So, it is a symmetrical in case of shear. So, it will be all gamma by 2 change. Got it? Got it? Like this is stress matrix, na? there is strain matrix also. But quotient from strain matrix will not be coming in the gate examination. Rare, very rare. Very rare the quotient will be coming in strain. If total change in xy plane, in xy plane, earlier the angle is 90, now it is 90 minus gamma. So, change angle is gamma xy. So, one is in with x phase, we represent gamma xy by 2. With y phase, we represent gamma y x by 2. Not getting. Now, ye, sir, we got understood this, sir. But we are not understanding this. Oh, no, 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 sir. We have understood this, sir, but we have not understood this. Oh, no, yara, sir. Okay, let me tell you. Gamma is actually, gamma is actually the change in angle. And change in angle is associated with a plane, xy plane. Change in angle will be in a plane. So, a change in angle is suppose gamma xy, but here shears are represented with a x phase, y phase, z phase differently. So, this gamma xy is the change in xy plane. So, along with x phase, we say gamma xy by 2 and along with y phase, we represent gamma yx by 2. Both are same. Both are same. Total change is gamma xy. Got it? Got it? Total change is gamma xy gamma xz gamma yz got it everyone okay and what is this statement this derivation is not at all required guys we will be telling here only those derivation which are required which are there in the syllabus or which is has to be learned or in which derivation in certain steps certain questions will be asked like in that derivation where all tau's are equal tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau 3 equal to tau 4 in that process of derivation, various questions are released that opposite phases stresses are equal due to force equilibrium. Adjacent forces shear stress are equal due to movement equilibrium. Various questions comes from the steps of that though derivation. But certain things derivations or the steps does not lead to any concept that can be asked in the gate examination. So, that derivation will not be telling you. Okay. 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 Everyone please. Now, let us move further. So, if there is a body like this and in this body, in x direction, in this body, in this y direction, in this body, in this z direction, small displacement in x direction is u. Small displacement in x direction is u. Small displacement in y direction is v. Small displacement in z direction is w and u, v, w can be a function of x, y, z. u, v, w can be a function of x, y, z. So, del u by del x is normal strain in x direction. Del v by del y is normal strain in y direction. Del v, del u is normal strain in z direction and this is one other thing. This is one another thing and that is another. That strain in x, y plane is del u by del y plus del v by del x and same like this. Now, how questions will be asked on this? Questions will be asked like this question. That what is the shear strain? What is the shear strain in xy plane? So, they are asking gamma xy. So, gamma xy was what? Gamma xy was del u by del y plus del v by del x. See here. Del u by del y plus del v by del x. Guys, nothing derivation is not required here. I am here now teaching from last 10 or 11 years. I know where derivation is required or not. So, what is del u by del y? It is 8 into 10 key power minus 6. Del v by del x minus 3 into 10 key power minus 6. So, it is 5 into 10 key power minus 6. 
Now, can you do this question? Can you do this question? Okay, I will tell you. 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 Okay, I will tell you. Okay, can you do this question for me, please? Let me know. Okay, I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. Please let me know. Okay. I am good at the Jeet. Everybody, please share the session so everybody can join in. Yaar. Everybody can join in. Please share. <coughs> let me also share once again my telegram group. Guys, the marathon is live. More than 100 students are watching that. Okay, we are still in the first chapter. Please do join us. Complete Maha Marathon of Strength of Materials. Guys, you can also share, guys. Yes, we have done effort and we want more and more students coming here. Okay. So, guys, first of all, it is positive or negative? It is positive or negative? See here. See here. This one was positive and this one was negative. Negative shear stress was negative shear stress. I have told you somewhere else also, yeah. Yeah. This is positive shear stress and that will cause positive shear strain. This is negative shear stress and this will call negative shear strain. So, this one is negative. This one is <coughs> negative. So, what is the change in angle? So, now earlier the angle is 90 of course. Now the angle is changed. So, whatever is the change is shear strain. So, gamma is 0 0.0005 radian and that will be in minus. That will be in minus because it is negative. So, whatever the change in angle is gamma. So, minus point 0005 is represented as 0.001k. So, from k what value you are getting? Uh, you are saying c, so it will be c. Have you got it? Have you got it? Please let me know. Please let me know. Please let me know. Everyone please. Okay. Now we are going into the very interesting we are going into the very interesting phase after this where many students like that where many students like that elastic constants deformation everything okay now you will enjoying more so because now it comes more numerical approach okay negative shear the shear strain will be negative surjit surjit okay so i am again saying this figure was earlier blue and now it is changed like this. So, this change from blue to yellow, it is when the shear is acting like this. When shear is acting like this, then only it will be changing like this. So, it is negative shear stress. So, whatever is the change in angle, that will be negative shear strain because it is caused by negative shear stress. Got it now, Ajay Gupta? Have you got it? Surjit, have you got it? Solanki, have you got it? Have you got it now? Negative, but see, change in angle, earlier the angle is 90, now the angle is this, 90 plus something. So, whatever is the changing angle, whatever is the change in angle, that is shear strain. And that will be minus because it is caused by negative shear stress. Okay. Now, coming to the very interesting fact. Okay. Now, what is Young's modulus? Young's modulus is normal stress by normal strain. But many people does not know this that this is only valid, only valid in uniaxial loading. That means, <coughs> if a body is like this, and here it is acting sigma, and here it is acting sigma dash, in that particular case, sigma stress and strain in this direction is not equal to E. Not equal to E. Sigma dash, by strain in this direction, strain in this direction is epsilon dash, is not equal to E. So, this sigma by E is equal to sigma stress by strain is Young's modulus. You are saying every time. Stress by strain is Young's modulus. You are saying every time. Stress by strain is Young's modulus. You are saying every time. This is only, only, only valid. This is only, only valid for uniaxial loading. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Please let me know. Please let me know. Please let me know. Please let me know, everyone, 
okay guys now we are coming to the interesting phase now like normal stress by normal strain is young smolders shear stress tau if one is tau all are tau by shear strain change in angle is shear modulus represented by g or sometimes c now it is not unidirectional because tau cannot come alone one tau and all are tau it, tau cannot come alone if one tau is there four taus are coming on different faces okay shear stress by shear strain is shear modulus now bulk modulus is hydrostatic stress upon volumetric strain is equal to bulk, bulk modulus volumetric strain means volumetric strain means change in volume with respect to original volume is bulk modulus and this is find out only when there is a hydrostatic condition hydrostatic hydrostatic means in three directions same stresses are coming then only bulk modulus is defined when in three directions same stresses are coming same magnitude either all compression either all tension then only bulk modulus is defined that if it is sigma it is two sigma it is three sigma then divide by volumetric strain that value is not bulk modulus bulk modulus is only defined when it is all are same and all it is three direction now can you tell me that what is the bulk modulus of a rigid body what is a bulk modulus of a rigid body can you tell me what is a bulk modulus of incompressible fluid incompressible fluid incompressible fluid can you tell me this can you tell me please this guys everyone okay a rigid body volume is not changing incompressible fluid volume is not in delta v is zero volumetric strain is zero so it will be infinite so what is the physical meaning here what is the physical meaning here what is the physical meaning physical meaning is if the value of k is more then that body will not be changing much volume and if k value is less bulk model is less that means the on application of forces volume will change more got the physical meaning if you find k inside you go in office you go okay whether government whether private if you find k is very big that means that body volume will not changing much if k is less it will be changing okay and poison ratio is you uh, it is a ratio of late late not latest yeah it is lateral strain upon longitudinal strain whatever is the direction of force that is the longitudinal one and other is the lateral one if i apply the force it will be longitudinal and it will be lateral in the other direction okay so suppose i am applying force here so longitudinal it is increasing generally we say tension or elongation are positive so longitudinal is positive lateral it is compression so minus plus and one more minus it will be plus even if i am applying a force like this then in that case the deformation will be like this so mu is equal to minus minus is itself in the formula lateral means this is the direction of force is longitudinal so lateral is transverse lateral is opposite perpendicular to this direction of stress is longitudinal so in lateral it is increasing plus and longitudinal it is in minus so again it is plus so mu is a ratio of lateral strain by longitudinal strain now the value of mu for different thing is this mu value is 0 for cock okay and it is maximum is 0.5 and for human tissues and so polymer is negative and i will make you visualize this yes guys you heard me correct i will make you visualize this i will make you visualize this everyone first of all just wait guys in whenever we, i again i am telling you uh, the uh, poisson ratio again complete complete poisson ratio derivation there i'll be telling you what is the significance of zero what is this how it is minus 5 with diagram with gif so i'll be showing you there okay now guys homogeneous isotropy i'll be coming now before that guys we have studied four elastic constants e normal stress by normal strain g shear stress by shear strain k sigma by volumetric strain and mu minus of lateral strain by longitudinal strain and the relation between all these force is this reciprocal of mu is modular ratio the relation is this the relation of these all these four values are this okay now moving further relation is this okay sir got it this sir no need for derivation actually if they are total elastic constants it is four e g mu k for isotropic material but independent they ask it will be two because if you know any two any two suppose you know <coughs> k and mu so you can find e 
Suppose you know you have find out E mu you already know so you can find G also. So from any two we can find remaining two. Suppose you know K and G. So from K and G you can find mu. From K and G you can find E also. So independent R2. So for isotropic independent R2 orthotropic it is 9 and isotropic it is 21 but that is not in the syllabus. Okay orthotropic material is where the properties change in, in the perpendicular direction. Layer structure like wood. Cutting a wood suppose this is a wood cutting wood like in this direction will be different a force is required and in this direction different force is required. So that is orthotropic and isotropic means in every direction property is same x y z inclined every direction property is same okay but that too will not be asked in the examination. Now can you do this question for me and if you require formula please tell me I will change the slide if you require formula please let me know I will change the slide I will change the slide everyone everyone. Please, D. Guys, one small request again. Please share the session so that more and more commandos can join in. Everyone, guys. Uh, model E is given 200 and G is 80. So, one relation was we have just seen E is equal to 2G 1 plus mu. So, E and G is given from mu. What is what value mu you are getting from here? 0.25 and another relation was e is equal to 3k 1 minus 2 mu e is equal to 3k I am not wasting time now yaar. see e is given to you mu you have find out from k you will find it 400 by 3 that is 133.33 okay now this is the real question giving you two minutes drink water do this let me tell who has done this fastest and let me announce big announcement big announcement big announcement guys we will be giving some questions like this we will be giving some questions like this and those students who give the answer fastest who give the answer fastest will be giving them cash prize today only but yes roughly let me just take the photos of these students just take the photos of these students okay who have given the answer and at the end guys we cannot tell exactly exactly but yes more number of students who have given the answer correct we have taken the photos of these okay we have taken the photos of the our moderator has taken the photo so more number of this katha we will give them crash price now which of the following are possible true guys for metals for metals mu value has to be greater than 0. Now let us first of all take g is equal to e this one. So e is equal to 2g 1 plus mu e is equal to 2g 1 plus mu from here g and e are cancelled from here e and g are cancelled. So from here mu value is coming to be minus 0.5 which is not possible for metals because for metals mu value has to be greater than 0. If g is not equal to e both of these are wrong here also g is equal to e now let us take this one g is equal to 2k now one more relation mu is equal to 3k minus 2g upon 6k plus 2g okay mu is equal to 3k minus 2g upon 6k plus 2g if you put g is equal to 2k it will be 3k minus 4k 3k minus 4k upon 10k so it will be mu is equal to minus 0.1 mu is equal to minus 0.1 so this is also not possible so of course answer will be this one and let me take let me take this also k is equal to e we know that e is equal to 3k 1 minus 2 mu so if k is equal to e so from here 0.33 is equal to 1 minus 2 mu so from here mu is equal to plus 0.33 mu is equal to plus 0.33 that is possible for metals have you got it have you got it guys everyone have you understood this question and guys we have taken the screenshot here and more such questions will be announcing every time 
and those who will be giving the answers correct will be giving them cash prize at the end of the session. At the end of the session, we will be giving them cash prize. Okay. Okay. Please let me know. <clears throat> okay. Now, yes, my favorite section, deformation of bar. My favorite section, deformation of bar. <coughs> okay. Guys, what is the stress here? Of course, internal force by area. What is the strain? Change in length by original length. So, uh, guys, you will be knowing that delta is equal to PL by E. Just wait for next uh, 180 seconds and see at how much depth I will be going here. Next, not 180, take 240 seconds. Give me next 240 seconds and see at what depth I will be going here. Not only up to delta is equal to PL by E. A huge depth I will be going here. So, sigma by strain is equal to Young's modulus unless mentioned in SOM, everything is weightless and Hooke's law is valid. So, sigma by this P by A divided by delta by L is equal to E and from here and from here we are getting and you, you might be thinking that we I am stopping here. No, no, I am will be starting from here. Delta is equal to PL by A just next to 40 seconds. Here guys, first of all thing you have to understood that this delta is associated with only two things. Either delta total or delta of last point or delta of T. Okay, delta of this point A is not PL by E, it is 0, it is fixed. Delta of this point is not PL by E. So, first of all you have to think that this delta is associated with only two things. Either the delta of total bar or delta of this point T. Now, suppose you want to say so delta of A is 0. But what is delta of B? What is delta of B? Let me tell you. Delta AB plus delta BT is equal to total deflection. Is equal to total deflection. So, delta AB, the formula is PL by e is applicable for cro uniform cross sections. So, delta AB, force is P here. If you cut a section from downward, it is P. Length is X by AE and delta bt force is p l minus x by ae and of course it comes to be pl by ae so delta associated with b point is px by a the displacement of b point is not pl by ae see delta ab is px by ae and a is not moving deflection of ab or deformation of ab or elongation of ab is px by ae and a is not moving so all this deflection is associated with b point Okay, got it. Now, I will be giving you many things here, guys. You are thinking that I will be stopping here. No, here in this expression, AE is called axial rigidity. Why obvious? SOM is a logical subject. Why? Because AE is providing rigidity. If AE is more, if AE is more, delta will be less. If AE is more, delta will be less. If A is more, it is probably rigidity. Now, one more thing. Guys, if this is a spring, then force is equal to K delta. K is stiffness. K is stiffness. P by delta. Same. If I want to find, assuming this as a bar as a spring. Assuming this bar as a spring. Assuming this bar as a spring. So, K is stiffness is P by delta. So, P by delta from here, P by delta from here is A by L, A by L, A by L, A by L. And this might, you might be knowing actual rigidity, you might be knowing stiffness. Let me tell you one more thing. That question is asked in previous year gate examination in mechanical and same can be asked in civil also. What is compliance? Let me tell you that year in 2018, I guess. 2018, 1 lakh students of civil engineering has given, no, not 1 lakh, 1 lakh 20 or 40,000 have given this to exam in civil engineering. Approximately 1 lakh 70,000 have given the exam in mechanical engineering. Let me tell you, not more than 100 students have got it correct. Everybody knows the stiffness, everybody knows the actual rigidity. 
कंप्लाइंस इज रेसिप्रोकल ऑफ स्टिफनेस दिस इज एल बाय ए ओनली अवर कमांडोज विल बी डूइंग इट करेक्ट ओके वन बाय स्टिफनेस यस यस नाउ एवरीबडी नोज यार नाउ एवरीबडी नोज ओके कीप शेयरिंग आईज कीप शेयरिंग कीप शेयरिंग कीप शेयरिंग कीप शेयरिंग ओके 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 नाउ दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट केस डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म सेक्शन नाउ दिस काइंड ऑफ सेक्शन हियर नेम दिस एज वन इट इज वेरी इजी नेम दिस एज टू नेम दिस एज थ्री सो डेल्टा टोटल इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा ऑफ वन प्लस डेल्टा ऑफ टू प्लस डेल्टा गाइज फर्स्ट चैप्टर विल टेक मोस्ट टाइम other chapters will be taking less time guys 40% time of this marathon will be in the first chapter i have 40% time will be in the first chapter okay if we make first chapter strong others will be very easy now delta total is delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 so what is delta 1 first of all the reaction it is p1 and p3 downward so upward force for balancing it is p1 and p3 This P three downward, P one downward. So up one is P one plus P three. This P two is upward. So the reaction will be P two downward. P two downward means minus P two. Okay, got it. For P three and P one downward, upward P one plus P three. For P two upward, downward P two should be there. Downward P two means upward minus P two. Now what is delta one? Very easy. Very easy. Cut a section here. Twee. See from top or bottom. Okay, let us cut a section. See from bottom. Which force? Only one force. Going away, going away is taken as positive. Going away is taken as positive. So P one into L one into A one E one. Simple, simple, simple. If you see from top, also answer will be same. See, see from top. See from top. P two going away. So plus. Anything that is going away will be plus. This is also going away. Away from my hand plus. P one plus P three minus P two. This is coming inside my hand, so minus minus P three. L one A one E one. So it will be again same. P two plus P two minus P two cancel out. Plus P three minus P three cancel again same. So either C from top, either C from bottom or top, it will be same. This is delta one. Now let me check delta two. Cut here. Section into C from top or bottom. Let us see from bottom. P one going away plus P two coming to my hand minus. P one going away plus P two coming to my hand minus. P one going away. P two coming in my hand minus into L two A two E two. If from top also you see it will be same. Let us see from top. This is going away. This is going away plus this P three is coming inside minus. So this is going away. P three minus P two. And this P three is coming inside, so minus. This is minus into L two A two E two. So this cancel. It will be again P one minus P two. So either you see from bottom or from top, you will be getting this. Okay. So, सब होगा भाई धीरे सर्कुलर से धीरे से पढ़ाएंगे. But delta three, see from top or bottom. So it is easy from C from top. Only one force going away. So P one plus P three minus P two into L two by A two into E two. Got it, guys? Everybody, please let me know in the comment section. Please let me know in the comment section. Please let me know in the comment section. And guys, I'll be live again on fifteenth of January with a workshop. And tenth January it will be Dheera Sir's workshop. Please share the session, yar. Prince and everybody, come on, share the session, guys. Everyone. Okay. Now, can you do this question for me? Can you do this question for me, everyone out there? Please, please. Cut a section here. See, this is P downward, three P downward, two P upward. So balancing it will be two P upward. Balancing it will be two P upward. so it will be total deflection will be delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 what is delta 1 cut a section here c from top or bottom from bottom it is p 
from top also 2p 2p both going away plus 4p and minus 3p it is again p so from bottom also it is p p into length is 2l upon a into e <coughs> what is delta 2 cut a section here c from bottom or top c from bottom p going away plus and 2p going in, inside minus so plus p minus 2p it is minus p into l by 4a into e now delta 3 cut a section here c from top it is 2p into l by a e 2a into e whatever answer you are getting whatever answer you are getting hello pradeep please share the session hello pradeep please share the session okay got it guys any doubt any doubt <coughs> any doubt please let me know <coughs> okay d answer now case 3 when the bar cross section is varying here what you have to do take a small guys here we cannot apply pl by a na here we cannot apply pl by a because area here is something else here is something else here is something else here is something else so we take a small section and integrate it we take a small section and integrate it not wasting time in that here the delta comes to be 4 pl pi d1 d2 into e 4 pl pi d1 d2 into e and what is the equivalent diameter if any bar which is having same same force p same material same length and same elongation what is the d equivalent of this what is the d equivalent of this under root d1 d2 that is the geometric mean that is the geometric mean okay so this i'll be doing this in a very then i will be relating this something with pressure vessels there i'll be connecting this now what is the deformation due to self weight unless mentioned in SOM, everything is weightless unless mentioned in SOM, everything is weightless okay so here they are mentioning the self weight is lambda lambda is weight by volume lambda is the density weight by volume okay so what is the deflection here due to the same due to the weight its own weight uh, here guys all these deflections are due to the external forces unless mentioned unless mentioned we are not considering we are not considering the self weight but yes once it's mentioned we consider the self weight now suppose we go to a x distance and at x distance we are going here at x distance we are going here and that is that is dx okay now in this dx now in this dx suppose we have to see from top or bottom na? suppose this is the force we see have to see from top and bottom from bottom this is the thing and everything is here it is weight is considered so this much is the force so deformation of this d delta is force force is this lambda into volume that is a into x a into x volume what is the weight of this lambda into volume this is weight into length is dx upon a e so d delta is lambda x dx by e what is deformation deformation of this this d delta from 0 to l so integration of this delta 0 to l it will be lambda l square by 2 e okay so delta is equal to lambda l square by 2 e have you got this have you got this everyone have you got this everyone please let me know please let me know please let me know and please let me know everyone okay now this is the delta this is the delta this is the delta now suppose total weight self weight is w suppose the total weight is w now let us see that lambda is weight by volume total weight w by volume al 
total weight W by volume AL. Now, here, if you put lambda W by AL here, delta is equal to W by AL into L square by 2E. So, delta here is WL by 2AE. W is its own weight. 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 Have you understood this? Have you understood this? W is its own weight. Okay. Now, have you find something interesting here that deformation due to W external load is W, if W external is acting. Suppose here, W is externally acting. So, what is the deformation WL by A? WL by A. Okay, if externally W is acting, no self weight. But once it is self weight, W itself is self weight, then it is WL by 2A. So, deflection due to external load is equal to, is equal to or deflection due to W, I mean W is self weight. Self weight. So, deflection due to the self weight is half of this. Half of this. Have you understood this? Because when W is acting externally, the low deflection was WL by A. But here it is only half. Have you got it? Have you got it? Please let me know. Please let me know. Everyone, every commander, where is the charger? Where is the charger? Okay, 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 okay. Baat samaj aai ki nahi. Baat samaj aai ki nahi. Bata do bhai log. आ गई चलो ऐसी कोनिकल वाले में ऐसी कोनिकल वाले में ये जो डिफ्लेक्शन होगा मैं लिख देता हूं यहां पे इट विल बी व्हाट इज हैपनिंग टू मी डिफ्लेक्शन इज इक्वल टू लैम्डा एल स्क्वायर बाय 6e 6e एंड इट इज आल्सो रिप्रेजेंटेड इन सम कंपटीशन एग्जाम इट इज आस्क्ड 1 by 3 ऑफ डेल्टा ऑफ प्रिज्मेटिक बार प्रिज्मेटिक बार ड्यू टू सेल्फ वेट बिकॉज़ हियर इट वाज 1 by 2 ना Oh, lambda L square by 2e. Here it is one third of that. Here it is one third of that. Now, can you do this question for me? Very easy, yaar. K is equal to sigma by delta V by V. So, sigma is given, K is given, V is given, delta V will be coming as 1.44. No need to time waste in these kind of easy questions. Oh, why oh my god, yaar. What is happening? Now, the Poisson ratio which I will be showing through the GIF also, which I will be showing you through the GIF also. Okay, 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 okay. What happened to my laptop charger? Although laptop is not required here, but where it went? Where it went? Okay, leave that. Now, guys, now background will be green. Mu is equal to minus lateral by longitudinal. Okay. So, whenever we are applying forces, the direction of force is longitudinal. The direction of force is longitudinal for Poisson ratio. If force is applied in the shorter direction, then shorter direction will be the longitudinal. Then shorter direction will be the longitudinal. Okay, guys. So, the rest is here. Huh? The rest is just coming for just small motivation for you two minutes. Then I will be continuing with Poisson ratio and thermal stress. Then, uh, sir will be taking the uh, stress strain curve and this. Let me again tell you, those who have joined late, keep, because we'll be giving this PDF, na. Those who have joined late, let me tell you guys, this is the complete, kahan gaya? This is the complete thing. Okay, this is first chapter. First chapter, <laughs> both of us will be telling. Me and the rest are both. Okay, this topic Dhiraj sir will be taking, this topic Dhiraj sir will be taking, all other topics I will be taking. Okay, then this second chapter Dhiraj sir will be taking, this I will be taking, this Dhiraj sir will be taking, this Dhiraj sir. Achha, mera chacha? Achha, achha. Nih, okay. So, this Dhiraj sir will be taking, this I will be taking, this I will be taking and this again both of us will be taking deflection. Okay, this is the complete thing and let me tell you. Let me tell you, everyone, everyone, that 40% time of this marathon will be taken here. This is a big chapter, weightage wise also, syllabus wise also. 
forty percent will be time will be here, okay, and remaining in sixty percent this everything will be covered, okay, guys, and see, dear sir, it will or almost it is correct, na? आपको चाहिए तो charger ले लो. आपको सर सर ये है ना बस दोस्तों अभी मैं थर्मल और पॉइजन पढ़ाऊंगा फिर सर आ जाएंगे सर मैं ये कह रहा हूँ कि फोर्टी परसेंट टाइम इसमें लगेगा <laughs> और बाकी में कुल मिला के सिक्सटी परसेंट लगेगा अप्रोक्सीमेटली मतलब इवन आपने देखा होगा व्हेन वी वर कवरिंग द कोर्स आल्सो देन आल्सो दिस इज द फंडामेंटल चैप्टर एंड यहाँ पर बेस बनता है बिकॉज ऑल अदर चैप्टर वट एवर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द बेसिक पार्ट इज कवर्ड इन दिस फर्स्ट चैप्टर ओनली बिकॉज एवरीवेयर यू वुड बी यूजिंग दिस so that is why this is going to take more time and like when you study each topic like uh, sir have already told you about stress strain tensor all these things are going to be used in other chapters so definitely it is required and it will take more time yes sir i feel uh, continue karte hain yes bhai dheera dheera sir ke beta dil bana do ek theek hai sir main bachchon ko bachche mazak mazak bhi samajhte honge na kuch kuch to inko man kar raha hai main college dikha dun aapko mera kal 5 kal nahi aaj today up to 5 am we are making this ppt okay and then we are here for this complete 8 uh, hours 6 hours 7 hours 9 hours whatever it will take yaar whatever it will take time we cannot commit this we are not time bounded and then midnight midnight 12 well. <laughs> so dheere sir aap mere ghar aayenge or we will be taking from office sir dekhte hain abhi dekhna nahi abhi bachcho ke samne comment kar do ghar aayenge complete hoga uske hisab se design sir pura aapka wo kya kehte hain mehman nawazi hogi puri achhi tarike se dekho sir aapke aate hi bachche bhi badh rahe hain ekdam dil will bhi bana rahe hain So guys, sir, so two three minutes, four minutes, two three four minutes, uh, two three four minutes. We are here. You can ask your doubts. Okay, we'll be replying for uh, two three four minutes your doubts. Then I'm coming to that poison ratio and thermal stresses. Okay, there I'll explain something with GIF also. Okay, then it will be coming. Okay. So guys, uh, just be there till the complete session. Then only you would be able to get complete benefit of this session. And after the end of this session, you will get to know. uh that what how it is going to be helpful when you would be solving the problems okay so it is really required and uh, likewise if you will be having two day subject then you will also be able to make decision that how you have to utilize the other marathons also because entire series would be covering all the subjects and definitely it is going to help you in complete examination Sir, because complete uh, syllabus is there masu mayur is asking what is important in som नहीं मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट सी आई के नॉट सेल यू मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट इन द स्टार्टिंग वी हैव शोन द स्लाइड फ्रॉम वेयर बट लीस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट सर इफ यू एग्री आल्सो शेयर सेंटर स्प्रिंग इज लीस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट सेंटर से तो मतलब बहुत ही बहुत ही रेयर है ना प्रेशर वेसल से आ सकता है पर स्टिल अगर मैं कहूं कि पहला फर्स्ट चैप्टर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्ट्रेसेस इनके मुकाबले इससे कम आएगा बहुत कम आता है ना जनरली मतलब ये समझे कि अगर आज तक का रिकॉर्ड देखेंगे 30 इयर्स में 10 12 क्वेश्चंस यू विल फाइंड और और एक और चीज uh, uh, मैंने ऐसा नोट किया आपने ऐसा नोट किया कि नहीं पता नहीं डिस्कस नहीं किया कभी आपसे कि डिफ्लेक्शन टॉपिक विल बी मोर आस्क्ड एंड लिटिल बिट हार्डर क्वेश्चंस फॉर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग एंड टॉर्शन टॉपिक विल बी लिटिल बिट मोर आस्क्ड एंड हार्डर क्वेश्चन फॉर मैकेनिकल क्योंकि हमें डिफ्लेक्शन से काम होता है एक्चुअल फील्ड में भी और आपको शॉर्ट फॉर टॉर्शन से होता है सर डिफ्लेक्शन में क्या होता है ज्यादातर कैलकुलेटिव भी होता है इवन चाहे मैकेनिकल का भी क्वेश्चन होगा तो टाइम टेकिंग होगा वो अदर क्वेश्चन से ये तो मतलब ध्यान रखने वाली ये देखो ये अल्ट्रन क्या टेस्ट ले रहे हो क्या हमारा ई इज इक्वल टू थ्री के वन माइनस टू म्यू नहीं सर वो एक्चुअली बता रहा है कि ये इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक अच्छा 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 ही टू हेल्प अस एक्चुअली ओके मैं आजकल जो भी हेल्प कर रहा है उसी को मैं आजकल ऐसे कह रहा हूँ गेट में अप्रोक्स कितने मार्क्स का आता है सोम आशीष शर्मा फॉर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इट इज सी सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इट इज अराउंड अलियर इट कम्स ऑफ ट्वेल्व टू फोर्टीन मार्क्स ट्वेल्व मार्क्स ऑल्सो फॉर लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स टू बी वेरी जेनुअन विद यू इट इज कमिंग सिक्स टू सेवन मार्क्स बट मैं तो कह रहा हूँ सेवन इज इवन कमिंग ऑफ जीरो मार्क्स और वन मार्क्स स्टिल इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट इज रिलेटेड टू अदर टॉपिक्स लाइक प्रोडक्शन मशीन डिजाइन इज टोटली डिपेंडिंग ऑन सोम स्ट्रक्चर इन सिविल इज टोटली डिपेंडिंग ऑन सोम सो इट विल बी हेल्पफुल देयर एंड सर इन सिविल इट इज सिक्स टू सेवन मार्क्स फ्रॉम लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स बट इट इज द बेसिक ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इन सोम मेडिकल अगर हम देखें तो एट टू टेन मार्क्स मतलब रहता है जनरली वेटेज एट मार्क्स तो रहता ही है बट इवन समाइम वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन लाइक इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी फोर्टीन मार्क्स तक भी सोम आई है तो वी कैन नॉट से कि छह नंबर की आएगी आठ नंबर की आ रही हो सकता है कि दस नंबर की भी आ जाए तो और डेफिनेटली प्रोडक्शन का तो मतलब काफी पोर्शन और मशीन डिजाइन तो पूरा सोम पर डिपेंड जियो टेक्निकलन करें जियो टेक्निकल में भी ओके कंटिन्यू करते हैं धीरे सर विल बी कमिंग जस्ट नेक्स्ट आई विल बी कम्प्लीटिंग पॉइजन रेशियो एंड दैट थिंग देन धीरे सर विल बी टेकिंग ऑन ओके एंड फोर्टी परसेंट टाइम विल बी इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर 40% time in the first chapter then remaining chapters will be not that much uh, big
where is that, where is that, okay. So, Poisson ratio is a ratio of lateral strain by longitudinal strain. <coughs> oh no, mm -hmm. no subtitles are required, okay. Now, yes Lokesh, 3C. The direction of force is longitudinal, other direction is lateral. If one is elongating, other is compressing. Okay. If I am applying here, if this is shortening, this is elongating. Okay. And usually this happens, not always. It is elongating here, other side it is compressing. So one will be minus, other will be plus. Or one will be minus, other will be plus. Or to total it will be plus. Okay. Now, yes, this is direction of force is longitudinal. Direction of force is longitudinal. Okay, other is lateral. Other is lateral. Okay. So mu is equal to minus of lateral strain and longitudinal. And for whole, whole here always tension is positive, in tensile elongation is positive, compression is negative, compressive, compression is also negative. Okay. So the direction of force is longitudinal, other is lateral. Now Guys, the value of mu will be coming in this later on. I will be coming to this GIF also later on. That is wine, something related. Wine is something related. So, 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 this is not visible here. Let me just, 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 just do this. Okay, now visible. Now see, value of mu is this. Now, let me tell you three different answers in gate examination for the same question of value of mu. One time they have given the answer that value of mu is from 0 to 0 0.5, highest value is for rubber. One time they have given the answer as 1 by 3 to 1 by 4 and students are very confused. And one time they have given the range of mu as this much. So high, okay. Guys, no need to worry. No need to worry because the exact question was not like this. The exact question was, what is the mu for all substances in this word? Then it will be minus also. When it is written as or metals, then it is 0 to 0 0.5. And when it is written as ductile metals, then it is 1 by 3 to 1 by 4. So that depends on that range of mu is asked for metals or what? Okay, or all substances this. Now, value 0, what 0 refers? 0 refers means, suppose this is cork and you are applying force like this. So, lateral strain is 0. Mu is lateral by long term. So, that means, that means the elongation will be something like this. The elongation will be something like this and lateral strain is not happening in cork. That is why, that is why cork is used in the wine bottle. That is why the cork is used in the wine bottle. Because the wine di bottle's internal diameter, wine bottle's internal diameter is stopped or is covered by the cork. So, cork diameter should not be decreasing or cork diameter should not be increasing. Otherwise, if it is decreasing, then kitanu, bacteria, virus will be going if the cork diameter decreases. Otherwise, then there will be opening. Na. And it should not be increasing also. Otherwise, this glass will be break out. It will be shattered. So, yes, that is why cork is used because lateral strain is zero. Have you got it, this interesting fact? Have you got this interesting fact? Yes. Now, guys, mu negative. Mu negative means your understanding. Mu negative means mu is equal to minus lateral upon longitudinal strain. Mu negative means for a somebody when applying force, both are increasing. Both are increasing. So it is minus, that is the form, and both are plus. So it is again minus. So how this happens? How this happens? Guys, this is a piece of paper or any material. If I am elongating like this, it is elongating here also, here also. Still confused? Still confused? Still confused? Let me tell you here. Let me tell you here. Suppose these are hinges. These are hinges. These are hinges. And these hinges are such that if I apply the force like this, 
if I apply the force like this, it is changing like this, not this much bigger. It is changing like this. It is changing like this. Both direction it is increasing. So now you say, sir, I am not understanding this both direction how it can increase. How it increase? I am not understanding. I am not getting feeling. You know why you are not feeling? Because in your mind there is a wrong concept that volume is constant. I started this lecture. I started so that here we are dealing with deformable physics. Here we are dealing with deformable physics. Here volume is not constant. Volume can increase. Volume can decrease. Okay, so you you are not accepting this figure because in your mind you are saying that volume is constant. No, volume is not even constant here. Volume is not even constant here. Volume is not even constant here. Okay, because increase and the compression is not same. Mu value is less than 0.5. That means longitudinal denominator is more. Longitudinal lateral is less. Even the volume is not constant here. Got it, guys? Everybody, give me yes or no. Uh, what is happening this year? What is giving me a yes or no, please? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know in the comment section. Please, guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why this? Uh, let me mute it. Let me mute it. Now it will not be coming. <coughs> okay. So, unidirectional loading. Suppose. This is one direction loading is there. Sigma X, of course, here also sigma X is acting for balancing. <coughs> this is X direction. This is Y. And the Z is that is coming to your head. Now, what is mu? Mu is lateral strain upon longitudinal strain. Guys, here sigma X by epsilon X is equal to Young's modulus unidirectional loading. Unidirectional loading, Hooke's law is valid. Unidirectional loading, Hooke's law is valid. Unidirectional loading, Hooke's law is valid. So, it is sigma x by e. Sigma x by e. So, here epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e. Guys, mu is equal to lateral is y and x. Lateral is also z. Lateral is any direction perpendicular to the longitudinal. Longitudinal is the direction of stress. So, x is longitudinal. So, that means y and z both are lateral y and z both are lateral. So, from here epsilon y is equal to epsilon z is equal to minus mu epsilon x. So, here epsilon y is equal to epsilon z is equal to minus mu sigma x by e. Have you got it? And it is quite relatable also. It is quite relatable also if this is increasing, this is increasing plus value, plus value. So, in y and z it will be compressing. In Y and Z, it will be compressing. By default, we assume for metals. Have you got this? Have you got this? Now, let me tell you for the multi axial loading. multi axial loading. Suppose this is X. This is suppose Y. And this is suppose Z. Okay. And now, here I am making a body like this. Tui, 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 tui. Sigma x acting here, okay. Sigma y acting here, okay. Sigma y acting here and sigma z acting here. And sigma z acting here. Sigma z acting here. Everyone, please see now. Everyone. What is epsilon x? Any doubts, guys? We'll be taking that. Don't worry. We'll be in between 30 minutes, we'll be taking a doubt session also. Epsilon x is equal to Along, leave all this, leave all this, due to sigma x, due to sigma x, in x direction, what is the elongation? Sigma x by e. Now, due to y, leave all these two, due to y, due to, leave all these two, leave, forget these two, y it is elongating here. So, due to y, x will be compressing. Leave these two, leave these two. If y elongating here, so x it will be minus. Minus and y is lateral for it. For x, y is lateral. So minus mu sigma y by e. Like here. Like here. Y and z are lateral for this x. Y and z are lateral for this x. Have you got it? Have you got it? Okay. Now leave these two. Leave these two. 
लीव दीज टू लीव दीज टू फॉर जेड फॉर जेड फॉर जेड इफ जेड इज मिलवा दू अच्छा ओके नाउ लीव दीज टू इफ जेड आई एम लॉन्ग एटिंग लाइक दिस इफ जेड आई एम लॉन्ग एटिंग लाइक दिस इट विल बी कंप्रेसिंग ना यार ओके इफ आई एम डूइंग लाइक दिस यार If I'm doing like this, if this my lips are going here, so it is coming down here, na yar. Similarly, due to z, if it is coming here, so this will be compression. So minus mu sigma z by e. Have you got it? Everybody on the comment box, give me yes or no. Give me yes or no. Y or n? Y or n? Everybody on the comment section. Jaldi maja do. Bol main smart board tod dunga, fir baiju ka nuksan ho jayega. Jaldi yes no follow. Okay. Similarly, now due to y direction, strain in y. Leave these two. Leave these two. इनको नाउ ड्यू टू सिग्मा वाई इलोंगेशन इन वाई ड्यू टू सिग्मा वाई इलोंगेशन इन वाई इट विल बी सिग्मा वाई बाई ई नाउ लीव दीज टू लीव दीज टू ड्यू टू सिग्मा एक्स ड्यू टू सिग्मा एक्स इलोंगेशन इन वाई सी सिग्मा एक्स इज इलोंगेटिंग हेयर सिग्मा एक्स इलोंगेटिंग हेयर सो वाई इट विल बी कंप्रेसिंग सिग्मा वाई इज इलोंगेटिंग हेयर सो वाई इट विल बी कंप्रेशन एंड ड्यू टू Due to x, y is literal. Due to x, y is literal. So it is minus mu sigma x by e. Due to mu, it is minus mu sigma x by e, and minus mu sigma z by e. Okay. Similarly, epsilon z is equal to sigma z by e minus mu sigma x by e minus mu sigma y by e. Please let me know. Have you understood this or not? Please let me know. Have you understood this or not? Otherwise, I'll repeat again. Otherwise, I'll repeat again. Otherwise, I'll repeat again. Otherwise, I will repeat again. Otherwise, I'll repeat again. Okay. Now, let me make it a little bit clear so that you can revise it also. Okay. And I'm just making a twist here. I'm just making a twist here that will make this topic concrete for the next two three years. I'm just. See epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e minus mu sigma y by e minus mu sigma z by e. Epsilon y is equal to sigma y by e. Epsilon y. I'm just making a twist that will make this topic concrete forever. Minus mu sigma x by e minus mu sigma z by e. And epsilon z is equal to sigma z by e minus mu. Sigma x by e minus mu minus mu sigma x by e minus mu sigma y by e. Okay. Now, what if what if in the same body the direction of stresses are changed? Suppose sigma x is here, but sigma y is like this, but sigma z is like this. What if this will be there? Okay. ओके समझा नहीं मयूर आई एम नॉट गेटिंग वट यू वॉन्ट टू से वट यू वॉन्ट टू से नॉट गेटिंग नाउ सी देर टू ऑप्शन देर टू ऑप्शन देर टू ऑप्शन फर्स्ट ऑप्शन टेक दिस एज अ स्टैंडर्ड रिजल्ट एंड अप्लाई द साइन कन्वेंशन लाइक दिस एफ सेल एन एक्स टेक दिस एज स्टैंडर्ड सिग माइक्स इज पॉजिटिव टेक दिस एज स्टैंडर्ड टेक दिस एज स्टैंडर्ड अपलाई साइन कन्वेंशन माइनस म्यू सिग्मा वाई सिग्मा वाई इज कंप्रेशन Sigma y is compression. Take this as standard result. Minus mu sigma z is compression, like this. Take this as a standard result. Apply sign convention like this. Another way, another way by logic. Due to sigma x in x direction. Due to sigma x in x direction. It is tensile, so plus. Since it is x direction strain and it is x direction stress is complete. Complete sigma x by e. Due to y, it is compressing here. Compressing here, so x direction it will be elongating. I am finding the x. X direction it will be elongating. X direction it will be elongating. So plus minus minus will be plus, na plus. But y for y stress x is literal. So mu also. Due to that, if I am compressing here, so x it will be elongating. So plus minus minus also will be plus. But for x direction z is literal. So mu will be also be coming. Have you got this? Have you got this? Have you got this? Have you got this, guys? Please share the session, guys. Everybody, I have one small request. Similarly, you can find others. So, two options: either take as a standard result and apply the sign convention, y and z are minus minus, 
or you can do like this. Okay. Now volumetric strain, I'm not going into the derivation. Let me tell you the volumetric strain is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z because it, we are studying the deformable physics. Nah. We are studying the deformable physics. Nah. Here the volume can change. Nah. Here the volume can change nah, like this. Now, guys, for rubber, what is the volumetric strain? For rubber, what is the volumetric strain? Volumetric strain is equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z into 1 minus 2 mu upon E. For rubber, what is volumetric strain? For rubber, mu is 0 0.5. So, volumetric strain is 0. Okay, agree. Agree. But let me tell you, when uh, earlier the rubber was like this. Now, we fill the air. After filling the air, it becomes like this. So, volume is increasing, na yaar. How from the formula it is coming zero? Can you tell me? Can you tell me, guys, that rubber when we fill, it becomes like this. So, volume is increasing. How from the formula it is coming zero? How from the formula it is coming zero? Please, please, please tell me. Please tell me how it is coming zero. How it is coming zero? Guys, this formula is not for inside volume, is not for inside volume. This formula is for the material. Material volume is not changing. Yes, surface area is increased, but the thickness of that material is decreased. So, rubber's material is not changing. Inside volume formula is not there. That will study in pressure vessels. I know not an exception, yaar. I know not exception. Have you got this? Have you got this? What I am telling? Volume of rubber material is not changing. Inside volume is changing. Nah? Inside volume formula is not this. <coughs> Get or not? Getting or not? Suppose somebody is asking what is the value of sigma? Mu is 0.3. What is the value of sigma so that uh, volume is not changing? So, volumetric strain is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z 1 minus 2 mu by E. So, if it has to be 0, then either this has to be 0 or this has to be 0. If this has to be 0, either this has to be 0, this has to be 0, mu is 0.3. Mu is 0.3. So, this is not equal to 0. So, this has to be 0. So, sigma x is 175. Sigma x is 50. And sigma z is not 22.5. So, it is compression. So, this has to be 0. This value. So, from sigma from here is coming to be 10. Got it? Got it? These questions you can take as a homework. Got it, guys? Everyone? Everyone? Okay. Now, coming to the temperature stresses. Okay. Now, after the zero sir will be coming, guys. Okay. 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 Now, <clears throat> are you enjoying this session, guys? Is it getting benefited to you? PDF will be giving. Have learned something new? Have learned something new? Have learned something new? जल्दी बोलो ओके वेरी हेल्पफुल सेशन गाइस एंड राइट नाउ व्हाट एवर द मार्क्स यू आर गिविंग इन द मॉक टेस्ट नाउ हाउ मच यू आर स्कोरिंग हाउ मच यू आर स्कोरिंग हाउ मच यू आर स्कोरिंग in the marks right now in the mock test and all in the mock test and all compliance and same 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 
synonym Fifty five to sixty is very good. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Teaching slowly, sir. Okay, Gautam. Okay. So due to the change, elongation in length is L alpha delta T due to increase in temperature. Elongation in width is B alpha delta T. Elongation in depth is d alpha delta t and if temperature is increasing it will be elongation if temperature is decreasing it will be shrinking it will be shrinking now there will be no stress guys no stress here yeah no stress if it is free if this is free nobody is resisting it there will be no stress stress only comes stress only comes when there is when there is restriction here it is free here it is free so no, no stress will be coming. Okay, it is just elongation. Just elongation. Got it? Got it? Got it? Got it? Okay, now how stress comes? Everybody. Here, when there is a restriction, the stress will come. Not going into the derivation, it will be E alpha delta T. Or the derivation will be very small here. If it is free, it will be L alpha delta T elongation. If it is free, if it is free. Now, P force will be coming and P will be pushing it back from here to here. So, force up, uh, P will be pushing this much. PL by AE will be L alpha delta T. So, stress is, stress is P by A. So, stress L to L is cancelled. It will be E alpha delta T and this stress will be compressive. Compressive because it wants, this delta T is increasing. If delta T is increasing, it wants to elongate, stress will be compression. And if delta T is decreasing, if delta T is increasing, sigma will be compressive. And if temperature is decreasing, so this will be shrinking. In that case, sigma will be tensile. In that case, sigma will be tensile. Okay. So, these all things are written here. Now, temperature stress in composite bar. Suppose, what is the difference between composite? What is the difference between composite and fixed? Composite means that delta is same. Delta is same. Fixed means delta is zero. Now, these supports are not fixed. These supports are not fixed. Okay. These supports are not fixed. Okay. So, my friends, here elongation can happen, but both elongation will be same. Delta, fixed means delta cannot be there. Fixed means delta cannot be there. So, if it is free, there is no restriction. If it is free, there is no restriction. Alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2. So, elongation of this will be more. And elongation of this will be less. Of course, both sides. Of course, both sides, but I am showing only one side. Of course, both sides, but I am showing only one side. Now, since delta is same, so they will be resting somewhere here. Suppose you are Alia Bhatt and Ranbir Kapoor started at mountain trekking. Ranbir Kapoor has more stamina. If he was alone, he can go up to here till night. He, in night, he will be putting his camp here. If Alia Bhatt alone, he will be coming only here, less stamina. But since both of them has to stay together in the night, so delta has to be same. So Ranbir Kapoor will be restricting his stamina and a little bit Alia Bhatt will be pushing. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. Now, if one was free, it will be elongating up to here. Of course, both sides I am just showing on one side. If two is free, it will be elongating here. Both will be elongating because temperature is increasing. So this elongation, if it was free, was L alpha 1 delta T and this was L alpha 2 delta T if it is free. Okay. But now there will be some forces here. No, you cannot elongate more than this. And here will be some forces. You cannot, you cannot elongate up to here. You have to more. You have to elongate more. So 
P and P forces will be coming, say net force is 0, so both will be same. So, of course, this will be the lesser, lesser alpha will be in tensile and more alpha will be in compression. So, suppose this length is delta 1 and this length is delta 2. So, delta 1 plus delta 2 is equal to L alpha 1 delta T minus L alpha 2 delta T and delta 1 is equal to P L by A1 E1 and delta 2 is equal to P by A2 L2 by E2. From these equations, we can find out the stresses. We can find out the value of P and P by A1 is the stress and P by A2 is the stress for the bar 2. Similarly, for temperature decrease case, it will be vice versa. For temperature decrease case, it will be vice versa. In, if it is fixed, if it is fixed, now many times now, sub, I say to my students that alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 and temperature increase. So, where the stress will be compression, they say sir more alpha. No, in fixed, both will be in compression. This has to be elongate here, this has to be elongate here if it is free. But now both will be coming here, delta is 0. So, both will be in compression. Both will be in compression. Have you got it? 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 Please tell me. Okay. Now, these questions Q fixed in one direction, three direction will be taking in midnight. This one also. In midnight session, we will be taking this. Okay. In midnight session, we will be taking this. Okay, now, guys, stress, impact loading is not, it will be, what is impact loading? The stress, I will tell you later, don't worry. Impact loading is that if the load is static, in impact case, sudden load, it is two times, two times of static. In impact loading, the stress is two times. If the height of free fall is negligible, I will tell you that. So, Poisson ratio, elastic constant, thermal stress is, stress is done by me, by me by me, by me, this I will be doing, although not important, but still, this will be taken by the Dhirat sir, and this will be taken by the Dhirat sir, okay, now, this is also taken by the Dhirat sir, now, this I will be taking, this Dhirat sir will be taking, okay, this Dhirat sir will be taking, okay, and this both of us will be taking, okay, so, I will be coming here now, in this, then I'll be coming here now. Very small chapter, 10 minutes chapter. This will be 20 minutes chapter. 10 and 20, 30 minutes. Don't worry, guys. 40% time will be here. Okay. And then I'll be coming here also. So, let me tell you approximately that first chapter will be taking 40% time. And chapter number from 2 to 8. 2 to 8 will be taking 60% time. If, even it can be more than 40 as per my experience, even it can be more than 40 and 50 also. Okay. So, guys, please share now the legend himself. The legend himself of strength of material is coming. Please, sir. Thank you, sir, for okay. that wonderful introduction. <laughs> that was, sir, you deserve. Now, so, guys, uh, just I like and share like the session. Monitoring. Sir, I had a question. Diya tha. Okay. Uska a photo. Le liya. Thiga, sir. Uh, yeah. आज के आज ही कैश प्राइस है ना लेकिन हाँ ये हम पहले से एग्री करते हैं की हो सकता है क्योंकि यहाँ पे कोई जजमेंट कम्प्यूटराइज नहीं हो रहा है हम स्क्रीन शॉट लेके जज करेंगे तो मे बी लिटिल बिट थोड़ा सा हमारा एरर हो जाए आपको यार पांच सौ रुपए हजार रुपए दो हजार रुपए नहीं जीतने हैं ना आपको तो लाखों की सैलरी लेनी है लोगों का भला करना है ठीक है एंड आई विल बी रेगुलरली मॉनिटरिंग योर कमेंट्स ओके सो नाउ दिस विल बी धीरे सर दिस विल बी धीरे सर दिस विल बी आई विल बी कमिंग हियर सर आप सेशन देख रहे थे मेरा बिल्कुल सर डेफिनेटली अरे सर बहुत जबरदस्त कुछ कमी सर हम कौन से थे कमी निकालने वाले हैं आप ठीक है सर नाउ द लेजेंड जिनसे मैं ही बहुत सारी चीज सीखता रहता हूं सर के सेशन देखता रहता हूं अब आपको पढ़ाएंगे तो प्लीज डू शेयर सेशन गाइस हम्बल इकस मैं भी अभी अपने टेलीग्राम पे कर दे रहा हूं शेयर आप भी अपने अपने टेलीग्राम पे शेयर कर दो मैं दो मिनट में अभी कर देता हूं मैं ठीक है ना
आप भी अपना अपना कर दो भाई अभी क्या अभी मैं जैसे कर रहा हूँ ना वैसे आप भी कर दो तो ही ज्वाइन मैराथन सिविल बाय अभिनव सर भाई मैं कर दिया आप भी कर देना ठीक है जी सर मचा दीजिए आप पूरा धन्यवाद सर सो गाइस नाउ लेट अस कंटिन्यू द फर्स्ट चैप्टर एंड नाउ वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रेस एंड डायग्राम सो गाइस इफ यू सी द प्रीवियस ईयर्स पेपर वेदर इट इज फॉर गेट एंड इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज एवरी टाइम वन क्वेश्चन इज कमिंग है ना तो यस डेफिनेटली दिस पीडीएफ वुड बी गिवन टू यू आफ्टर द सेशन ओके यू विल बी गेटिंग द पीडीएफ आफ्टर द सेशन ऑन द टेलीग्राम चैनल so now we are talking about the stress strain diagram we would be starting so guys even if you have not listen about this before then also you are going to learn a lot so now let us start without wasting the time guys so we would be talking about the stress strain diagram so to discuss about stress strain diagram first of all i would be telling you that you know when we are making this diagram this is made based on a test named as tension test and guys tension test is one of the standard test which is performed in strength of material and why i am saying this standard test whenever things are becoming standard they are done based on some wonderful guidelines based on some guidelines so guys tension test is said to be a standard test and my dear the standards are decided for this test by astm i feel everybody would be knowing what is astm american society of testing and materials and guys i would also like to tell you it is standard test because it gives 19 elastic properties now you might be thinking sir what are those 19 elastic properties so guys yes 19 elastic properties like young's modulus like yield strength like ultimate strength like ductility like resilience like toughness and yes i am going to talk about all these properties right now okay so when we are talking about this diagram initially a dog bone shape of specimen is taken like that and you can see only this much length is considered for any kind of any kind of experiment or property calculation this part and this part are just made to just hold it in the jaws of the machine okay so guys initially the diagram plotted was between load and deformation so initially when we have plotted these diagram they were between load and deformation and when we have done it for mild steel a curve of this type have come like that but my dear there was a problem like abhinav sir have already told you that delta is pl upon ae so just imagine this is delta pl upon a if you want to have the same delta for a specimen whose area is becoming 2a so my dear let us say area is becoming 2a means right now i am doing experiment on this uh, work piece and if let us say i am taking another specimen which is of double size area is double so if area is becoming double to get the same delta to get the same delta if area is becoming double you need to double the force force also needs to be double so my dear because of that you would be getting different curve for the other component which is having same material but having different size so this curve is going to depend on shape and size so my dear if you want to avoid that dependency on shape and size for that purpose if my dear we would be replacing this force by stress which is defined as force but a area then if area is becoming twice force is becoming twice stress is not going to change so you would be getting the same curve same curve for all the areas of cross section means with the change of area and length you will not be finding any change any change in the diagram so diagram will remain the same then my dear second question generally is coming into students mind that sir why it is made like stress on y axis and strain on x axis why stress on y axis and strain on x axis so guys the reason for that is also there whenever you are going to define something you are going to define y as a function of x so my dear definitely you already know stresses are coming when strains are restricted partially or completely so stresses are coming when strains are restricted partially or completely so definitely we are writing stress as a function of strain that is y on x axis we are keeping strain and on y axis we are keeping stress yes 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 definitely thanks umar you are uh, remembering all these things that's really great 
so guys if you have any doubt just you can ask me okay so we are starting with the stress strain diagram before we go into that let us have one quick definition of engineering stress and true stress okay what is that my dear you know whenever you are having a member like this and you are going to apply some tensile forces onto that you know that length would be increasing area would be reducing so my dear let us say after some time you would be having some length to be increased and area to be decreased okay so initially length was l naught area was a naught finally length is lf area is af okay that is the thing so my dear you know area is changing with the time length is changing with the time both area and length are the functions of the time so with the time things are going to change so obviously if you will say stress is force but a area area is something who is going to have fight with the load so if area is getting reduced it is just like the bank balance of yours like on the first of every month you are getting some some pocket money from your parent side but my dear after 15 days you may have spent 70 percent of that but my dear in the stress strain when we are talking about the same way when you are applying the load area is also changing like there your bank balance is changing so if area is changing with the time then my dear if you will be defining the stress if denominator is changing with the time this is stress when you would be defining at any time it would be defined as stress as force but a instantaneous area because this area is a function of time so if you are talking about how much money you want to spend on the 15th of the month then for that you will be checking the bank balance of the same day it is not like aapko kharcha 30 tarikh ko karna hai to aap bank balance first date ka dekhoge it is not like that so guys that is the reason i am saying that the real value of stress would be force but a instantaneous area but my dear in entire strength uh, entire strength of material we are going to define a hypothetical thing that is said to be engineering stress and engineering stress is defined as load but a original area of cross section so here my dear we are taking that area which is uh, is there at the starting point so my dear as it is the theoretical value of stress we are calling it as engineering stress similarly when you would be writing delta l by l naught it is said to be engineering strain okay some questions are also coming material property yield strength ultimate strength strain rate ke sath change hota hai ha definitely definitely dear it changes with the strain rate yes very good sir what uh, what cases true strain gives negative and positive value okay dear we will discuss that also so first of all we get to know that true stress is load but a instantaneous area true strain is deformation by instantaneous length engineering stress is load but a original area engineering strain is delta l by l naught in the entire sum we are going to take care of engineering stress and engineering strain so guys whatever the diagram we are plotting that is also between engineering stress and engineering strain so on y axis we are going to have engineering stress and engineering strain you might be thinking sir when load deformation diagram is converted into that will the diagram change or diagram will remain the same so my dear you know when you are defining engineering stress load but a original area of cross section which is constant so you are just providing a scale factor so the curve will remain same in nature similarly strain is also delta l divided by l not which is a constant that is why whether you make p delta diagram or stress strain diagram it remain the same so guys in next 30 minutes we will be completing this stress strain diagram and one question is coming every year from this topic and then we will be going for the sfd bmd and there also you will get one question every year so guys in next 1 to 1.5 hours you are going to confirm your 3 to 4 marks for sure yes uh, stress strain is independent of dimension manas as i already told you stress and strain are defined at a point okay so definitely when we are talking about the point we need not to be thinking about the dimension yes it is independent of the dimension okay so now we are looking into this curve so when we are talking about this curve you know this type of curve is coming for a material known as mild steel okay the second name of mild steel is also said to be low carbon steel so anybody would like to answer why low carbon steel was given the name of mild steel i discussed this concept many times can anybody answer why low carbon steel is said to be the mild steel this is the question asked in interviews so guys just as you already know uh, we are going to give prizes to the students who are going to answer from starting to end yes teju you are telling how it is going to be made i am asking why mild word is used for the low carbon steel why we are calling it mild steel yes 
low response for heating okay there is mild effect of carbon okay uh, want uh, react very much okay he, very good so sujish have given the right answer so guys actually whenever we are going for the heat treatment which is done to improve the properties of the steel for that what we do we are going to heat it then hold it then cool it so in the heat treatment my dear if you see the low carbon steel it's 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 response is very very mild like if i am asking you something you guys are answering very fastly i will say your response is very quick and good but if no one would be answering what i will say i will say response is very mild so i will say it is a mild batch it is a mild class mild class going on so guys as low carbon steel is not going to give proper response not much response to heat treatment that is why we are calling it as mild steel because of its mild response wonderful guys so when we are talking about this curve this is between engineering stress and engineering strain so as you are going to start doing the loading you can see initially stress varies linearly with the strain because there is a point up to which material obeys the hooke's law that point is said to be the proportional limit and you know how we will define it as uh, sigma is directly proportional to epsilon to the power 1 that is why if some material is obeying hooke's law we call it as linearly elastic material so sigma is directly proportional to epsilon to the power 1 this is said to be the hooke's law and up to some of the point proportional limit hooke's law is valid up to this stress strain curve is coming out to be linear you may be thinking sir every material of universe will follow the hooke's law then i will say the answer is no to that because if you talk about gray cast iron it do not follows hooke's law so its curve is coming curvature it is never coming straight line it do not follows the hooke's law but my dear in strength of material we are going with the assumption that all the materials which we are going to study here they are going to obey the hooke's law so you need not to worry about gray cast iron here so my dear once you will reach to proportional limit after that if you continue the loading my dear you will reach to another point that is elastic limit elastic limit is a point up to which material will behave elastically what do you mean by elastically if you are going to apply some load onto this member its dimension will change after removal of load it will come back to original shape and size this property is said to be elasticity so this is the point up to which material behave elastically or material follows this property elasticity what do you mean by that my dear if you are going to load up to this point and unload material will come back to the original shape and size and there will not be any permanent deformation and my dear that is why this point is said to be elastic limit the reason behind that is up to this whatever be you are doing my dear that is stored with the material why because up to this the bonds are not going to be broken so my dear if you have two atoms you know in the atom there are positively charged nucleus and negatively charge electron positive positive repel each other negative negative repel each other so my dear there are some repulsion forces between nucleus and electrons similarly opposite charge attract so nucleus will attract electron of other electron will attract nucleus of other so there are some attractive forces between two atoms so my dear attractive forces repulsive forces both are present between the atoms when two atoms are going away from each other attraction increases repulsion reduces when they are coming closer to each other attraction reduces repulsion increases so my dear there is a distance between two atom at which attraction and repulsion becomes equal this is said to be the bond length distance at which atoms would like to be always time and if you are going to take them away attraction will increase if you will compress them compression will uh, then definitely they will be going away from each other repulsion will increase and that is why whenever you are going to apply like the load onto the member you are going to take the atoms away so after removal of load that attraction will take the atom closer once again and that is why after removal of load atoms or body comes to its original position then my dear if you are not stopping here also you are continuing the loading then my dear some permanent deformation will also start coming you would be reaching to another point that is said to be upper yield point you need to understand the definition of yielding if i am going to take stress on y axis strain on x axis then yielding means a condition where stress is going to be constant but strain is increasing continuously if strain increasing at constant value of stress this condition is said to be yielding and the second name of this is the perfectly plastic behavior you can see this kind of behavior we are getting for this region so that is why this region is said to be the yielding region
and my dear this part which we are calling as yielding region is starting from lower yield point so lower yield point is said to be the real yield point of the material whereas this upper yield point is not the real yield point even if you will be doing the experiment on one machine to other then with the change of machine this point will change with the change of specimen the point will change so that is why this cannot be the property of material upper yield point is not the real yield point of the material lower yield point is the real yield point of the material uh, sir after this session please share the practice question also with solution definitely dear devender singh i would also like to tell you in uh, tonight only at 11:55 pm we would be having a practice session also of som where we would be solving some 20 to 25 wonderful question that also would be given to you with the proper solution uh sir where is uh dear that we will talk in the material science okay so that we will talk about the but in the material science yes so shall we move on guys sabhi ko samajh aa raha hai aditya yes 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 wonderful guys wonderful guys i have taken teju your question i feel so till if you find any difficulty you can ask so guys let us move further so we have already talked we have already talked about this point so lower yield point is the real yield point so stress correspond to this is given the name of yield stress and my dear mild steel is the only material in this universe which is going to show two yield points other materials in this universe either they will show zero yield point or they will show only one yield point mild steel the only one which shows two yield point sir how much duration is the practice session one hour dear practice session would be for one hour or you can say one hour 15 minutes not more than that so guys now we are moving to that what is going on up to this point so my dear after this point plastic deformation is getting started means the atoms are now we are going to have the breaking of bond previously atom was moving but their bonds were not breaking so that is why after removal of load they were coming back but my dear once you cross this point now permanent deformation will happen bonds will break so because of that my dear now atoms will leave their position like if someone leaves his home what we call him we call him as he is dislocated from his home so my dear likewise some atoms are leaving their positions so that group of atom those who have left their homes we will call them dislocations so my dear now 3 to 5 atoms groups have left their position they are moving like anything under the action of forces so when those 3 5 atoms are moving because of that movement you would be having the plastic deformation to happen that is why up to which because of the motion of dislocation is happening freely the size of material is increasing and that deformation is going to be some permanent one means if after this point you are going to remove the load you will never come back to this position but my dear what happened after this point after this point if you are going to continue the load now those dislocation who have left their position one dislocation of five atoms is moving like this other dislocation of three atoms is coming like this other dislocation of seven atoms is coming like this so these dislocations are coming in the path of each other so they will be showing the resistance to each other so because of that internal resistance developed or increased we would be having an increase in the stresses and that will happen up to the ultimate point so my dear yield point ultimate point they are giving the properties value yes sir you are uh, skipping material which is having more than one yield point uh, sir you are skipping material no dear i said mild steel is the material which shows two yield points when we are talking about other materials like aluminium magnesium they are the material which do not show even a single yield point and there are some materials which shows one yield point also okay so that is what like if you are going to talk about uh, yield point and ultimate point sir only mild steel have more yes only mild steel have more than two yield uh, more than one yield point you are are skipping material which is having more than one yield point so mbs yes 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 you got it i feel so so guys this region is said to be the strain hardening region so here we are getting the ultimate point yield point is the point yield point is the point when we are talking about at which the plastic deformation start or permanent plastic behavior is going to happen and my dear ultimate point after this what will happen after this my dear crack will start propagating in the material here crack will be generating 
and because of generation of crack that crack is going to flow and that crack when it will be propagating it would be dividing the body into two parts and finally you would be reaching to the fracture point so this region is strain hardening region this is necking region necking is also said to be strain softening necking is also said to be strain softening so my dear this is how we are going to define this stress strain diagram so at yield point permanent deformation starts at ultimate point cracking starts so this is how the stress strain diagram is going to be defined now my dear some questions are coming uh, from this topic like if you are talking about this strain hardening region here my dear if you are talking about in the strain hardening region the relation between stress and strain the relation between stress and strain is given as stress is directly proportional to strain to the power n where n is going to be less than 1 so my dear let us take an assumption let us take an assumption that if we have stress is directly proportional to strain to the power 0 0.5 it means stress is directly proportional to square root of strain then my dear they are asking that in this region out of stress and strain which is increasing at the higher rate so if you will see my dear if you are going to do the strain four times the stress will become two times if you will do strain nine time stress will become three times if you are going to do strain 16 times stress will become four times so what do you feel out of stress strain out of stress strain which is increasing at the faster rate this is the question already asked in engineering services and isro paper it can repeat in one mark gate question also yes tell me guys what will happen tell me what will happen yes this is slightly theoretical part but question is coming every year guys from this yes what will you answer strain is increasing at higher rate very good avinash manas sashank shubham shreyas both badhiya so guys strain is increasing at faster rate anyone can anyone can answer it so this was the stress strain diagram now we are talking about true stress versus true strain diagram yes very good very good very good guys very good shakti so my dear when we are talking about true stress and true strain you know there is a derivation done for that so we will not waste time here because they are directly asking the result so for true stress the answer would be coming out to be engineering stress into 1 plus engineering strain this is for the tension for compression you will be having minus sign here similarly true strain can be defined as ln 1 plus engineering strain so my dear here plus sign will be coming for tension and minus sign would be coming for compression so this is the relation between true stress and true strain with the engineering stress and engineering strain so guys you must be clear that the real values of stress and strain are true values engineering values are not the true values you also should be aware that stress is not a measurable quantity we are just calculating the stress with the help of hooks law okay i feel you are getting guys so moving further guys now we are talking about stress strain diagram for various grades of steel so when we are talking about various grades of steel you can say this is low carbon steel medium carbon steel high carbon steel so when we are talking about low carbon steel the diagram we have just seen this much part of the diagram is said to be elastic and rest part is said to be the plastic so you can say this is the elastic plastic distribution of low carbon steel so when we see the diagram for medium and high carbon steel what we found we found the same value of slope for all the diagrams it means you know that young's modulus is defined as the tangent of this theta the theta is the angle made here so my dear you know that for all of them theta is same tangent theta is same so that is why young's modulus of low carbon steel is equals to medium carbon steel is equals to high carbon steel so for every grade of steel the young's modulus value remain the same now my dear if you see the plastic region then you can see one thing my dear for medium carbon steel this is the elastic region because they have shown this as the yield point so this is going to be the plastic region so they you can see plastic region is less elastic is more than low carbon steel similarly when you go to high carbon steel here elastic region is quite more than both of them elastic region is the region up to which bolts are not breaking deformation is elastic up to which after removal of load the body will regain its shape and size yes shreyas you are correct so my dear that is why i will say that when we are talking about the elastic region it is highest for high carbon steel 
देन फॉर मीडियम कार्बन स्टील देन फॉर लो कार्बन स्टील ऑन दिस गेट हैव आस्क द क्वेश्चन दे हैव आस द क्वेश्चन बिटवीन टू थिंग्स लाइक इफ वी हैव माइल्ड स्टील डायग्राम लाइक दिस इफ वी हैव कास्ट आयरन डायग्राम लाइक दिस so if you are going to load them at same value of stress then you will find the strain comes in cast iron is more than that of the mild steel so that type of questions are generally asked my dear so this is about the elastic region now we are talking about the plastic region so plastic region is more for low carbon steel than medium carbon steel and then high carbon steel you might be thinking why we are discussing elastic region and plastic region there my dear elastic region वेरी गुड आदित्य इलास्टिक रीजन इज इंडिकेटर ऑफ द प्रोपर्टी नेम्ड एज इलास्टिसिटी एंड माई डियर प्लास्टिक रीजन इज द इंडिकेटर ऑफ द प्रोपर्टी नोन एज डक्टिलिटी सो इफ समन आस्क यू विच मटीरियल विच मटीरियल इज मोर डक्टाइल यू विल से लो कार्बन स्टील इफ समन आस्क यू विच मटीरियल इज मोर इलास्टिक यू विल से हाई कार्बन स्टील सो माई डियर यू कैन से दैट इलास्टिसिटी इज गिवन बाय द इलास्टिक रीजियन plasticity is given by the plastic region that is nothing but the ductility so guys please tell me up to this are you getting or not yes yes guys just tell me in the comment section whether you are getting it or not aditya umar yes 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 umar you can say that as well that's really correct so guys do like and share the session i want more and more students to join because this is the first chapter going on and then we will enter into the stress uh, sfd bmd yes guys moving to the next this is for engineering material the generalized uh, you can say uh, for different different material i am showing you like you can say this is for mild steel this is for aluminum this is for cast iron this diagram i am showing you to tell you that you can see young's modulus is highest for the low carbon steel then it is for the cast iron then it is for the aluminum so you can say young's modulus of of mild steel is generally two times than that of the cast iron and it is generally three times than that of aluminum so my dear what does young's modulus tells if young's modulus value is more the curve the angle this angle will be more and if angle will be more this curve will be more towards y axis and on y axis we have stress so on y axis x is zero strain zero means deformation zero deformation zero means rigid it means more value of young's modulus is indicating that body is going towards more rigidity so guys young's modulus is indicating the rigidity so we get to know this property that young's modulus is telling us about rigidity and we have seen elastic region tells us elasticity plastic region tells us ductility so this is how the properties are depending one more thing from this diagram you can feel for cast iron in tension this is the value of ultimate strength for cast iron in compression this is the value of ultimate strength so if you see tension and compression for different material you will find every material is found to be good in compression so my dear if i divide the material into two categories one is ductile other is brittle so you will find for ductile material they are weak in shear ductile materials are weak in shear so they generally fail in the shear stress and brittle materials are weak in tension but my dear any material is going to be best in compression so as brittle material do not show the plastic deformation much so that is why for ductile material we show failure as yielding for brittle material they do not show plastic deformation so they do not yield so they show direct fracture so for them we are considering the ultimate value of stresses i feel you are getting yes so apnil you are correct a is said to be axial rigidity so e is going to play wonderful role because you know when the body would be rigid area cannot be infinity so who is going to infinity to make the body rigid e and when it will be infinity when you would be having theta to be 90 degree because you know tangent 90 is infinity so my dear that is what we can understand from these wonderful curves very good sagar bahut hi badhiya so guys moving further to this graph where we are going to talk about the stress strain diagram for generalized material generalized material means we will not be talking about some particular material but we would be talking about some particular behaviors like when we are saying generalized we are talking about generally behavior like one person can be honest 
वन पर्सन कैन बी डिसऑनेस्ट वन पर्सन कैन बी अ पर्सन हु ऑलवेज स्पीक ट्रुथ वन पर्सन कैन बी अ पर्सन हु ऑलवेज स्पीक लाई यू नो ऑल दीज आर आइडियल पर्सनैलिटीज बिकॉज वी आर नेवर गोइंग टू बी ऑनेस्ट ऑल द टाइम वी आर नेवर गोइंग टू बी डिसऑनेस्ट ऑल द टाइम वी नेवर स्पीक ट्रूथ ऑल द टाइम वी नेवर स्पीक फॉल्स और लाइज एट ऑल द टाइम इन जनरल वी आर कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दैट बट स्टिल एक्सपेक्टेशन वट आर द जनरल बिहेवियर वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग फ्रॉम द पीपल्स फ्रॉम द मटीरियल दैट इज गोइंग टू बी शोन हेयर सो माई डियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल टॉक अबाउट द रिजिड बॉडी यू हैव जस्ट सीन रिजिड बॉडी इज सम वन फॉर विच डिफॉर्मेशन इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो एंड इफ डिफॉर्मेशन इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो डेफिनेटली फॉर दैट स्ट्रेन विल बी जीरो and x is zero on the y axis so for the rigid body you would be making the stress strain diagram like this similarly my dear if you have a material which is elastic and following the hooke's law hooke's law means graph will be linear so my dear then you will be making the curve as linear and it is said to be linearly elastic and if material do not follow hooke's law but follows elasticity the graph will be a curvature and it is said to be non linear elastic then my dear if a material is showing perfectly plastic behavior it means its stress is constant and strain is increasing like this so this is perfectly plastic behavior and if some material is showing elasticity to some extent elasticity to some extent and then showing the perfect plastic behavior that is elastoplastic if a material is showing elastoplastic elastoplastic with some strain hardening then we will say this as elastoplastic with some strain hardening i feel you are getting it properly yes 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 ajay very good aditya very good swapnil very good so guys please tell me are you getting it or not it may be theoretical part but i am giving you every explanation needed for this i am not saying to mug up this okay i am giving you the explanation now we are entering into the properties part which is really very important for examination okay yes great 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 guys so now we are moving to the strain energy so my dear you must have understood about potential energy kinetic energy many times like i say i am having a body of weight mg 10 newton okay yes 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 dear umar we are coming on to that that is covered in the properties okay so this is the body and let us say it is present here 10 newton is the weight so i want to take this body 1 meter above i would be applying you know that 10 newton load then it would be coming up and i am displacing it by 1 meter so i have done some work done mg into h you know i have done some work done that is 10 into 1 meter that is 10 joule so whatever the work i have done that work is utilized in changing the position of the body so in other word i can say that work is stored in the body in the form of potential energy potential energy is energy by virtue of its position so my dear if this body wants to spend that tangible it can come back to original position so that is how the energy is stored in the body similarly if some body is at rest some body is at rest at some velocity zero i am applying some force f because of which it is coming with a velocity of v so this time whatever the work have been done that is getting stored in the form of kinetic energy the energy stored in the form of motion is said to be kinetic energy very good abdul so energy stored in the form of change of position is potential energy stored in the form of motion is kinetic then what is the strain energy so my dear energy stored in the body when the body is getting strained in the form of strain then we will call it as strain energy you know when you were doing the work done body was spending it and coming back to original position similarly my dear by spending the energy which is there with the body body can come back to original position also so now let us see what is strain energy we are having a member and that member is having l length a area e young's modulus of elasticity i am applying a load p on to that you just have seen after load p delta would be the deformation so you know that work done is defined as dot product of f and s so f dot displacement is defined as the work done you also know this is dot product so we can write fs cos theta now you can see force is in downward direction displacement is in downward direction so angle between them is 0 degree so if you will put theta to be 0 it would be f into s so guys i am directly telling you points because 
I know your time is precious. I am not wasting your time. Okay, that's why I am going slightly with a good speed and continuously speaking. Okay, so that your time can be saved and this will work as an audio book for you. But my dear, if you find any difficulty, if you find any doubt, if you feel I am going fast, mention in the comment section so that I can understand whether you are liking the session or not. Okay. So, my dear, work done is given as F into S. Now, my dear, the problem is in strength of material, we are having an assumption. Loading is gradually applied loading. So, whenever we are talking about loading, load diagram with deformation is coming like this. Gradually applied means it is taking some time to become maximum from zero. Okay. So, when it is taking some time from zero to maximum, then my dear, in such cases, I cannot say that force value is P because it is taking time to become maximum. But the variation of the force is linear. So, for such cases, we can use the average value of force. So, we will write it as average force, okay? And displacement is nothing but the delta. So, average force, you can write it as minimum plus maximum by 2. Minimum plus maximum by 2. From here, you would be getting the work done to be 1 by 2 into P into delta. So, my dear, when we say 1 by 2 into P into delta, this is the work done. And this work done you are doing and that is getting stored in the form of strain energy of the body. And my dear, the point is up to the point of elastic limit when you are loading. Then my dear, whatever the work done you are doing that is stored inside the body. Because up to elastic limit, bones are not breaking. You know, in the chemistry, there is a simple principle. Whenever two atoms are joining, when the bond is formed, energy is released. And whenever two bodies are getting broken, energy is required. So here, my dear, we are talking about the breaking of bond. So after elastic limit, bonds will be broken, energy would be spent. But before elastic limit, energy is not spent. So as energy is not spent, so, because of that energy stored inside the body, that is why if you are removing the load up to elastic limit, then my dear body will go back to original position because that energy is stored inside the body completely. It is not going to be used in breaking the bones. But once elastic limit is crossed, bones are broken, some part of the energy is utilized. Let us take an example. You are going from Delhi to Chandigarh and the bus fare for that is 350 rupees. So you are having 700 rupees. You went there with 350 rupees. You are having 350 to come back. But my dear, you spent 50 rupees for chai and parathas there. So you are left with 300 rupees. Now you will say to the bus conductor that I am having 300. That conductor would be leaving you in between because in 300 you cannot reach to the original position. That is why if you are going to apply the load beyond elastic limit, some boards are broken, some energy is getting utilized. So that is why after that you will never come back to original position. There is always some permanent deformation available with the material. So from now onwards, strain energy is half into P into delta. It can also be seen as the area of this diagram because this triangle's area is also 1 by 2 into P into delta. Okay, so that is nothing but the strain energy. So, please tell me guys, everybody understood what is strain energy or not. Yes, now I am defining resilience, proof resilience, moment of, yes, toughness, all these things we will discuss. So, please tell me guys, are you getting it or not? Please tell me, are you getting it or not? So, do like and share the session guys, so that others can also join it. Okay, this is, uh, we are just entering into SFD BMD now. So, I feel you are getting it properly. Yes. Okay. Fine, guys. Fine. Great. 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 Fine. 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 Just, just wait, guys. Great guys, great. So let, let's move further guys. Thanks for that. Guys, let us move. So now we are talking about what is property actually. So now we are going to define the property. Devendra is saying, sir, bars in series and parallel and impact loading is remaining. 
डी राइफिल बार्ज इन सीरीज सर हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इफ दैट इज पेंडिंग डेफिनेटली दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इम्पैक्ट लोडिंग विल बी कवर्ड विद द स्ट्रेन एनर्जी डोंट वरी दैट आई विल टेक केयर ऑफ डोंट वरी ओके वी विल टेक केयर ऑफ एवरी टॉपिक सो लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ मटीरियल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेटर सी वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी ग्रेट ग्रेट मयूर सो माई डियर वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टी सो माई डियर प्रॉपर्टी इज डिफाइंड एज क्वांटिटेटिव इंडाइसिस क्वांटिटेटिव इंडाइसिस मीन्स ए नंबर लाइक यू आर सेइंग यंग्स मॉडलस इज 200 हंड्रेड जीपीए इज इट क्लियर सो दिस इज अ नंबर विच इज गिवन टू द बिहेवियर ऑफ ए मटीरियल and when it is subjected to some external loading you must have seen many times your parents are talking about you to your neighbors uh, your parents are going to talk about you to your parents that let us take an example i am using the name of mayur let us say your parents are saying mayur is very short tempered he is getting angry very so don't mind i am just taking a, a, taking an example so my dear why your parents are saying that they have not seen your horoscope and they are just saying that he is going to be like that no they have observed you in some of the situation where you become angry on the small small things so my dear if we also want to talk about the property first of all we need to load them then we need to see their behavior and then to quantify that we are going to give a number to that property so that is how the property is defined so my dear when we are talking about the properties the very first property is coming out to be resilience so my dear when we are talking about the resilience it is defined as strain energy stored by the body strain energy absorbed by the body up to elastic limit so when we say up to elastic limit my dear let us say this is the diagram for stress strain for mild steel let us say you are going to load it let us say this is the elastic limit you are going to load it up to this point then my dear up to this point if you are going to talk about this area p1 was the load delta 1 was the deformation then resilience would be 1 by 2 into p1 into delta 1 then my dear if you are going to load up to the point number 2 then this one would be the total area you will say resilience at 2 would be 1 by 2 into p2 into delta but my dear if you are going to load it up to elastic limit up to elastic limit then my dear this entire area would be the resilience then you will say resilience 3 is 1 by 2 into pe into delta e so my dear all these three are resilience only because up to elastic limit the strain energy is said to be resilience but if i ask you out of r1 r2 r3 which one is going to be the highest one very good tiksha out of these three out of these three which one is going to be maximum which one is going to be maximum r1 r2 and r3 which one is going to be maximum r1 r2 and r3 you can see it is p1 delta 1 p2 delta 2 pe delta i yes r3 is maximum so my dear r3 is the maximum value the maximum value of resilience and maximum value of resilience is said to be said to be what it is said to be what it is said to be proof resilience so my dear maximum value of resilience is said to be proof resilience so energy stored by the body before elastic limit at any point is resilience at elastic point is said to be the proof resilience no 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 ajay it is not modulus of resilience this is proof resilience okay so what is modulus of resilience we will see that also so my dear when we are talking about modulus of resilience it is something different now my dear we have already said that resilience we are defining at proof resilience as 1 by 2 into p at elastic limit into delta at elastic limit if we divide it by area divide it by length and multiply it with area into length you know this is the volume so you can see this proof resilience is equals to 1 by 2 into stress into strain into volume so this resilience is depending on the size and shape because if volume will be more strain energy would be more so my dear we want it to make it independent of size and shape so to make it independent of size of shape what we have done we have taken volume here proof resilience but a volume it is written as 1 by 2 into stress into strain so my dear when we are taking the resilience per unit volume this is nothing but the strain energy stored by the point 
अरे भाई स्ट्रेन एनर्जी स्टोर्ड बाय द बॉडी व्हेन इट इज डिवाइडेड बाय द टोटल वॉल्यूम व्हिच इज हैविंग ऑल द पॉइंट्स यू विल बी गेटिंग स्ट्रेन एनर्जी स्टोर्ड बाय अ पॉइंट एंड माय डियर दैट इज गिवन द नेम ऑफ मॉडुलस ऑफ रेजिलियंस सो मॉडुलस ऑफ रेजिलियंस इज नथिंग बट प्रूफ रेजिलियंस डिवाइडेड बाय वॉल्यूम एंड इफ हाफ इनटू पी इनटू डेल्टा इज एरिया ऑफ लोड डिफॉर्मेशन डायग्राम देन व्हाट इज हाफ इनटू सिग्मा इनटू एप्सिलन दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ stress strain diagram i feel tiksha you are also getting it properly everybody yes 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 my dear uh, proof resilience is area in yes 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 dear proof resilience and resilience are given by the area in load deformation diagram whereas modulus of resilience is defined as the area of stress strain diagram i feel everybody is getting this wonderful things so guys this is the difference of modulus of resilience and resilience resilience give energy stored by the body modulus of resilience give energy stored by the point let us move to the next part that is toughness okay so my dear if we are going to say the total strain energy stored by the body up to fracture point means the total area of load deformation diagram up to fracture point that is defined as toughness and my dear if we are going to divide it by volume we will call it as modulus of toughness so my dear if we are going to say toughness it is the area of p delta curve the total area and this is said to be the area of stress strain curve the total area but my dear this is also approximated like you also know there is something known as yield strength something known as ultimate strength although yield strength is correspond to lower yield point so my dear if you are going to make it trapezium of syt and sut for entire fracture strain this is the approximation of this diagram in such a way that this area and that area is nearly same so this area is between stress strain so this is modulus of toughness so that is approximated by this area you know how to write area of trapezium it is syt plus sut by 2 into fracture strain so that is how the modulus of toughness is defined so guys please tell me everybody understood all the terms or not which volume Sur uh, surajit is the volume of the component okay like if you are talking about this component na so the volume of this component we are talking about area of this and length of this surajit is it clear to you please tell me that so guys this is how we are going to define the properties based on the stress strain diagram hope you are enjoying it if you find any difficulty please ask and do like and share the session guys as still a lot things are left yes you can make that kind of comparison yes swapni let's move to the next topic so guys now we are talking about the properties like elasticity plasticity everybody knows that if a body is regaining its shape and size after removal of load is elasticity if it is not regaining it is said to be plasticity okay then we are moving to the property like ductility generally whenever we are asking what is ductility generally students are saying that sir ductility is the ability by which a road can be converted into wire but it is not like that okay so my dear if i ask you what is anger you will say sir in anger one person can kill another but this is application of anger na this is the side effect of anger this is not definition of anger so if we say what is definition of ductility are bhai you have this road you want to convert it into this wire so for that what you need to do you need to apply tension onto this if you are applying tension if it is capable of withstanding the tension then only you can make wire from it and then also once it become wire if it is elastic after removal of load once again it will become the road we do not want that so for a material to be ductile there are two requirement one it must be able to bear the tensile stresses and second it must have plastic deformation means plastic region should be more so guys if both these qualities are there then only a material is becoming ductile so this session is not going like i am just showing you one word ductility we are going into in depth of everything i feel that you have already observed so when we are talking about ductility is defined as the property by virtue of which a material can withstand tensile stresses and for material to be ductile 
इट्स पोस्ट इलास्टिक स्ट्रेन विच इज प्लास्टिक स्ट्रेन शुड बी मोर देन फाइव परसेंट सो इफ वी हैव अ रोड ऑफ वन मीटर इट मस्ट बी एबल टू कन्वर्ट इन टू वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव मीटर और मोर देन ओनली वी विल कॉल अ मटीरियल टू बी डक्टाइल डक्टिलिटी एंड ब्रिटलनेस आर द Yes, very good, very good, Ajay. Ductil. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Vansh. So I would like to say ductility and brittleness are the property which go on together. Actually, it is like truth and false. If you speak sixty percent truth, you are speaking forty percent false. Similarly, my dear, if a material is not ductile, it is brittle. So, my dear, for brittleness, we would be saying if it is less than post elastic strain, less than five percent, we will call it brittle. So, my dear, when we are talking about malleability it is similar to ductility when we are going to convert it into wire it was ductility then my dear if you are going to apply compression and we are going to convert it into plate it is said to be malleability very good tiksha yielding should be more than 5% that's correct okay so guys uh, we will continue till 2 uh, i feel after that we will have lunch break for 30 minutes if you want okay otherwise we can continue like that because we are in a very good flow okay we don't mind to continue this next is hardness so my dear in the childhood when you were in the school you must have done one thing you were using the compass and you were having the rubber you were doing the compass indent indentation into the rubber you have done this thing and you were capable of doing that why because rubber was soft and this compass was hard but if you take the same compass to the bench of your school sometimes the compass was getting broken because bench was harder than the compass so my dear generally hardness is defined as resistance to indentation or resistance to scratches if you made a scratch on my skin you will get some kind of scratch definitely but if you take the same nail and you try to make the make the same scratch on the wall maybe your nail will get you maybe your nail will get scratch so because that body is harder than your nail so always soft things are getting indentations and scratches dear i would like to tell you that uh we are having for all for every 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 okay every subject these kind of marathons are there <laughs> so dear okay let's do one thing let me complete the first chapter uh it is just about to complete then we will see about the break okay okay fine we will take a poll on that as well okay ha okay surajit that's fine that's fine okay so let me complete this chapter at least okay so moving further my dear to the loading and loading diagram in next 10 minutes we are about to complete it we are going to talk about the loading and loading diagram so when we are talking about the loading and loading diagram you know when we are loading up to elastic limit then my dear material will regain its shape and size after removal of load but my dear if we are going to continue the load like if we are going to continue the load like this okay let us say you are going to load up to this point so my dear if you are going to load up to this point and at this point you are thinking to come back then you cannot come back to this path because already some permanent deformation have entered in the body and even you will not be getting the strain up to this up to which the point you have loaded in reality what will happen the unloading diagram will be following a straight line which is parallel to the initial line which means this theta and this theta would be same so you have loaded the material up to this but my dear when you have loaded the material up to this obviously some part of the load would be elastic and some part of the strain would be plastic so when you are having both elastic and plastic strain in the body after removal of load body will have its plastic strain but elastic strain would be recovered so my dear this is what is going to have an this is what is going to have this is what we going to have if we are going to apply a load after elastic limit then unloading will happen like this and this part is said to be elastic recovery this part is said to be elastic recovery or spring back effect like whenever you are going to compress the spring it comes back dear uh, okay reshma you are asking something we are having every day one subject this marathon series will continue till 15th of january every day we are completing one subject of mechanical and civil very good tiksha so theta will remain the same but this part is recovered because it was the elastic part so this is about the loading unloading diagram now my dear the last topic is proof of stress 
I already told you there is a material named mild steel which is having two yield point. There are some other point, other materials which are having one yield point, and there are some material like aluminium, like magnesium. These are the material which have zero yield point. They do not have yield point. But my dear, to define to design. For any material we need yield strength of the material because after yielding plastic deformation start so if we do not want plastic deformation we need that point up to which we can design the material so for that my dear we are defining here something called as proof stress proof stress is said to be the hypothetical yield point this is the theoretical yield point what is that how we are going to find it let us say we have a curve for any material like this it is not showing any clear yield point so my dear we are going to define some particular strain that is said to be offset after which we will be making a line parallel to the initial line and where it cuts the curve that point is considered as the proof stress and that is given the name of artificial yield strength this is for the material which do not show the clear yield point like for aluminium we will take 0.2 percent part for mild steel it is 0.1 percent so it is defined for all the materials is it clear for everyone thanks guys thanks once definitely definitely dear here we are covering each and everything and that is enough to score well with that we have completed this part guys with that we have completed this part so you can see this is the uh, schedule of the marathon series so today's strength of material is going on actually so for civil tomorrow would be steel taken by satyajit sir and you can see the entire schedule for the civil engineering now you can see the entire schedule for the mechanical som is going on today tomorrow thermo would be taken by sonu chauhan sir then production then thom then fluid mechanics industrial likewise all the subjects would be covered yes okay 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 uh anbu i would like to tell you what is proof stress i said there are some material which do not show clear yield point so for those material we define artificial yield point so when we are going to define artificial yield point yes 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 surjit so for that what we do we are going to make a curve parallel to this a straight line parallel to this and where it cuts that will be defined as the proof stress and what offset you would be taking that is varying from material to material for different material it is going to be different uh amir you don't know about that that we are going to have practice session tonight we have practice session tonight at 12 pm this is the midnight session for practice that is tonight only and i am assuring you that after every marathon we have a practice session like today for som we have tomorrow for thermo you have day after tomorrow like when i will take tom i will be taking for tom so every day you have the practice session after this marathon session so we have already completed the first chapter now we are entering into the next chapter that is sfd bmd okay so okay proof uh, you want to say uh, ashish proof stress okay proof resilience is it proof resilience is the maximum value of resilience proof resilience is the maximum value of resilience okay proof resilience is the maximum value of resilience okay so guys now shall we continue with sfd bmd yes so we would be having break don't worry within 30 40 minutes we will see is it fine if we take break around at 145 yes let us do this chapter at least then we will have a break okay 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 amir great 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 so we are continuing uh shakti poison ratio is already covered by abhinav sir so that i feel you joined late guys this session is going on from 10 am and all those things are covered and impact loading would be covered don't worry impact loading would be covered in the end with the strain energy so don't worry okay impact loading would be covered so don't worry about that so now let us start about the sfd bmd so my dear you must have seen the name of the member like bar like beam like shaft and many time you must have seen that how these names are given these names are not given based on the chapter name these names are given based on the type of loading 
ओके वी विल हैव ब्रेक डोंट वरी सो माय डियर बार इज द नेम गिवन फॉर द एक्सियल लोडिंग बार इज द नेम गिवन फॉर द एक्सियल लोडिंग देन माय डियर बीम इज द नेम गिवन फॉर शियर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट शाफ्ट इज द नेम गिवन फॉर ट्विस्टिंग मोमेंट सो जनरली बेस्ड ऑन द लोडिंग वी आर डिफाइनिंग द मेंबर If the axial loading is tensile, we will call it as tie bar. If axial loading is compressive, we will call it as strut bar. If strut is vertical, we will call it as column. So, my dear, when we are talking about SFD BMD, first of all, we will be defining the member beam. Beam is defined as a structural member because majorly it is used in civil engineering application. If a member is used in mechanical engineering application, we will call it as machine member. So, it is a structural member. which is subjected to various shear forces and bending moment during its functionality so if a member is subjected to shear force and bending moment during its functionality then we will be calling this member as beam don't worry devendra from today onward it will become your favorite okay and we will be going with the shortcuts because you do not get that much time that you would be going for the derivation of everything there okay yes so my dear what is shear force if a force is parallel to cross section perpendicular to longitudinal axis we call it as shear force okay and if you have if you have a member like this then my dear this is the cross section so if you are going to apply a couple which is which is acting in a plane perpendicular to the plane of couple like if you have this cross section then my dear this cross section is there if you are going to apply a couple in a plane perpendicular to the plane of cross section we will call it as bending couple and my dear whenever we are talking about bending couples bending couples are shown by semi circle so here we are talking about shear force and bending moment so my dear when we are talking about the cross sections you can see this is rectangle i section and circular cross section so my dear whenever you show a beam this is the representation of longitudinal axis and longitudinal axis is the axis which is which is made by joining all the centroids of the body like my dear if i am having a circular bar like this you know this circular bar can be divided into infinite circles like if you are going to see the cross section there are infinite cross sections are there if you join centroid of every cross section you will be getting this longitudinal axis so my dear all the forces which are acting as a shear force they would be perpendicular to the longitudinal axis and passing through the centroid so that is why we will never be showing the beam in this format or beam in three dimensional format we would always be showing them with the help of longitudinal axis that is why beams are shown by longitudinal axis we are going slightly faster i feel you are enjoying this ha 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 reshma every subject would be covered so now we are talking about the types of support okay types of support so you know there are three types of support roller support fixed support and hinge support you also know support have only one thing to do support just give reactions reactions are coming whenever actions are there so my dear when we are talking about two dimension in two dimension three types of motions are possible either you can have translation in x or you can have translation in y or you can have rotation in xy plane so there are three motion translation of x translation of y and rotation in xy plane so my dear if three motions are there the maximum three reactions can come for three types of action three kind of reactions can come so my dear roller support is a kind of support which if you see roller is looking like this if you would be applying a force on the beam in this direction roller will roll and the beam will move in this direction so x direction motion is allowed so when motion is allowed there is no resistance will be coming if you are asking something from your parents like you are saying papa i am going to college they will not be having any resistance for that you will say i will be going to library from 5 to 8 there will be no resistance in that but when you say i will go to the movie from 9 to 12 tomorrow is my exam then resistance will come so my dear here this motion is permitted but my dear if you will try to take the beam in upward direction you will try to take beam away from the support support will instantly give a reaction vertical reaction so my dear roller support is not allowing the motion translation in y direction if you are going to rotate this beam by an angle of theta this roller will allow that rotation that is why for roller support we only have one reaction if you are talking about hinge support it do not permit the motion of x and y direction 
दैट इज वाई देर आर टू रिएक्शन आर एक्स एंड आर वाई बट यू कैन रोटेट द बीम अबाउट दिस सुपोर्ट अबाउट दिस पिन ज्वाइंट वेरी इजिली ओके अर्पन दैट वी विल सी ऑल्सो बट राइट नाउ देर आर थ्री स्टैंडर्ड सुपोर्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ऑल्सो वी विल डिस्कस इन बिटवीन ओके देन माई डियर फिक्स सुपोर्ट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट देन माई डियर फिक्स सुपोर्ट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इफ यू विल बी अपलाइंग फोर्स इन एक्स डायरेक्शन वाई डायरेक्शन और इफ यू विल ट्राई टू रोटेट इट दिस सुपोर्ट विल नॉट अलाउ दैट येस आई एम गोइंग फास्टली बिकॉज इट इज वेरी इजी पार्ट सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ रिएक्शन विल बी कमिंग इयर आर एक्स आर वाई एंड मोमेंट रिएक्शन इज इट क्लियर फॉर एवरी वन is it clear for everyone yes so you can also feel like when we are talking about the fixed support like the beam is embedded till inside that is why even if you will try to apply some load the deflection will be happening like this because this is embedded till inside for this type of beam okay this is the example of the fixed beam moving further we have seen all the three types of supports guys now we are talking about the types of beams there are two types of beam one is statically determinate other is statically indeterminate so my dear when we are going to have the support reaction the number of reactions number of unknowns are more than number of equilibrium equation we will call it as statically indeterminate if number of support reaction are equals to the number of unknowns we will call it as statically determinate so i am saying if number of reactions are less than or equals to the number of equilibrium equations and if reactions are going to be more than the number of equilibrium equation equilibrium equations are three you must have seen summation fx zero summation fy zero and summation moment zero so from three equation you can find out the three unknowns not more than that so my dear if the number of unknowns are less than three or less than the number of equilibrium equation it is statically determinate otherwise statically indeterminate in statically determinate we are going to have three types of beams one is simply supported other is cantilever other is overhanging everybody know this is cantilever beam this is overhanging overhanging can be one side overhang also okay so both possibility will be there this is one side overhang and third one is simply supported beam in simply supported we can have three types of sections one is with two roller other is two hinge other is one roller and one hinge yes everybody anyone can say which of these three is said to be the best combination of simply supported beam out of these three which one is the best combination of the beam anybody anybody yes tell me tell me guys which one is the best combination wonderful wonderful all are saying the second second is said to be the best combination my dear if you are going to apply if we are going to apply any horizontal load if we are going to apply any horizontal load on to this beam or any inclined load on to this beam then my dear this beam will not be able to bear that but beam will start moving so this combination is said to be unstable because it cannot bear the horizontal loads similarly my dear when we are talking about this both hinge here if you are talking about both hinge if any temperature change happens then because of increase in temperature this beam will try to elongate but the support will not allow them to elongate because of that beam is going to bend like that my dear so my dear that is why some some thermal stresses would be coming without any load so my dear that is also not a good combination because of thermal stresses coming into picture but for this case we have one roller and one hinge because of hinge it can bear horizontal load and if thermal strain will come this support will move by some amount and thermal strain would be allowed so stresses would not generate that is going to be the reason why this second is going to be the best combination some people feel third is bad because it is indeterminate because here four reactions are possible so my dear indeterminacy is not a problem that simply says calculations are difficult but when i am asking good or bad it means with respect to applications so this is said to be the best combination everyone have given the right answer so these three are the statically determinate beams and in strength of material we need to study determinate only in determinate we are going to study in the structures part okay then my dear we would be talking about uh, indeterminate beams just a small introduction 
if the length of cantilever is becoming more the chances of deflections are more so we are going to prop the free end that is said to be propped cantilever beam then if we are going to have a very long beam we can go for more number of supports like highways metropoles you have seen so that kind of beam is said to be continuous beam and if we are having two fixed support then we will be calling it as fixed beam here if you will see one reaction will be this other reaction will be this other reaction will be this so overall more than three reactions would be coming here also more than three reactions would be coming and here you can see sixth reaction two horizontal two vertical two couples six reactions are there which is once again more than three so that is why they are statically indeterminate to solve them we need a special equation known as compatibility equation so these we can have some cases in the deflection of beam but in the strength of material when we are talking about sfd bmd we will not be talking about them in deflection we can have some discussion about that very good very good sk bahut hi badhiya once what is propped dear propped means when you are going to apply some support either hinge or roller at the free end of the cantilever so cantilever is propped is it clear everyone bahut badhiya chandra buleshu bahut hi badhiya so guys please tell me everybody is uh, getting it so shall we move on don't worry we will soon have a break so don't worry about that now my dear i am showing you the representation of a beam a beam can be represented like this where we are going to show the longitudinal axis ab on this longitudinal axis we need to show either support or reaction you can show either support or reaction or both you can show only supports also only reaction also third is span where you will mention the length of the loading and the length of the beam fourth one is loading if any of these four things is missing then beam representation is not going to be completed yes it is propped cantilever shekhar you are correct so i feel everybody is getting it now we are going for the support reaction calculation so whenever we are going for sfd bmd generally we need to go for the three steps one is support reaction calculation second is shear force calculations and third one is bending moment calculations so i feel everybody is aware of these three steps first steps we are going to see the support reaction calculation and i would be giving you some shortcuts by which you can directly answer for sfd bmd because here if we will go with calculation it will take a lot time we are not given that much time in the paper okay so that is the reason so my dear if you see this is a simply supported beam we have a hinge support and roller support this reaction is rb vertical this is ra vertical and ra horizontal if there is no load there is no reaction so you can directly write horizontal reaction to be zero because there is no horizontal load now to write the vertical reaction everybody remember the shortcut can i directly write the shortcut when we are going to write ra vertical how we will use the shortcut we will write plus minus sign first of all then we will write the value of load because of which you want to find out the reaction so the value of load is w so you will put the value of load to be w yes tiksha teju are you getting it or not please tell me that then my dear you want to find out reaction at a then you will see the distance of the load from b distance of the load from b is b you will write b here then you will write denominator total length of the beam total length is a plus b or l so you can write directly l now my dear which sign we need to consider whether we shall consider positive sign or negative sign so you can see ra vertical is upward load is downward when load and reaction are in opposite direction we will consider plus sign so the answer would be plus w b by l now you have two option to find out the rb value one you can write ra vertical plus rb vertical total load is w otherwise you can apply the same shortcut for rbv you will write write the value of load plus minus w distance from opposite end is a total length is l this is upward this is downward the value would be plus so plus w a by l will be the value Yes, everybody is getting or not? Please tell me that. Yes, Swapnil. Yes, Arpan, Ultron, Umar. Very good, very good, guys. बहुत बढ़िया MBS, Tiksha, बहुत बढ़िया. So, guys, this is the second case. 
when you are going to have distributed very good shubham avinash shashank yes sujish are you also there or not so the second type of loading is uniformly distributed loading very good prince so when we are talking about udl uniformly distributed loading any distributed loading if comes there is a procedure for that like you have udl uvl for that the first procedure is find out the area of loading diagram like you have udl for case of udl the area of loading diagram is going to be w into l then my dear you will be finding out the x coordinate of the centroid so x coordinate of the centroid of loading diagram will be l by 2 from here l by 2 from here third step says make the beam make the beam apply a point load apply a point load at the centroid equals to the area of loading diagram this is at l by 2 l by 2 now apply the shortcut to get the answer now apply the shortcut to get the answer so now i will not be telling you the answer you would be telling me the answer tell me what is the reaction ra what is reaction rb because there is no horizontal load so horizontal reaction will be zero let us see how many of you give the right answer yes mukesh tell me tell me tell me what would be the right answer guys what would be the right answer bahut hi badhiya Teju is saying W L by two, W L square by two. Vijay is saying W L square. Dinesh, बहुत बढ़िया. Sujish. So dear, here it is W L. So when you would be finding out R A, first of all R A and R B will be equal. Why equal? Because of symmetry. So if both are going to be equal, then you can apply the same formula. You will write this is upward, load is downward plus W into L. Into L by two total length, you will get W L by two. Okay, so by symmetry also you can answer in such cases. It is W L by two. बहुत बढ़िया भाई शशांक आशीष एली अविनाश प्रिंस शुभम बहुत ही शानदार. So guys, this is how we can find out. So can you do the same for U uh, U V L now? Can you do the same for U V L? Yes, can you do the same for U V L? If we would be having a triangular loading, can you do that? Yes. Okay. I am. I am showing you this. If I am having a UDL like this, if I am having a UDL like this, can you tell me the value of support reaction? This is the UVL. Can you tell me the support reaction? This is the W kilonewton per meter. L is the length. A and B is the name of the beam. This is W kilonewton per meter. Let us see how many give the how many of you gives the right answer for R A and R B. Yes, we are going with shortcuts because this is not the time for derivation now. Ajay, very good. Umar, बहुत बढ़िया. Vansh, very good. Arpan, बहुत बढ़िया. Shubham, very good. Shashank, very good. बहुत बढ़िया. Karthi, very good. Diksha, बहुत ही बढ़िया. So guys, when you will see R A and R B, okay? When you will apply the same thing, first of all you will find out area. You will apply on the centroid. So you would be getting this diagram then. centroid would be coming somewhere here and you would be applying a load of area of triangle wl by 2 at a distance of l by 3 from here to l by 3 from here and when you will be calculating ra and rb always remember the reaction which is near to the load will be coming more which is away from the load will come less so it would be coming out to be wl by 6 and it would be coming out to be wl by 3 you this is what you would be getting so i feel everyone have given the right answer that's really great so this is how we can find out so guys in 2013 and 2017 in civil engineering and mechanical both they have asked the support reaction for sinusoidal loading they have asked very good ashish very good shubham very good ali mvs swapnil barot bahut hi badhiya wonderful guys so guys do like and share the session we are still in support reaction calculation don't worry we will take a break after 10 15 minutes we will see yes so guys now you tell me do you want to know the shortcut for this case because this is the sinusoidal loading in conventional way you are going for the integration of this but i would be giving you today shortcut by which you will directly be able to answer it they will be giving you such type of sinusoidal loading and they will be asking you what is the support reaction va what is the support reaction vb 
डू यू वॉन्ट टू नो द शॉर्टकट फॉर दैट प्लीज टेल मी सो गाइज दिस शॉर्टकट यू कैन इंस्टेंटली आंसर इंस्टेंटली लाइक दिस यस 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 वंडरफुल ऑल जीनियस इज वेरी गुड सो गाइज आई एम टेलिंग यू इफ यू आर गिवन द लोडिंग लाइक दिस डब्ल्यू एक्स एक्स इज डब्ल्यू साइन एन पाई एक्स बाय एल दिस इज द लोडिंग एंड माई डियर इफ यू फाइंड एन टू बी ओड एवरीबडी अंडरस्टैंड ओड वन थ्री फाइव सेवन नाइन लाइक दैट so if you have this type of values then my dear support reaction for both ra is equals to rb okay ra is equals to rb so ra and rb they will be equal because of symmetry they would be coming out to be first of all you will write this w then you will write this length then you will divide it by n pi w l by n pi so what i am doing is w in the denominator it is l upon n pi so what i am doing is i am writing w in the denominator l upon n pi so whatever be the coefficient of x you need to divide it like this w into l upon n pi so this is how you would be writing out the support reaction now this n can be 1 n can be 3 n can be 5 n can be 7 n can be 9 n can be 11 anything n can be like if i give you if i give you the same same thing like this now i will ask you if i am having the loading condition like this this is the loading condition sinusoidal okay and i am saying w x x is w sin now you know how much pi is covered pi 2 pi 3 pi so sin 3 pi x upon l can you give me the value of support reaction ra and rb now can you tell me the support reaction of ra and rb now wonderful mayur can you tell me the so so this is i feel you are getting the benefit of this multi faculty session you are getting the short tricks from both the sides which will definitely help you and you would be learning something new in today's session yes wonderful everybody great so you would be saying ra is equals to rb is equals to wl upon 3 pi very good guys bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya okay so my dear now this is my homework to you this is my homework to you what would be the answer if n is even and that i would be discussing that i would be discussing when i will be coming for principal stresses when i will be teaching you principal stresses like after me abhinav sir will come for bending torsion bending shear then i will come for principal stress at that time i would be telling you if n is even then how you can remember it so for even also i will be giving you the shortcut till now in the exam they have asked only odd but in the next time they can ask you even okay so till then you can think on that i would be telling you if even is coming what would be the shortcut okay for even nobody is telling you even for odd nobody is telling but that you got it okay wonderful sk wonderful everyone so this is a question for support reaction calculation this is a question for support reaction calculation you can see 10 kN load is acting at this point and 5 kN load is acting at this point so guys for this question you need to answer for those students who would be giving answer fastly their answer would be recorded for the cash prize you know that this question for this question you would be getting the cash prize not only for this means whoever are giving those 7 to 8 answers perfectly so this question would be counted for that so our moderator would be taking the photo that who is giving the right answer so here you need to find out the support reaction ra and rb ra and rb you need to find out So let us see how many of you give the right answer for this. Okay, those student who will answer fastly that would be considered. Wonderful guys, बहुत ही बढ़िया. अरे आप सभी genius हो यार. Wonderful. So guys. we are going to see the effect of this load on to the beam we will apply 110 kN here other 10 kN here this and this would be giving us a couple like this okay that would be equals to 10 into 1 so 10 kN meter wonderful this is the couple 
Now, my dear, we will apply five kilo newton here, five kilo newton here. This and this will be making a couple, and that couple would be like this, and this will be five kilo newton meter. So, overall, we can show this beam like this. We are going to have two supports. One is R A, other is R B. Obviously, here there would be some H B also. H B also. So, we are going to have, we are going to have the loading like this. We are having one force of ten kilo newton in this direction. We are going to have a force of five kilo newton in this direction, and we are going to have a couple. We are going to have a couple. One couple is this ten, another is five. One couple is this ten, other is five. Are you sir students break के लिए भी बोल रहे हैं? सही? बताइए. ओके सो गाइस अभिनव सर फिर से आए हैं आपको मोटिवेट करने के लिए बस दूसरा चैप्टर चल रहा है दोस्तों इसके बाद थर्ड चैप्टर करेंगे ना अब ब्रेक का क्या करेंगे यार ब्रेक मतलब ब्रेक का ऑनलाइन है अगर आप कुछ चाय वाय पीना चाहते हैं तो आप उस साथ साथ कर सकते हैं ठीक <laughs> है क्योंकि ऐसा भी नहीं है कि आपको लिखना पड़ रहा है क्योंकि ये पी तो आपको दे ही देंगे है ना तो बाकी ऐसा कर लेंगे पाँच मिनट का ऐसा जनरल डिस्कशन कर लेंगे तब तक आपको किसी को किसी को फ्रेश होना है वॉशरूम जाना है पानी पीना है चाय पीनी है तो हम लोग डिस्कस करते रहेंगे बाकी उनके डाउट देते रहेंगे तब तक ऐसा पांच मिनट कर लेंगे सो so, दो बजे कर लेते हैं सर ऐसा दस पंद्रह मिनट के लिए या ढाई बजे नहीं दस पंद्रह मिनट तो ज्यादा हो जाएगा पांच मिनट का पांच मिनट बोलते हम यहाँ पर रहूंगा <laughs> मैं यहीं पे रहूंगा आप लोग अपना जो भी थोड़ा सा रिफ्रेशमेंट लेना है या कुछ करना है मैं बिल्कुल एग्री करता हूँ की थोड़ा ब्रेक की ग्रेट पांच मिनट मतलब आप जिसको जो जो कर, तब तक करना है सर, करना, अब, हम यहीं पर रहेंगे अब मुझे लग रहा है जिसको ब्रेक की जरूरत है वो चले गए अब कह रहे हैं कि नहीं है सर आ, ब्रेक की जरूरत नहीं है <laughs> सर जी मजा आ रहा है ऐसे ही हाँ ठीक है फिर जब आप करें देखो लंच यार ऑनलाइन का कुछ तो फायदा उठाओ लंच और साथ साथ हो जाएगा यार तुम करते रहो लंच हमें जरूरत नहीं है आज हाँ ठीक है और रात को वापस से है ना बारह बजे आज रात को बारह बजे ओके नो ब्रेक नीडेड ग्रेट ग्रेट जिसको ब्रेक है ना बीच में मैं कह रहा हूँ आपको दस मिनट ऐसे दूंगा कि जिसमें हम आगे नहीं बढ़ेंगे लेकिन हम दोनों स्क्रीन के सामने ही रहेंगे और कुछ और नहीं चीज डिस्कस कर लेंगे कि कितने रैंक आने चाहिए कितने मार्क्स आने चाहिए कितने मार्क्स पे कितनी रैंक मिलेंगी ऐसी चीजें डिस्कस या आपके डाउट्स ले लेंगे जो अभी तक के हैं तब तक बीच में पांच दस मिनट जिसको जो करना होगा ऐसा हम अगले एक घंटे में कभी कर लेंगे ठीक है ठीक है ना ग्रेट 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 और ये बताओ जैसे मेरा स्पीड और सर का स्पीड चल रहा है सही है सही है क्योंकि आप देख ही रहोगे कितना डिटेल में हम जा रहे हैं और Hmm, सर मेरे तो बार बार घर वाले भी कॉल कर रहे हैं कि पांच बजे तक उठा हुआ था अब तो कम से कम कह रहे हैं दूसरे से पढ़ा रहे हैं तो कह रहे नीचे लेट के सो जा तू ठीक है तो मैं तो सोच रहा हूँ गाड़ी से तक है मेरी गाड़ी में यहाँ नीचे लगा के सो जाता हूँ जब तक आप ये ले रहे हैं सोलो कैट स्टूडेंट जब फैकल्टी तक कर सकते तो डेफिनेटली आपके लिए भी लेके आये हूँ थैंक यू सर आप बीच बीच में यहाँ पे रख देता हूँ जैसे सर देखो पढ़ाते पढ़ाते बीच बीच में पी लेंगे है ना तो ऐसे ही आप भी कर लेना ठीक है ग्रेट ग्रेट बच्चों की तरफ से एक बार पी लीजिए थोड़ा गला सूख गया होगा तो ये भी नमकीन नमकीन भी लाया तो इसी तरीके से आप भी ब्रेक लेते रहिए सर आप भी लीजिए नहीं नहीं सर मैं तो मेरा फास्ट है सोमवार का ओके आज फास्ट नहीं है सर आपका सोमवार का मंगलवार को अच्छा बुधवार है सर आज तो मैं कभी फास्ट नहीं लिया सर बचपन में मेरे को याद है बस ऐसे बात कर रहे हैं आपका ब्रेक भी तो फास्ट रखते थे शौक शौक के तौर पे तो दिन में भूख लग जाती थी तो आ, मम्मी के दिन नहीं अब तो रखा है तो भगवान जी गुस्सा हो जाएंगे तो पापा मेरे क्या करते थे कि खिला देते थे फिर थर्टी मिनट्स का ब्रेक फिर थर्टी मिनट्स खाना खा लो उसके बाद वापस से ये सही ऐसे हम करते थे <laughs> कि थर्टी मिनट्स का पापा कहते खाना खा लो थर्टी मिनट्स के बाद फिर से टाइम्स उस समय होता था टाइम्स अब कुछ होता था और ऐसा मतलब क्या बोलते थे उसको ब्रेक मतलब एक समय पे खा सकते थे खाना जैसे मिनट का मतलब ब्रेक है उसके बाद वापस फास्ट हाँ। फिर शाम को फिर से कुछ खाया हल्का फुल्का फिर वापस से फास्ट रात को बारह बजे तक रखते थे इसी तरीके से मैराथन कब तक जाएगा देखो एट पी तक तो शायद से ना जाए क्योंकि आप इस बात से अंदाजा लगा लो कि दैट द फर्स्ट चैप्टर विल बी अराउंड फोर्टी टाइम इट विल बी टेकिंग एंड रिमेनिंग ऑल चैप्टर विल बी कवर्ड इन फिफ्टी टाइम Because in first chapter there are so many chapters like poison ratio, thermal stress you can take as one chapter, stress and curve is a one chapter, stress matrix is a one chapter. Now see the third chapter bending stress will come. What will be in bending stress? Sigma by y is equal to m by y is equal to e by r, and couple of formulas. 
the section modulus, comparison of section modulus and transform section when wood is converted to steel or steel Sir, is converted. Sir, एक और चीज़ student पूछ रहे थे, शायद आपने impact factor भी नहीं बताया होगा, वो आप आगे impact factor मैंने वैसे बता दिया कि gate में तो वैसे बहुत कम chance मैंने बता दिया कि two times होता है, है ना? अगर वो h zero height से हो तो वो अभी आप दोबारा बताने वाले हो तो दोबारा बता दूँगा बच्चे इतना impact factor हो जाए क्योंकि दो तीन बार comment आ गया तो मुझे impact factor में बता दूँगा यस सर आप तक तो ये पीजी मैं बता ही देता हूँ है इसमें है पीपीटी में है नहीं वैसे ही बता देंगे सर वो तो खाली स्लाइड ले लो एक वैसे पीपीटी में वो तो अच्छे से दिखा दूँगा था है क्या पीपीटी सर फिर बाद में दिखा दिया तो सारा वो जाएगा सारा बैक चला जाएगा नहीं तो फिर चलो इसमें दिखा देता हूँ तब तक सर आप ये भी जी मैं आपके बिस्कुट भी लाया हूँ अरे नहीं नहीं सर बस आप इंपैक्ट फैक्टर बताइए फिर मैं कंटिन्यू करता हूँ नहीं सर आप तो ये लीजिए और आपके लिए मैं नमकीन भी लाया था नीचे से और एक और चीज भी है बस ज़्यादा हो जाएगा ओके सो गाइस सी फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल लेट मी टेल यू दैट सपोज Okay, now here from W height or from H height, a weight is of W is coming on this. Now once it will be coming on this, W weight will coming on this of H height as we are studying deformable physics. So, so it will be deformed. So it will be coming somewhere like this. Okay, somewhere it will be coming like this, and this will be suppose delta max. So what equation will you be writing from where all these things are coming? From what equation will you be writing that that change in potential energy, change in potential energy. This W is falling, and that this W is ultimately coming here after fall. Okay, if we are studying rigid body physics, we are saying that this will be only coming up to here. We are saying we are saying this. Okay, but since we are studying deformable physics, since we are studying the deformable physics, so this will be coming little bit up to this point. Okay, so change in potential energy is gain in change in potential energy is gain in strain energy. Gain in strain energy. So what potential energy changing from here to here? So W H plus delta max. This much potential energy is lost when more height, more potential energy. So it is going W H plus delta max. See, if we are studying rigid body physics, now we are only writing W H. We are not neglecting this because deformations are neglected in rigid body. And gain it, gain it, can it take energies? I was seeing it on the mobile. Pe. Strain energy, stress strain curve is strain energy per unit volume. Okay, so that curve, okay, half sigma square by E, sigma square by two. That is strain energy per unit volume into volume. Volume of the specimen a into h or whatever this is volume. Okay, from their quadratic equation is sigma will be coming. Okay, of course that is very 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 least important topic. That is why I am not going here. So that sigma max because delta max can be represented as sigma max by e. Sigma max by e will be strain. Okay, see delta max is sigma max by e will be strain into l. Sigma max by e will be strain into l. Will be the length delta. This is strain. Strain into L will be delta. If we convert this here, uh, again sigma here. Quality case again is sigma, and that sigma max by sigma static. Sigma static is sigma static. If this W load is simply resting on a area, okay. If this W load is simply resting on a area, what is the stress W by a? Oh, unless mentioned in some. Everything is weightless unless mentioned in so. Hooke's law is valid unless mentioned in so. Every load is static load. Static load means load is applied gradually. Static load means load is applied gradually. Okay, that means little bit zero, little bit more, little bit more, little bit more, little bit more, and then W load, and then W load. That is static load. Static load means little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit that W load. That is stress is W by A. Impact is this, this. Now the pain is more. Impact stress is more. And static is same head, same force, little zero, little bit more, little bit more, little bit more, little bit more, little bit more. And impact is like this. Okay. So 
एक्चुअली आवाज कम आ रही थी इसलिए मैं आ गया ओके 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 नाउ लेट मी मेक माई वॉइस बिगर सो सिग्मा मैक्स बाई स्टेटिक डेल्टा मैक्स डेल्टा मैक्स इन दिस केस वेट डब्ल्यू इज कमिंग फ्रॉम एच हाइट अपॉन डेल्टा स्टैटिक डेल्टा स्टैटिक मीन्स वेन डब्ल्यू लोड इज नॉर्मली एक्टिंग रिफ्लेक्शन दैट टाइम विल बी डब्ल्यू एल बाई एके सो दैट रेशियो इज इम्पैक्ट फैक्टर दैट फॉर्मुला विल बी गिविंग इन पी डी एफ लॉन्ग फॉर्मुला सर लुक आई वॉन्ट टू राइट इट ओके सर लाइट कर देंगे क्योंकि मेरे को फॉर्मुला ऐसे भी याद नहीं रहता है ना दैट इम्पैक्ट फैक्टर इज लाइक दिस सी सर को सब याद रहता है सर एनिवर्सरी वगैरह अपना याद रखते हैं कि नहीं 2h बाय डेल्टा स्टैटिक डेल्टा स्टैटिक इज w एल अपॉन a w एल अपॉन है ना दिस इज इंपैक्ट फैक्टर नाउ इफ h इज 0 इफ h इज 0 इफ h इज 0 देन इंपैक्ट फैक्टर इज इंपैक्ट फैक्टर इज 2 देन दैट केस सिग्मा मैक्स बाय सिग्मा स्टैटिक इज इक्वल टू इंपैक्ट फैक्टर फॉर h इज इक्वल टू इज 2 That means in that case sigma max is two times of sigma static, and sigma static is w by a. That means sigma max is two w by a. कुछ भी समझ नहीं आया ना. If nothing you have understood, let me tell you that only one question is asked in this. That when the impact load is coming with negligible height, what is the stress? It is double two w by a. Everybody got it? Everybody got it? And yes, one small request from my side that please share the session. Oh, please take this screenshot. Please take this screenshot. Please take this screenshot because everything will be coming, but this will not be saved, na? Okay, give it. Okay, five seconds giving. I am giving you for taking the screenshot, and guys, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Okay. Now second chapter SFT PMT is going on, and after that, I will be taking bending stresses. Yes. Okay. Sir, say some jata honge main. Sir, bahut badiya. Okay, guys. So we will continue now. तो so, uh, अभी यू हैव ऑलरेडी सीन स्ट्रेन एनर्जी इम्पैक्ट लोडिंग ओके सो डोंट वरी इफ यू स्टिल फाइंड एनी टॉपिक इज लेफ्ट फ्रॉम अभिनव सर वेन अभिनव सर विल बी कमिंग यू कैन आस्क दैट सर बार दिन पैरल बार दिन पैरल दे आर सही बार दिन पैरल मतलब बार दिन पैरल है नॉट सीरीज एंड पैरल बार मतलब बार दिन पैरल इन डिटर्मिनेट ना तो गिव मी सर फाइव मोर मिनट्स देन सर बाद में करा लो बीच में रह जाएगा क्वेश्चन अच्छा क्वेश्चन बीच में था ठीक है ठीक है ओके गाइस सो आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग देन सर विल बी कमिंग सर विल बी शोइंग यू दोस स्लाइड्स आल्सो एंड देन वी विल बी कवरिंग लाइक दैट सो गाइस व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन मेजॉरिटी ऑफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर्ड इट ओके सो डोंट वरी योर नेम्स हैव बीन ऑलरेडी टेकन हु हैव गिवन द राइट आंसर एंड दे आर कंसीडर्ड फॉर द प्राइस ओके so if you are talking about this question you need to apply principle of superposition you can see there is vertical force horizontal force and moments are acting first of all this hb would be acting in this direction to balance this force that would be of 10 kN so hb would be 10 but i didn't ask you hb i ask you vertical reactions only so when we are talking about ra and rb so you would be using the principle of superposition what is that if more than one loads are acting then my dear obviously support reaction would be coming because of all of them then principle of superposition says that if we have more than one load then we need to find out the support reaction individually because of them and then you will be taking the algebraic sum of them so my dear first of all we will be writing because of this 10 kN moment you know because of this moment this moment is trying to take this a point up RA and this moment have same intention. For same intention, we have minus sign. So you would be writing this bending moment of ten divided by the total length. Total length is one plus four plus one. It is going to be six. Okay. Similarly, this five kilo newton will be doing that. This is for five by six, and this five kilo newton. What would be RA because of five? You know that for that you would be having opposite sign. RA upward. 5 kN downward so for opposite direction we will be having plus sign and we will be having the value of load into distance from opposite end that is 1 meter total length is 6 so this will give you the ra value okay so minus 10 by 6 minus 15 by 6 it is okay and plus 5 by 6 so you can solve it now what you would be getting yes 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 5 by 3 would be the answer and 20 by 3 very good teju very good guys uh so that is uh, shivam that is uh, i am not disclosing that okay but that is a surprise for you guys so we are going to have this to be <coughs> minus 5 by 3 
and rb to be 20 by 3 so those students those uh, 5 10 students who have given the answer fastly they would be considered for that so we are moving further guys now my dear let us describe what is shear force and bending moment at a section so my dear when we are talking about shear force bending moment at a section how we are going to define it for that i have taken a, a beam where 10 kilo newton force is acting here 30 is acting here this is support reaction ra and this is support reaction rb okay so this distance is 2 meter this distance for the section i am having 4 meter and this total distance is 6 meter okay and this distance is 3 meter you can find out the value of ra and rb first uh, or can you explain the reaction on previous some signs okay ali i would be telling you that then we will move further so you can see first of all whenever the load and reaction are giving the deflection or you can say movement in the same direction then we will be having minus sign you can see ra have a tendency to take the point a upward and this moment have the same tendency so sign would be minus okay due to bending moment support reaction is given as moment but a length so moment is 10 length is 1 plus 4 plus 1 6 similarly you have 5 kilo newton so 5 by 6 because length is 6 okay and if you are talking about this force we have just seen this force into distance of opposite end divided by total length this is how we are going to do it okay great 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 so let's move further guys let's move further i feel you understood now so i am going to explain it you can find out ra and rb now so my dear when we are talking about the shear force at a section then shear force at a section is defined as the algebraic sum of all the vertical forces either to the left or to the right hand side of the section sir i have already taught you about the equilibrium that in strength of material if body is in equilibrium any part of the body would be also in equilibrium so my dear that is why we can find out vertical forces either to the left or to the right okay because both are going to be equal only so if that is the case this is how we are defining the shear force so you can see this section so when you would be finding out ra it would be coming out to be 17 kilo newton rb would be coming out to be 23 kilo newton so if you have done wrong calculation please correct it these would be the value you would be getting 17 and okay shear shear force is zero okay let us see what is shear force so this would be coming out to be 17 this would be coming out to be 23 we want to find out shear force at a section xx so if you want to find out shear force which is denoted by v generally so shear force at a section xx you want to find i have described it the algebraic sum of all the forces either to the left or to the right hand side of the section so if you see the algebraic sum of vertical force to the left hand side you can see 17 kilo newton is acting upward and 10 kilo newton is acting downward so you will say that 17 kilo newton upward 10 kilo newton downward so you will say the answer to be 7 kilo newton upward this is what you will say if you are calculating it from left hand side then my dear if you are calculating it from right hand side then you can see it is 23 kilo newton upward and 30 kilo newton downward so you would say 7 kilo newton downward then many of the students would be thinking that sir you were saying we can find out the shear force or bending moment from either left or right hand side of the section but both are not giving the same answer one is saying upward other is saying downward so guys that is required for equilibrium when you were studying the first chapter simple stresses and strain then also you have seen a sign convention to the left hand side this and right hand side this they are considered for the tension and left hand side this right hand side this is considered for the compression so if you were showing any bar if you were applying 10 kilo newton here and 10 kilo newton here then my dear body was in equilibrium so from the section if this was 10 kN tensile, this was also 10 kN tensile. Similarly, when you are calculating to the left hand side of the section, here if 7 kN is coming upward, here 7 kN would be coming downward. So, if any person without sign convention would be doing, he can make mistake. That is why we need to use the sign convention. So, that whether you calculate from left or right, you give the right answer. So, guys, for that we have the sign convention for shear force calculation and what is that sign convention i am going to show you this is the sign convention so for shear forces 
सो गाइज जस्ट लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब यू नो दिस इज द सेकेंड चैप्टर गोइंग ऑन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू कवर ऑल द सब्जेक्ट वो एवरी डे वन सब्जेक्ट वुड बी कवर्ड एंड टिल फिफ्टीन यू वुड बी हैविंग एंटायर मकेनिकल एंड सिविल इंजीनियरिंग टू बी डन सो गाइज वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द साइन कन्वेंशन यू कैन सी माई डियर इफ द फोर्स इज एक्टिंग अपवर्ड टू द लेफ्ट एंड डाउनवर्ड टू द राइट वी वुड बी कंसिडरिंग इट टू बी पॉजिटिव शेयर फोर्स एंड इफ वी हैव डाउनवर्ड टू द लेफ्ट एंड अपवर्ड टू द राइट वी विल बी कॉलिंग इट एज नेगेटिव शेयर फोर्स सो दिस इज द कन्वेंशन वी आर गोइंग टू फॉलो फॉर द शेयर फोर्स एंड सिमिलरली वी कैन डिफाइन द बेंडिंग मोमेंट ऑल्सो इफ यू विल डिफाइन द बेंडिंग मोमेंट इट इज ऑल्सो दैब्रिक सम ऑफ ऑल द मोमेंट्स आई द टू द लेफ्ट टू द राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ द सेक्शन यू नो मोमेंट्स कैन ऑल्सो बी क्रिएटेड बाई द फोर्स मोमेंट कैन कम बिकॉज ऑफ आई द फोर्स और कपल सो माई डियर इफ यू हैव अ सेक्शन लाइक दिस let me show you the previous diagram if you have this section so for this section moment can come because of this and because of this so this is 17 kilo newton so you will say 17 into 4 and this is creating clockwise and then 10 into 2 this is creating anti clockwise so you would be having 68 clockwise and 20 anti clockwise so you will be saying if you are calculating from left hand side bending moment would be coming out to be 48 kilo newton clockwise similarly if you are calculating from right hand side you will say 48 kilo newton anti clockwise so for the equilibrium of body that is required so you would be getting this as i have already shown to you this is going to be the shear force this is going to be the bending moment so my dear that is why here also we need to have sign convention so sign convention for bending moment we are going to discuss now and the sign convention for bending moment is given like this if you are going to have clockwise to the left hand side anti clockwise to the right hand side because of which the member is going to bend like this that top fibers have compression bottom have tension that would be considered as the positive bending and we will be calling it as sagging moment similarly my dear if you are going to have opposite to this that is clockwise to the right hand side of the section anti clockwise to the left hand side of the section we will be calling it as hogging or negative bending moment so this is how we are going to define sagging hogging or you can say the convention for the bending moment okay so i feel everybody is getting it now my dear before we start the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so in reality whenever we are studying in the classes first of all we see some basic cases then we go some advanced cases and then we see empirical relations to use but here as we are going for the revision marathon so i would be giving you the relations first so that we can understand how to make diagrams without any calculation because in examination we are not going to use any of the calculation uh nahi 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 banoth you need not to mention it okay that is just for the sign convention purpose sir sagging and hogging hogging once again okay devendra i am telling you so if you are going to have a member like this and this member is having this section you are applying a bending moment clockwise to the left hand side of the section anti clockwise to the right hand side of the section then under this type of bending the beam will be bending like this top fiber would be under compression bottom would be under tension so that kind of bending is said to be the sagging bending moment that kind of bending is said to be the sagging bending moment so my dear positive bending sagging both you can name it similarly when we are talking about hogging when we have just opposite moments then you would be having tension in the top fiber compression in the bottom fiber and that is said to be negative bending and for that we are using the word hogging and guys when we are talking about this sagging and hogging i can show you the convention like this this is for sagging this is for hogging i feel everybody got it now devendra can we move on is it clear for everyone so now we are moving further bahut hi badhiya guys moving further so my dear as i already said there is a empirical relation <laughs> yes umar you can also remember like that both are fine okay so these are the just uh, ways to remember the things okay so my dear now we are going to have the relation between shear force and bending moment they are empirical relations and they are given like d v is the representation for shear force dv xx by dx is represented as minus wxx and guys d of mxx by dx 
it is denoted as vxx. Now I feel everyone is aware of the slope, how we define the slope between a curve which is made between y and x. Then my dear dy by dx is the thing which is used for the slope, slope is nothing but dy by dx. So similarly, if you have yx diagram, the slope is dy by dx. So if you have shear force diagram, where on y axis we have shear force, on x axis you have length, then my dear the slope of shear force diagram would be dvxx by dx. So my dear you can see this is nothing but the slope of SFD, this is nothing but the slope of SFD. And my dear that is given by the load intensity, this plus minus is coming because of sign convention. If I will use opposite sign convention here plus will come here minus will come. So do not worry about that. So my dear now we are talking about the second thing like SF versus X is shear force diagram. Similarly bending moment versus X is the bending moment diagram. And the slope of that would be DMXX by DX and this is said to be the slope of BMD. Okay, so you can see the slope of BMD is denoted by Vxx. So if that is the case, you already know when you are having, let us say y is equal to x to the power n, then dy by dx would be coming out to be, uh, you know that it is going to be some function c of x to the power n minus 1. So after differentiation, one power is going to be reduced. So you can say my dear one thing, you can say one thing, if Wxx is having x to the power n, then shear force would be x to the power n plus 1 and bending moment to be x to the power n plus 2. You can say shear force is always 1 degree more than the load intensity and bending moment is 1 order more than the shear force. Is it clear or not? Please tell me that. Is it clear for everyone? Yes. So, shear force is 1 degree more than the load intensity. Bending moment is 1 degree more than the shear force yes so my dear this is how we are going to move with i have just given you this and we will be using these things in the upcoming uh, you can say diagrams also and i would also like to tell you one more thing when you would be having the diagrams so you would be having one thing known as point load then you have a horizontal line then you have an inclined line like you can see in loading it is point load udl uvl so when you are moving from this to this you are increasing 1 degree when you are moving from this to this you are improving 1 degree. So if loading diagram would be point load then shear force diagram would be horizontal line and bending moment diagram would be inclined line as you are increasing degree 1 by 1. If loading diagram is horizontal line shear force diagram would be inclined line and bending moment is going to be parabola. So these are the some hints I am giving you then we will be using all of these things because we need to complete it in such a way that without calculation you are able to make it. Yes, very good, very good guys. So shall we move on guys now? Is it clear for everyone? I would be showing you how to use them, whatever the discussion we have just seen. I will tell you how to use it in the diagrams. Ke okay, you can use both of them, maybe you can use calculation, or ye, but calculation is not good for gate examination. So let us move further guys. Okay. So you can also remember uh, these curves which are showing how the slope is increasing, how the slope is decreasing or I would give you a simple thing if you do not want to remember the curves. So I would like to say that whenever we are going to make anything, any curve, let us say you are making a curve like this, okay. So if you are making a curve like this between y and x and when we are talking about the slope, you must be aware of one thing that if we are going to put a tangent here then angle with the x axis is said to be the slope actually because slope is tangent theta and you know theta increases tangent theta increases theta decreases tangent theta decreases so slope is nothing but the angle with x axis so my dear now there are two ways either you can remember these things that is the best way but if you cannot remember these like for positive and constant slope we would be having this line for positive and magnitude reducing, we would be having this parabola. For positive and increasing magnitude, we would be having this parabola. So either you can remember it or you remember only this thing that how the things are moving with the theta. So both the ways I will be telling you, the way you find okay, you can go with that. Okay. 
सो नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द डायग्राम्स द वेरी फर्स्ट केस कैंटीलीवर बीम सब्जेक्टेड टू द पॉइंट लोड दिस इज द केस नंबर वन सो माई डियर यू नो हेयर लोडिंग हेयर लोडिंग डायग्राम इज पॉइंट हेयर लोडिंग डायग्राम इज पॉइंट कैन यू टेल मी वट काइंड ऑफ शेयर फोर डायग्राम वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू आफ्टर पॉइंट वट विल कम आफ्टर पॉइंट वट विल कम यस शशांक उमर तेजु एनबू देवेंद्र प्रिंस बहुत बढ़िया We are going to have rectangle or horizontal line. Both are fine, linear. That's great. So, my dear, we are going to have the shear force diagram, which is going to be a horizontal line or rectangle. That's fine. But, my dear, we need to also use the sign convention. So, you know, if load W is acting here, here also support reaction would be coming W for equilibrium of the body. So, if we are going to take a section here, then, my dear, you know the sign convention for shear force. If you are having upward downward it is positive downward upward it is negative so to the right hand side downward is positive you can see it is going to be positive so my dear we get to know it is going to be a positive rectangle and we are going to plot this shear force diagram like a positive rectangle like this so this is the positive rectangle which is shear force diagram and you can see we are going to have jump at two places so the point where shear force is acting the point where shear force is acting including support reaction we are going to get a jump in the diagram so that is the reason we are getting jump at a and b point this is the very first yes very good tiksha very good uh, umar shashank ajay बहुत ही बढ़िया बहुत ही बढ़िया सो गाइस नाउ यू टेल मी व्हाट शेप यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग फॉर द बेंडिंग मोमेंट सो यू सेड दिस इज हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइन और रेक्टेंगल इज आल्सो फाइन व्हाट यू आर थिंकिंग ऑफ बेंडिंग मोमेंट वन डिग्री मोर व्हाट यू आर थिंकिंग ऑफ बेंडिंग मोमेंट वन डिग्री मोर देवेंद्र आई वुड बी शोइंग यू एवरीथिंग इन फोर टू फाइव केसेस डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट सो अभी दो बजी आई फील आधा घंटा ओके वेरी गुड इंक्लाइंड लाइन और ट्रेंगल नहीं सर फास्टली जाएंगे ओके सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ये इट इज गोइंग टू बी ट्रेंगल और इंक्लाइंड लाइन सो माई डियर इफ दैट इज द केस ओके आई हैव ऑलरेडी ड्रोन दिस फॉर यू सो आई एम डायरेक्टली गोइंग टू शो यू सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इंक्लाइंड लाइन लाइक दिस एंड हाउ वी गेट टू नो यू ऑलरेडी नो इफ दिस इज डब्ल्यू हेयर यू वुड बी हैविंग अ रिएक्शन दैट इज डब्ल्यू इन टू एल so if w into l reaction is there with the section you also know this is said to be the sagging this is said to be the hogging so to the left hand side you can see this is the hogging moment this is the hogging moment so that is why we are going to have a jump in the negative side so that is why bmd would be of this shape okay so we would be having this minus w into l this is going to be the bmd shape this is the case we have seen how 1 degree is going to be more in this case now we are going to talk about the simply supported beam with the same you know here you would be having the support reaction of w by 2 here also support reaction of w by 2 so my dear you know here is also point load so because of that you know shear force diagram is going to be a horizontal line shear force diagram is going to be okay ab speed badhate hain amir pehle keh rahe the kam karo ab keh rahe ho badhao <laughs> okay so when we are talking about shear force for this so 1 degree more for a point is going to be a horizontal line no doubt about that and you know wherever we are having point loads we are going to have jump so my dear you also know the sign convention of shear force if you see the section 1 1 you can see there is upward force so there would be a jump of w by 2 here and when you will make w by 2 jump from a to c there is no load and until the next point load will come we will make the horizontal line then my dear if you are going to see this section to the right hand side upward is negative so because of that here also you would be having a jump in negative direction that is also equals to minus w by 2 and you know for point shear force would be a horizontal line till this there is no load we will be having horizontal line and because of this w we will be having a jump of w so this is how we can plot this sfd half part is positive half part is going to be negative very good swapnil very good tiksha 
wonderful very good bmd is going to be a triangle for that because you have just seen that horizontal line was the shear force so bending moment is going to be inclined line and you also know one thing that when we are going to make the bending moment diagram bending moment is one degree more than the shear force and slope of bending moment diagram is the shear force so you can see uh, here the slope is this constant slope is this constant and you also know dm by dx is going to be shear force so where shear force is becoming zero or changing its sign their bending moment is going to be maximum so my dear we are going to get maximum bending moment at point c so the diagram when we will be plotting it would be going to be like this so one degree more we have seen and this is going to be positive and the value you would be calculating as wl by 4 okay so you can also find out the value using the same relation like we have just seen dm by dx is equals to vxx so my dear you can write dm is equals to vxx dx okay so with this integration you can find out dmxx if we want to integrate from a to b then my dear we can say that bending moment at b minus bending moment at a can be written as the area of shear force diagram between those two points so my dear if we want to define the bending moment at this point c and we already know bending moment at a is zero then we can write bending moment at c minus bending moment at a that would be equals to the area of shear force diagram between these two points so it is going to be w by 2 into l by 2 so we can write this area w by 2 into l by 2 and my dear you know bending moment at a is zero bending moment at c can be written as wl by 4 so this is how we can use the shear force diagram ka area to find out the bending moment okay sumanth actually when we are talking about the shear force you know there are various types of shear fo forces one is normal other is shear so normal is perpendicular to cross section shear is parallel to cross section but my dear here a number of forces are acting at different different point so at any section if you want to find out shear force you need to consider the algebraic sum of all the forces that is what we need to do exactly sumant i feel you got it very good ashish sharma so i feel you got what we need to do in these types of shear force and bending moment diagrams now my dear i would be taking uh, one case where we would be having some udl okay like this is the udl so you know that uh, the here loading diagram is already coming as horizontal line because udl is a horizontal line okay so if we have udl as a horizontal line like this then you already know that shear force is one degree more than the loading diagram so one degree more than horizontal is an inclined line so we would be making a inclined line and when we are going to make the inclined line you also know that this w is the intensity of udl I call kar dunga, sir, okay so guys obviously one degree more than horizontal line is going to be inclined line but why i have made like this at b we have a support reaction vb and you know that would be coming out to be wl so because of that we have a jump here and that is why we are going to have triangular sfd now the main point is coming how to decide the bending moment diagram when it is going to be a parabolic curve so my dear you already know shear force is an inclined line then bending moment is going to be a parabola but when we are going to make a parabola my dear we must have some points between which we need to make it so you know in this entire beam we don't have any point moment except this reaction and you know this reaction would be coming because of this udl so this udl i can expect the total udl to be acting at centroid which would be equal to w into l acting at l by 2 so because of this you can say this reaction would be wl square by 2 so if wl square by 2 is the reaction and by sign convention as you already know to the left hand side upward downward is positive downward upward is negative clockwise anti-clockwise positive anti-clockwise clockwise negative so you can see this is anti-clockwise to the left anti-clockwise to the left is negative so we are going to have a jump of wl square by 2 in the downward direction so here the value is 0 here it is wl square by 2 now my dear here you would be having two options to make the parabola here you would be having two options to make the parabola one option for parabola is this yellow curve and other option for parabola is going to be this you need to select one 
Now, my dear, if you have remembered those six curves, you can easily answer it. Otherwise, I am telling you how you can answer if you forget about that. You can see shear force is increasing from A to B. Shear force is increasing from A to B. And you know, shear force is nothing but the slope of bending moment diagram. So, slope of bending moment diagram is shear force which is increasing from A to B. So, my dear, you know, slope is nothing but angle with the x-axis. So, you can plot a tangent with the yellow curve. You can see this is making the angle near to 90 degree here. And here it is making the angle near to 0 degree. But on the other hand, if we see the second curve, here the angle is nearly 0 and here the angle is nearly 90 means more than 0. So, you can see that, you can see that if this is curve 1, this is curve 2, 4 curve 1, yes, 4 curve 1, 4 curve 1, you can see that 4 curve 1, this is our curve 1, the slope is reducing, the slope is reducing when we are going from A to B, the slope is reducing but if you see the curve number 2 then my dear you will see in the curve number 2 the slope is increasing because here the slope is 0 here the slope is maximum so here slope is increasing so my dear you need to check whether shear force diagram here the slope is increasing so we would be considering the curve number 2 so this is how the bending moment diagram would be selected. Please tell me everybody got it or not. This is how the bending moment diagram is going to be selected. Yes, please tell me Sumant, Ashish, Tiksha, Ajay, Shubham, Teju, Umar, Swapnil. Yes, this is how we are going to make the selection. So choice is yours. You can remember the curves. That is the best idea. But if you cannot, then my dear, you can also done it. Do it, sorry. Okay, very good Avinash. So guys, let us move further. So similarly, we can go for all such kind of cases. Now, very good, very good. Now I will show you some case of axisymmetric loading. Okay, so we have seen one case of distributed loading, one case of point loading. Now we will be talking about axisymmetric loading. Okay, once don't worry, the same thing you can learn here. So don't worry. The same thing I would be teaching you here also, the same slope method. Okay, so my dear here if you are going to see this is going to be the loading diagram you are having and in this loading diagram we are having this intensity of W kilonewton meter. We are going to have an intensity of W kilonewton per meter. So my dear if that is the case first of all you would be finding out the support reaction. Now I am showing you if I am just given this figure how I will make SFD BMD. After this I would tell you uh, compound beam and then Abhinav sir would be joining for bending and shear. Okay, so here dear practice you have to do. Okay, so I am just telling you the procedure how you need to follow. Great, great, great Umar. Fine, fine. Don't worry. So guys, let us see. This is you can say two triangles are there. LL length, two triangles are there. So area of one triangle will be bared by the support at A and area of second triangle would be bared by the support at B. So we can write this RA as WL by 2 and RB also to be WL by 2. So, we have already uh, calculated the support reaction. Area of triangle is the support reaction. Now, my dear, what you will be doing? You would be making a section. You have made it. You would be going for a sign convention. This is upward, downward, downward, upward, clockwise, anticlockwise. So, with calculation, everybody is aware how we are going to do. I am telling you without calculation, that's why. So, my dear, if you see this section, to the left hand side upward is positive, to the right hand side upward is negative. So, here we will be having a positive jump, here we will be having a negative jump. This is what we need to do. From A to B, there is no point load, this is distributed load, so there is no jump otherwise. Up to this, the jump is completed, we have seen that. Now, from A to B, if you see the loading, it is inclined, it is inclined line or triangular loading. So, 1 degree more is parabola. Here we are going to have parabola. Yes, we are going to have this. So, my dear, now for parabola, I have two choices. One choice is the yellow parabola. Like this. Other choice is this blue parabola. Like this. And if you want to see which parabola would be selected, we are going to check the slope. So, my dear, for blue parabola, here the slope is 0. 
here the slope is maximum here the slope is zero slope is angle with the x axis you know that okay devendra that also i will show you that also i will tell you how to write it okay first let me tell by this then i will show you the reaction how to write that okay so my dear this is how the slope is changing it is zero to maximum to zero and my dear in the yellow curve if i will show you there you can see here the slope is maximum here the slope is zero and here once again the slope is maximum so my dear in the yellow case you can see slope is going from maximum to zero to maximum in the blue one it is zero to maximum to zero so you can see the value of load intensity because what is dv by dx dv by dx was related to the load intensity so if dv by dx is zero v is going to be maximum no doubt about that so my dear if you want shear force to be maximum w would be zero so load intensity is the slope of shear force diagram so if you see here the value is zero it is increasing then it is decreasing so the value is increasing then decreasing so slope also shall increase and then decrease so in the blue curve first the slope is increasing then the slope is decreasing that is why the uh, sfd is selected which i have just darkened now this sfd is selected for that reason now once you got it they will uh, swapnil you got it umar you got it sk you got it prince you got it Ajay Krishna, you got it. Karan, you got it. Tiksha, you got it. So this is how we have made shear force diagram. Now similarly, when we are going to make the bending moment diagram, if shear force diagram is two degree parabola, bending moment diagram is three degree parabola. Okay. So that parabola can be either of this blue shape or it can be of this yellow shape. Now we need to select which shape would be there. Once again, we will be checking the slope. If you see this blue one here, the slope is maximum. Here, slope is maximum. here slope is zero and if you see the yellow one my dear here the slope is going to be maximum here the slope is zero here the slope is zero so shear force is decreasing first then increasing so the slope of bending moment is also going to be decreases first and then increases that is why this red curve would be selected for the same okay this is how we would be plotting the sfds and bmds so yes for one case i am writing the equation also then uh, we are going to end this sfd bmd part then abhinav sir would be coming so if you take this section xx okay how you can write the uh, shear force equation so to the left hand side my dear if you want to write uh, okay devendra singh as you are saying i am showing you for okay swapnil this is wl by 2 because l and l total length is 2l total length is 2l okay fine guys fine 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 so we are moving further guys so i am uh, just showing one case for uh devendra last case okay one only reaction i would i would like to say how to write it so if we have this udl okay this is w kilo newton per meter so you want how to write this equation this is the section xx okay you would be taking this part xx and you would be showing this udl like this x is the length w is the load intensity so my dear if you want to define shear force at section xx it is going to be what you know algebraic sum of all the vertical forces either to the left or to the right hand side of the section and for sign convention you know upward to the left downward to the right is positive so you would be writing plus w into x this is how you will write the shear force equation then to write bending moment equation my dear you would be assuming a point load equivalent to this area which is equals to w into x acting at a distance of x by 2 you can see it is going to create hogging as per the sign convention this is sagging this is hogging so you would be writing minus w into x into x by 2 so answer would be minus w x square by 2 this is how we are writing shear force and bending moment equation is it clear swapnil vansh avinash ajay tiksha shreyas bhomik teju mayur yes are you getting it so guys if you will be going for all the cases then it can never be end okay so that is why we have just seen how to plot the diagrams <coughs> okay last 5 minutes compound beam from my side when the beams are joined in series we will call it as compound beam if you see the compound beam for the first time what you will feel that one reaction is ra other reaction is horizontal reaction ha one is moment reaction m 
and you would be having one reaction RB and maybe one reaction HB. So, you will feel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 reactions are there. So, number of reactions are 5, number of equilibrium equations are 3. So, if you will say 5 is more than 3, so your feeling would be it is a statically indeterminate beam. But my dear, the reality about this beam is it is not statically indeterminate. Ha, <coughs> definitely Ajay, it would be there, it would be there, okay, it would be there. Very good, Shubham. So guys, if we have 5 and 3, so it looks like it is going to be statically indeterminate. But this is when you are not using this anti, uh, this internal hinge. So in reality, when we are going to find out the calculations, what we are going to do, we are going to separate this along the internal hinge. You know, internal hinge can, hinge can provide a kind of reaction. So if we are going to have a load W, so, one reaction would be coming, otherwise the beam will go down because of this W. So, that reaction I am writing it as RC. The same RC here I would be making in this way, so that at C, equilibrium is maintained, there is no net load, so RC downward, RC upward. Now, it is a simply supported beam, it is a cantilever beam, both are statically determinate. So, the first point is, compound beam is a statically determinate beam. Second thing, my dear, when we are going to say this is point B, this is point C, this is point D and this is point A. Now, by this W, this is at L by 2, this is at L by 2, you can find out this reaction to be W by 2 and this reaction to be W by 2 and RC would also be coming out to be W by 2 and because of this, this support reaction, you can also find out W by 2 and horizontal is 0 and bending moment can be coming out to be, this is W by 2 into L. So, W L by 2. Is it clear? Yes. And the next point about this is internal hinges do not support the moment reaction and you can find out the bending moment at C that would be coming out to be 0. So, C is also said to be the point of contraflexor. Okay, so the point where bending moment is changing its sign is said to be point of contraflexor and the point where shear force is changing its sign is the point where we can find out the maximum bending moment. So, where shear force changes sign, bending moment is maximum, where bending moment changes sign, it is the point of contraflexor. So, these are the things we have discussed in SFD, BMD. So, guys, here we have not covered all the cases, but we have seen how to cover the cases. Okay, so now Abhinav sir would be joining. So, we are going fastly for this part because here only practice can help you, otherwise points we have already discussed where the jump will come, point force jump in SFD, point moment jump in BMD, okay. I have shown you the slope method which would be used, I have shown you the calculation how it is done, okay. So, now within one minute, uh, uh, Abhinav sir would be joining us. Yes, Ashish, very good, very good Surajit, very good guys, bahut badia. Yes, yes, yes. So, guys, uh, so be ready for the next chapter now. Abhinav sir would be joining us for bending and shear. Okay. So, let us move further, guys. Okay. Till Abhinav sir is joining, let us solve this one question. Bars. Bars. Guys, I will be joining in just 4-5 minutes. Na? And the bars wala bacha tha, tab aap hi kara Okay. Yeah, I will do it. You will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Okay. Then you will do it. Okay. Just 2 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yes, brother. Let's see. Let's take a shortcut. So, question ko. So, guys, here it is given. This is very good current. This is, uh, we are going to have a, uh, this is the, the draw loading diagram. Okay. This is SFD given to us. Shear force diagram is given to us and we need to plot loading diagram and bending moment diagram. Shear force diagram is given to us. We need to plot bending moment diagram and loading diagram. So guys, loading diagram, I am going to make it first and you need to tell me in this portion what you will get. First of all, tell me what we will get at A. Now you would be telling me that because uh, everybody is knowing about one degree more concept. So, this is shear force diagram. If we have a jump in shear force diagram, what do you mean by that? 
जंप इन शेयर फोर्स डायग्राम मीन से पॉइंट लोड ऑफ सेवन पॉइंट फाइव किलो न्यूटन वेरी गुड वेरी गुड देन माई डियर यू आर हैविंग इनक्लाइंड लाइन शेयर फोर्स डायग्राम इनक्लाइंड लाइन शेयर फोर्स डायग्राम सेवन पॉइंट फाइव टू थ्री पॉइंट फाइव इनक्लाइंड लाइन शेयर फोर्स डायग्राम यस इनक्लाइंड लाइन शेयर फोर्स डायग्राम तो यू वुड बी हैविंग यू डी एल वेरी गुड एंड दैट इंटेंसिटी वुड बी टू किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर दैट्स ग्रेट मूविंग फर्दर थ्री पॉइंट फाइव टू टू देर इज अ जंप थ्री पॉइंट फाइव टू माइनस टू देर इज अ जंप इट मीन वंस अगेन वी विल बी हैविंग वेर एवर जंप इज कमिंग वट वी विल हैव देयर वेयर जंप इज देयर वट वी विल बी हैविंग देयर यस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट लोड वेरी गुड so we are going as per sign convention 5.5 kilo newton this is once again we are having inclined line once again we are having inclined line very good avinash banoth bahut badhiya tiksha bahut badhiya manas bahut badhiya once again we will be having udl now once again the intensity will be 2 kilo newton per meter this time we have upward jump From minus eight to plus two. This time we have upward jump from minus eight to plus two. Minus eight to plus two. So we would be having a support reaction like this. Then we have horizontal line. It means a point load. Very good, guys. So you got it. How to do this? Everybody got it. बहुत ही बढ़िया बहुत ही बढ़िया गाइस सो आई फील अभिनव सर इज ज्वाइनिंग अस इन वन मिनट सो दिस इज वट वी हैव मेड एज द लोडिंग डायग्राम वेरी गुड आशीष वेरी गुड शशांक तिक्षा एस वी श्रेयस बहुत ही बढ़िया प्रिंस वेरी गुड उमर बहुत ही बढ़िया मयूर बहुत ही बढ़िया वंडरफुल गाइस तो गाइस आई फील एवरीबडी अंडरस्टूड दिस so you may be thinking that i have just uh, done it in brief so guys uh, very good very good ajay so that also we will see so guys uh, like first chapter was having very fundamental things here the fundamental things are these only with which we are going to make the diagram like in the classes we have covered this chapter in 20 20 hours the same 20 hours we cannot go in the marathon otherwise how it would be completing in one day so in the revision part we can go like the points which are required for that making of sfd bmds so that we have already seen okay uh, so i feel now abhinav sir would be coming so sir please join us so we can move ahead with the next topic okay so these are some questions which you can try as homework and tonight we also have the practice session there also we will see some wonderful questions okay Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, guys. Now I am once again. Now the remote control is in my hand. Uh, steering is in my hand. And uh, uh, should I increase the gear, decrease the gear, increase the speed, or decrease the speed? Let me just put on the mic, guys. Okay. T-shirt के अंदर से डालना होता है ना तो स्क्रीन के सामने थोड़ा सरम आती है मेरे को. Okay. So. Everybody, keep sharing, guys. Keep sharing, everyone. मैंने भी अभी भी जस्ट शेयर कर दिया वापस से. Okay, L by three pi. ये हो गया सर. ये मेरे को कराने. Okay. Okay. So, guys, uh, this is the schedule. Let me again tell you all of you. Uh, for civil engineering, uh, strength of materials. Then tomorrow, uh, steel structures will be there by Sahu sir. Then environment. Then geotech. Then fluid mechanics and complete subject. All subjects will be done. I'll be taking. geotech survey and similarly other faculties for mechanical tomorrow will be basics of thermodynamics then production then theory of machines then fluid mechanics and like this bada dha gaadi ki speed chandigarh pahunchna hai okay okay theek hai theek hai i am increasing okay and guys uh, this to today we are coming again in the night so 12 or 11:55 pm okay actually this session is 12 na 
but if I will say 12, then 12 a.m., 12 p.m., so much confusion. So, we have written it 11.55. Then, South Sir will be taking tomorrow steel, complete, complete steel from morning 10 a.m. And Sunu Sir, 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. will be taking thermodynamics. Now, guys, now I am starting chapter 3, bending stresses. But as you have complained about me to Dhiraj Sir that I have not taught uh, indeterminate and uh, bias in parallel. So, I will be taking that. Okay. So, just me tell you here. Here. Guys, first of all, let me take indeterminate bar because not only series and parallel, I have missed that also. Then we are coming here. Suppose a bar is something like this. Okay. This is A, this is B, this is C and some P force is acting here. Some P force is acting here. Suppose this length is L by 3. Suppose this length is 2 by L, L by 3. Suppose this is aluminum having Young's modulus E. Suppose this is copper having Young's modulus 2E. Now, what is happening here that if I want to find out the reaction, so let reaction RC, first of all, I don't know the even reaction, uh, direction. I even don't know the direction. So, take any arbitrary direction. If answer comes in positive, our direction is correct. If answer comes in negative, then our direction is wrong. Okay. So, moving from here further, um, see, our total summation Fy is equal to 0. First of all, Summation fx is equal to 0, no direction in force, 0 but a 0, nil but a not a nothing. Movement, all are acting on the same line, 0 is equal to 0, nothing we are getting. We will be only getting from the equation, summation fy is equal to 0. And from summation fy is equal to 0, the upward force rc and downward force ra plus p should be balanced. So, one equation to unknown. One equation and to unknown. Bahut na insaf hai. Bahut na insaf hai. One equation and two unknown. Sir, isko, sir, please, thoda sa upar karna. Yeh, mer, mera chahara hain tak dikh raha hai, TV mein. Is right side mein. One equation and two unknown. Okay. So, one equation and two unknown, sir, there. So, it is called as statically indeterminate. Statically indeterminate. Anything which cannot be solved by three equations. This, this and this is called statically indeterminate. Although, ultimately, we will take it. That's why we will take the marathon. Karne. Ultimately, we will be finding out. But if we can't find out by using the uh, equilibrium condition, summation fx, summation m, then it is called statically indeterminate. In these, we have to use some extra equations that are called compatibility equation. Like delta AC will be 0 because A and C are fixed. So, here delta AB plus delta BC is equal to 0. Delta AB, I already told you how to do this. Cut a section here, I told you. C from above or below? Let us see from above. So, RA coming to my hand. So, minus RA L by 3 AE plus delta BC. C from above or top? Your choice. Let us see from top. So, RA coming inside minus RA. P is also coming inside my hand. So, minus P into length 2L by 3 area into Young's minus 2E is equal to 0. So, two equations. One equation this, two equation, second equation this, two equation, two unknown, we can find out. Now we can find out RA and RC. If value comes in positive, it is correct. Otherwise, it is negative. Okay. No, no, sorry. I am from Uttarakhand, not south, not from south. Okay. Have you got this, guys? Come on. Give me a yes or no in the comment section, guys. We are soon moving to the third chapter, bending stress and shear stress. Okay. I will be taking both the chapters, bending stress, shear stress. And guys, next, 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 next one hour. I'll be completing that, okay, because that are very small chapters and and it will be very much beneficial for all of you. Have you got this? Yes. Now, <coughs> bars in series and parallel is nothing, guys. Same thing can be done in the series also. Same thing can be done in series also. Same P force is acting here. Same thing can be done here. That is series. Okay, and suppose... The temperature is there. Temperature is increasing. Delta T is increasing. Suppose L1, E1, L2, E2, A2, E, <coughs> A1. So, if the reaction R is here, so here also the reaction will be R because summation Fx is equal to 0. Okay. So, net elongation will be 0. Net elongation will be 0 because it is fixed. So, elongation due to temperature is L1, alpha 1, delta T. Plus elongation due to temperature for the second bar is this. 
plus this is due to temperature. Now force cut a section here. See from left hand side. R is coming inside. Cut a section here. Left hand side. R is coming inside. So R L one A one E one. Cut a section here. See from left or right. It is R coming inside. See from right. R coming inside my hand. See from left. R coming inside my hand. Minus. Therefore it will be minus A two E two. One equation one unknown. R is the only unknown. So you can find R. So sigma one is R by A one. And sigma two is r by a two, and if both of these are asked, summation, both of these questions are asked, that there is a bar like this, and there is a P force, and also temperature is increased. Then what to do? First of all, remove, leave, leave, forget temperature, take this only, and then leave P, only temperature, and then find the algebraic summation. Have you got it? Have you got it, guys? Please let me know now. We are moving to the chapter three or four. Both. This is three four. In this marathon, we are saying both has three. Okay. In this marathon, we are saying both has three. Everyone, guys, please subscribe the channel for more such sessions. Take some water, sir. I have taken here. I have taken. Ready, guys? Please put a heart sign if you are ready. Please put a heart sign if you are ready, guys. Please put a heart sign and. Midnight again. We are coming with only practice session. With only practice session. So, if there is a gap between bar and fixed end, should need to do delta is equal to gap length. Exactly, exactly, Ajay. Correct. Because in that case, delta will not be zero. Delta will be that gap. Yes, everyone is ready. Everyone is ready. Everyone is ready. Excellent, excellent. I guess one small request. Just that is my curiosity. For my curiosity, we are doing so much effort. Just one couple of requests I will be sending in between. And guys, please tell me. And we'll I'll be asking some questions also in between. And we are taking the screenshots. We are taking the screenshots of those answers. At the end, we'll be announcing that prize. Please let me know your city and branches. Everyone, just one answer in a single comment. city and branch is it civil or it is mechanical okay like you can say bangalore comma civil ce or shimla comma mechanical uttarakhand comma civil like this and you also can see that from which part of the country we are here till morning why zag that rk bridge how is rk bridge chali kolkata how is the howrah bridge hyderabad paradise biryani shubham katra jammu Surinder Vadodara Mechanical, Mechanical, Emi from Gujarat, Aurangabad Civil, Vijayawada Civil, Coimbatore Civil, Civil, Gwalior Mechanical, Delhi Mechanical, Mechanical, Bukaro, oh my God, Kannur, Nivili, Andhra Pradesh, Guntu, Kela, Shivendra, Trivandrum, Allahabad, Himachal, Shreyas Nagi from Himachal, where? Kinnor, Allahabad, Emi, Chindwara, C E, Punjab Civil. Civil, Civil, Mechanical, Mechanical, Okay, Tripura from Agartala. Okay, excellent. Yeah, the whole country is here, I guess. From everyone, HR, HR. Me, where is it, boy? Dinesh, HR is Hisar, Haryana, civil. Okay, Ashish. So, I guess more are from Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and uh, this. Nobody from UP. Nobody from UP. The highest population. Very less people I've seen from there. Quite surprising. No, from Udaipur, Tripura. Okay, Bhivani, Bihar. How is Lalu Yadav? Okay, Vanarasi. Okay. <coughs> okay, 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 okay. Khammam. Okay. Tiksha Patel, I know. Okay. Let's start then. Okay. So this is done. This is done. Now this I will be taking. Okay, then this Dhira sir will be taking. This Dhira sir will be taking. Then this I will be taking. This I will be taking, and this both of us will be taking. Okay, sir, you are Jesus of Somno Pallavi. Please take your watch back. No person in this earth, in this mother earth, is equivalent to God, Jesus, Bhagwan, Allah, anything. Okay. Okay. Let's begin. Now there are some assumptions that plane section before bending remains plane. What is that assumption? I'll be telling you. Material is homogeneous isotropic. 
beam is symmetric about the loading plane means that the load of on a beam is not acting here the load on a beam is not acting at the edges no no load is not acting here okay load is symmetrical beam is symmetrical about the loading plane load is here load is here so if you cut a cross section the beam will be symmetrical he this part and the back part both are symmetrical okay young's modulus in guys sigma of compression and strain of compression is same as sigma of tension and strain of tension what is this thing i will tell you i will tell you okay now guys please humble request for the next 5 to 10 minutes okay ram and bhim so uh, dhira sir is bhim why and i am ram why or it is like anything okay 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 see guys please for the next 7 to 8 minutes if you <coughs> listen to me properly next 7 to 8 minutes guys most of the concepts of bending stress chapter will be coming from here next 7 to 8 minutes next 7 to 8 minutes okay so first of all let me save all this data i should not be deleted because we have to give this to students na oh how to this make smaller yeah yeah and do delete this here delete this okay next 7 to 8 minutes <coughs> suppose very very guys everything if you listen to me is for next 7 to 8 minutes everything is cleared suppose this is a beam suppose the cross section is rectangular whatever i am saying is valid for all types of section suppose the cross section is rectangular having width b and having depth d and i apply couples here m clockwise and m here anti clockwise it is called pure bending it is called pure bending okay what is pure bending what is pure bending pure bending means that next 7 to 8 minutes if you understand me listen to me properly 70% of the concept of this chapter are clear pure bending means bending moment is constant and bending moment is constant means shear force i am representing v as shear force v as shear force is equal to dm by dx and if bending moment is constant shear force is zero so pure bending means that bending moment is constant if you cut a section here 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 left and right hand side both the bending moment is m only so it is a case of pure bending now the deflected shape of this beam any layman can tell will be like this will be like this of course it is not always like this if the movements are like this the deflected shape can be this also deflected shape can be this also now deflected shape is like this here is length is shortened let me again make it little bit better little bit better guys very important slide very important concept this is deflected like this so here the length is shortened compression here the length is elongated it is tension okay very important next 7 to 8 minutes so guys here the length is shortened compression here the length is elongated tension and there will be a fiber at somewhere at the between where the length is exactly same length is exactly same as this length is exactly same as this this is called neutral fiber or neutral axis so neutral axis is let me write it where neutral axis let me write it here with this color neutral axis is centroidal axis centroid for for elastic case for plastic case it is equal area axis i will tell you that later for elastic what is elastic what is plastic i will tell you this is elastic this is elastic when stress strain is linear 
and that one is plastic okay plus let me tell you later you each and everything you will be understanding here each and everything you'll be understanding guys like never before never before you will be very happy after this you will be very happy after this slide i'm 100 but not 100 99.9% .9 sure 99.9% .9 sure i will be very very happy <coughs> okay neutral axis is the central axis so central axis for rectangular section is the mid depth so this is d by 2 this is d by 2 this is neutral axis like this now below above neutral axis for the sagging case this region is compression compression and below this lengths are elongated it is tension okay now the assumption plane section before bending remains plane after bending that means that means uh -uh 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 -uh, where it gone here yaar. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. plane section before bending remains plane after bending means if earlier the section was something like this before bending before the application of m movement before the application of m moment it is like this then after bending it be, it remains plane only it remains plane only like this this has moved here after bending this has moved here so see this point is as it is this point goes from black to red okay this point goes from black to red okay this point goes from black to this black to red similarly below this point black goes to red similarly this point black goes to red so can you identify one thing can you identify one thing that as we are going away from neutral axis above deflow uh, displacement is more more displacement more displacement more displacement more displacement more displacement this point is going little bit this point is going more this point is going more okay mm -hmm. See here, see here, this point is going more, this point is going further more, this point is going farthest, strain is more, strain is more, this point is going more, this point is going further more, this point is going farthest, okay, more, 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 okay, so as we are going away from neutral axis, strain diagram is linear, so the strain diagram is linear. And you can make strain diagram here also. This is just representing magnitude. Either you show left hand side, right hand side, nothing. No need to worry. This is only showing magnitude. So above the strain is compression, tension. You can, I'm again saying you can make this also, like this also. No need. This is just showing magnitude. Okay. This is strain diagram and strain diagram is always linear. This is, guys, just a case of five minutes and you will be on top of this chapter after this. Strain diagram always linear always linear now if this maximum strain this is epsilon max if this maximum strain is less than epsilon y if this maximum strain is less than epsilon y stress diagram is also linear very important point if epsilon max is less than equal to epsilon y stress diagram <laughs> this is the stress diagram is also linear because if the farthest strain maximum strain is beyond in this region only in this region only if the maximum strain is in this region only stress is also varying linearly as strain is increasing as strain is increasing stress is also increasing stress is also increasing linearly stress is also increasing linearly stress is also increasing linearly but this is only up to epsilon y so if this stress is less than epsilon y that means we are in this yellow range only the stress diagram will be like this but if we apply more movement more movement more movement then might be then in that case in that case might be might be little bit strain is in of linear region little bit strain is of linear region but if strain goes from zero because here the strain is zero na it will start from here na it will start from here na but if you go beyond this, if you go up to here, so this region is linear, this region is stress is linear, but here 
it becomes after a particular point the stress becomes constant stress becomes constant like this stress becomes constant okay so if more movement this maximum strain this maximum strain here epsilon max is greater than epsilon y so yes in initial portion this much strain might be lesser na these strains initial strain may be lesser na so in the initial strain it is linear but after that it is constant and if you apply becomes beam if you becomes beam a oh, lot of amount of movement lot of amount of movement that this much movement you have applied that even the nearby strains that even the nearby strains nearby strains very near to neutralization strains are more than this region are more than this region more than epsilon y then it becomes like stress diagram becomes like this the stress diagram becomes like this case 1 2 3 case 1 is elastic case case 1 is elastic case case 2 is elastoplastic case and case 3 is plastic case in our syllabus this is asked and in elastic case neutral axis is centroid in plastic case neutral axis is equal area axis which divides the two area in equal in rectangular case this is centroid also and this is also equal area but in triangle it can be different it will be different so our is this one only this is the stress stress is also varying linearly strain will also always vary linearly strain is as more more movement more movement more movement more movement strain will is increasing like here but stress is not increasing like this after the particular level it becomes constant okay everybody genuine 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 give me yes or no why or and have you understood this or not genuine answer i want have you understood this figure now please 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 keep sharing guys one small request from my side to all of you whole effort our team is doing to make this session possible whole effort our team has done to make this session possible okay up to again umar umar now you got na umar now you got na okay now let us restrict to this case only because in gate this is asked now when stress diagram is linear that is valid for every shape okay that is valid for every shape suppose this is the cross section okay and this is the neutral axis and if it is rectangular it is d by 2 and is d by 2 now let me tell you one more thing one more thing guys the cross section na will be looking like this like, like this is like this na have you understood this have you understood this poison effect poison effect if it is shortened here they are come on here if it is shortened here this will elongate here na if it is shortened here this will elongate here na this will elongate here na this will elongate here na so if it is shortened here it will elongate here na it will elongate here na and if it is elongated here it is shortened here na that is also asked in engineering services one time shape that is also asked in engineering services one time the shape shape of the cross section not of the longitudinal view of beam okay now although this becomes trapezium rectangular section will become trapezium but we will be only assuming it to be rectangular for calculate calculation purpose or anything okay now how many of you know that how bdq by 12 formula is come how i comes bdq by 12 
I comes B D Q by twelve. How I comes B? Guys, I basic general formula for every section is R square integration D A for the whole section. This valid for circle, irregular shape, triangular, I section, L section, T section, P section, Q section, everything. This formula is valid. Okay. Now, this is neutral axis. Go at a y distance and take a small area. This small area is of dy. Small area is of dy. So i is equal to r. R is the distance from the neutral axis. Distance from the axis where we are finding the moment of inertia. We are finding from this axis. But d square is b into dy. If you integrate from minus d by two to plus d by two. Minus d by two to plus d by two, so it will be b d cube by twelve. This is how every i is obtained. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, guys, as I just told you, the stresses are this. Stresses are this, due to this figure. Actually, you have studied now that mild steel space figure you have seen like this, and copper aluminium maybe like this. But guys, idealized stress curve means for any metal we will be assuming this curve in this chapter. Will be assuming this curve in this chapter, okay? So now the in for elastic case, I'm not going into the plastic case. For elastic case, the stresses are like this. For sagging, it is compression and tension. For hogging, it will be tension at the top and compression at the bottom. Okay? So it is not uh, many people think that it is always compression at the top. No. So what is at Y distance from neutral axis, either above or below. At y distance, what is sigma? This is given by this person. This is called bending formula or flexural formula. This is called bending formula or flexural formula. <coughs> so every subject will be done here. This is the formula. Now, guys, it is not as easy that you think this formula is. Let me go into the depth of this formula. Let me go. So many cases I'll be telling you next five uh, minutes. You'll be understanding the reality of this formula. See, first of all, this formula is only applicable for pure bending case. This formula is only applicable for pure bending case when bending moment is constant. But, but, but we will apply this formula for every case in exam. For interview point of view, we should be knowing that this formula is only valid for pure bending case. But in exam, we'll be applying this formula for every case. Now, next term: S bending stress at y location sigma at y location from neutral axis. Sigma is the bending stress. Why this is bending stress? Because these stresses are not p by a. There is no p force coming. There is no p force coming. There is no P force coming, no P by A, no P by A. These stresses are due to M. These stresses are due to M. These are coming due to this bending. Okay, these stresses are coming due to this bending. This type of bending. This type of bending. This type of bending. I am not applying any P force. I am just applying movement. 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 These stresses are due to movement, bending stresses. So bending stress at wide distance, bending stresses at wide distance from is m by i moment of inertia upon i. Now i can be different about this axis. 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 I will be different about this axis. I will be different about this axis. So this i is about neutral axis. That is B D Q by twelve rect rectangular section. And pi d four by sixty four for circular section. E is the Young's modulus of that material, and R is the radius of deflected shape. Once this is deflected, so this will cause some radius here, na. This will cause some radius here, na. R will be for that. R will be for that. Okay. Okay. Now. <coughs> No internal M will be there for resisting M. Internal M will come, not P. Now, got it, Samad? 
Now, uh, now we understood the depth of this formula that this sigma is bending stress due to m, not due to p. Why is the distance from neutral axis? m is the bending moment, i is the moment of inertia about neutral axis, e is this, r is the, this. Now, actually till now, m also you are not getting. Let me tell you now, one case. I am going into the deepest level, guys. See, this is a simply supported beam. This is acted by UDL. Of course, sagging moment. This will be deflecting like this. What is the, this? I ask to faculties also when I take interview. When I take interview, I ask this question to faculties also. What is the bending stress here? Compression or tension? What is sigma B at A? What is sigma B at A? Okay, Amal, it's okay. What is the sigma bending at A? What is sigma bending at A? What is sigma bending at A? What is sigma bending at A? Sigma bending at A is 0 because sigma B is m by i into y. y is maximum there, distance from neutral axis maximum. But m is 0 because m we have to take, now this is the catch here. M we have to take of the bending moment at that location and M is 0. So, this will be 0. Have you got now? Have you got now? Have you got now? Everyone please. Guys, enjoying or not? Enjoying or not? So many things I have told in these only two slides. More than 70% chapter of bending stress is complete. More than 70% bending stress chapter is complete in these two slides. That is the beauty of teaching like these diagram wise that is the beauty of teaching like this diagram wise okay now sigma b is zero at a point now one more thing i want to tell that m we have to take at that section suppose i want to find out this is the neutral axis let me tell you now the concept will be strengthened now suppose i want to find out here at this p point or t point so, sigma t is m by i into y. So, y is the distance from neutral axis. Suppose this is y dash here. So, I will take y dash. i is the moment of v d cube by 12. m here I will be taking as bending moment of this section. Let this section be m dash. m dash. Guys, now I hope it is more clear. Now I hope it is more clear. Enjoying like anything. Enjoying like anything. Give me yes or no. Give me yes or no. Give me yes or no. Just in two slides, guys, 70% chapter concepts are clear. Okay. Now, moving further, no, someone, no. So, M we have to apply of that equation. Now, one more thing I want to tell you in this point that for prismatic beam, prismatic means, prismatic means, prismatic means, E i is constant, i is constant, dimensions are constant and pure bending for these two cases, for these two cases, deflected shape is circular, deflected shape is circular, deflected shape is circular, let me tell you how. Guys, <coughs> m by i is equal to e by r. 1 by r is called that curvature. Is equal to m by e i. Many times in examination this question is asked. What is the curvature? m by e i. What is the curvature? m by e i. What is the curvature? m by e i. No. Uh, yes. Abhishek, that is neutral fiber. Neutral axis this one. On the cross section. That is called neutral fiber. Okay. Now, for pure bending m is constant and for prismatic beam e i is constant for pure bending m is constant for prismatic e i is constant so r 1 by r is constant 1 by r is constant means r is constant r is constant means circle got it got it got it somebody saying drink water let me drink water got it got it <coughs> got it 
got it or not got it or not enjoying like this only two slides and bending stress chapter is gone go went gone go went gone okay excellent excellent okay so now sigma is equal to m by i into y and from here we got this from here we got this that for prismatic beam e i is constant for this m is constant and from there for prismatic beam e i is constant for pure bending m is constant and from there r is constant that means it is a circle that means it is a circle okay <coughs> now mm, 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 sorry yes i am here again now sigma by y is equal to m by i okay now Okay, I want to do one more important thing here. Let me just save this all this because we'll be giving this in PDF. And guys, soon the prize question is coming. Soon the prize question is coming. Copy. And this is paste here. And oh ho, oh ho, oh ho. Let me this delete. This delete because it is already saved in the previous slide. And let me change the background. Let me change, otherwise it is, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, not comment, not comment, not comment here. Uh, this is new comment and then format background. Let me check the black color. Okay, little bit less blacker, this. Okay. <coughs> otherwise that will be pinning your eyes. Uh, English will not come so Okay, now. Please see here, sigma is equal to m by i into y, so sigma maximum, so maximum stress is when y is max, either top and bottom, y is max, then sigma is maximum, so sigma max is m by i into y max. Guys, I by Y max is called as section modulus. I by Y is called section modulus. Okay. Now, from here, please see further that sigma max is equal to M by Z. Or M, it is sometimes called that moment of resistance also. It is sigma max into Z. Sigma max into Z. Moment of resistance means how much? Moment of resistance means how much? How much bending moment beam can resist? And for safety, for safety, whatever is the maximum bending moment coming should be less than MOR. Moment of resistance means how much maximum bending moment it can resist. Okay. So now moment of resistance is moment of resistance is sigma max. And what is sigma max? What is maximum sigma? Sigma y. What is maximum stress? Sigma y into z. Now, this is the maximum moment that can be resisted. Now, this is a property of this is a property of sigma y material and this is a property of shape. Z is I by Y max, I by Y max. That is a property of shape. Now, suppose moving further, suppose we have an iron section, iron, iron, iron section. And iron section can be circular, iron section can be rectangular, can be square, can be I section, can be anything. Particular area, area is equal to constant and material is constant material is also same so if material is same then mor maximum the material is same so sigma y is same sigma y depends on material so i can make a beam of circular section rectangular section circular section uh, uh, rectangular square or i section i can make a beam of anything so i will be making a beam Sig mor is maximum sigma y will be constant because material is same so, MOR will be maximum when Z is maximum. So, Z of I section is strongest, then Z of rectangular, 
then z of square, then z of circular, and it is quite obvious, quite obvious that bending stresses are more at top and bottom. And I section is designed by suitable person. That is why I section is maximum, where maximum bending stress are there at top and bottom, there is maximum area. That is why I is best in bending. In shear, in the next chapter, we'll see I is worst. But bending it is best. That is why in railways, in rail tracks, in rail tracks, we use I section. That is why in rail tracks, we use I section because in rail tracks, shear stresses are very less. Predominant primary stresses are bending stresses. Bending I is good and circle is poorest because where, because where there is very less stress near neutral axis, their area is maximum, where, bekar, poor, 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 poor. You can get PDF in our telegram, civil by Abhinav sir and mechanical by Dheera sir. So, I am saying that I is best when I am comparing all these sections of same material and same cross section area. It is not like that. Iron section is circular and cotton circle is cotton is I. Then of course circle will be bad, better. I am saying that when material is constant, then sigma y will be constant. Then only it will depending on z. So on z for particular material, particular area, this is best. Have you got it? Please let me know on the comment section. Please let me know in the comment section. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Give me a hurt sign if you got it. Now, moving further from here, I want to ask you a question. All of you, this is a prize question now. This is a prize question. This is a prize question now. I'll be taking screenshot. I'll be taking a screenshot. Okay, these kind of stresses are there, no? Suppose this is like this. Compression and tension. This is compression here and maximum stress at the top and below this compression, this tension. Maximum at the bottom. Okay. Now, moving further. Guys, please share the session, everyone, so that all commandos can join in. The whole effort is done by our team to make this session possible. Now, guys, let I will you have to write answer fast also. Now, price question. Price question. I will be taking screenshot. At the end, we'll be seeing this. Suppose there is a rectangular section. There is a section like this, there is a I section, there is a square section, there is a diamond section, A is rectangular, B is like this, C is I, D is square, E is diamond. Now listen to the question, listen to the question. For ductile, no, ductile, no. prize question, prize question. For brittle material, economy and safety wise, economy and safety wise, which is best section, which is, you just have to write A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, I will be taking a screenshot, I will be taking a screenshot, Dira sir, you, all, you can also take a screenshot, A, B, C, D, E. Okay. I will be taking a screenshot of the screen. Okay. Okay. Only one person <coughs> no, till now two person, no three. Deepak, Umer, Deepak, Umer. Write down the names, please. Please write down the names. Deepak, Umer, and Prasan Lt are correct. Deepak, Umer, and write down the names, guys. And don't worry, there will be so much more questions like this will be coming. Three persons are winner in this. 
गाइस इकोनॉमी एंड सेफ्टी बोथ ब्रिटल मटेरियल आर हैविंग स्ट्रेस्ट इन कर्व ब्रिटल मटेरियल आर हैविंग द स्ट्रेस्ट इन कर्व लाइक दिस इन कंप्रेशन दे कैन टेक लॉट ऑफ अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस बट इन टेंशन दे कैन नॉट टेक मोर स्ट्रेस दे आर ब्रिटल दैट इज वाई स्ट्रेन इज नॉट मोर बट इन टेंशन दे कैन फील अर्ली सो ब्रिटल मटेरियल आर स्ट्रॉन्ग इन कंप्रेशन लाइक कंक्रीट लाइक कंक्रीट लाइक कंक्रीट नाउ इफ the stress strain diagram is like this in compression they are strong in tension they is this is a little bit a case of worry in compression they are strong so in tension side we require more area so this is suitable this is suitable i can also be suitable but here the word is economy also here the word is economy also so why to use i say both side why to use same area why to use same area Why to use same area? Why to use same area? Economy word is there, na? In compression, it is already strong, so less area can also do. Everybody for this beautiful explanation, beautiful concept. Please put a heart sign. Your heart sign will tell me that yes, you have understood this concept deeply. Yes, you have understood the flag general formula. Yes, you have understood that where is I. Yes, you have understood that M O R is what. Yes, you understood Z. Yes, you understood the stress in curve of brittle material. Yes, you have understood this concept. Please put a heart sign. Your heart sign will be showing me that yes, you have understood this concept. Okay. Now, guys, this is how we will be. Tell me this MSQ. Tell me this, guys. Understood? Understood that? Na? Diamond shape is bad, na? Diamond shape is bad, na? Where there are more stresses, more stresses, the area is less. Is bad. is bad okay tell me value of bending stress will be zero at value of bending stress will be zero at tell me answers guys it is msq it is msq at neutral axis at extreme everywhere at the supports because at supports m is equal to zero At neutral axis, y is equal to zero. So A and C, A and C. Oh, why this is coming again and again? Okay. <clears throat> Now, let us go one step further. Now, if a beam is acting by M also, a yellow color M also, and a white color P also, due to yellow color bending stress will be coming. Due to yellow color, bending stress will be coming. Due to yellow color, bending stress will be coming. Sigma b, m by i into y, and due to white color p, due to white color p, direct stress is coming. Direct stress is coming, and that is compressive force. So this is sigma direct b by a. So net summation is sigma b plus sigma d. Summation of these. For this particular case, at above, it is compression. and compression both and bottom can be zero bottom can be zero resultant if sigma b is equal to sigma d this tension this compression both are same it will be zero or it can be like this also if sigma b uh, sigma d is bigger direct stress direct stress means force by area direct stress means force by area or it can be like this also Here this tension sigma b is bigger. Have you got it? 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 Please let me know. Please let me know. Okay. Now, guys, do you know one thing? It is generally asked in PSU and GATE that. 
with cutting the section that banot why what 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 guys see due to m i already told this is bending stress due to yellow one movement and due to this force p by a due to the force p by a it will be direct stress now total stress is summation of this so above it is compression compression it will be compression bottom it is compression and tension so it is net zero if c and t both are same it is net positive if this value is bigger if this net is tension if tension value is bigger have you got it have you got it please let me know okay now guys this is asked that a diamond section is actually strengthened a diamond section is actually strengthened by cutting the top portion my god a circular section is cutting is strengthened more stronger in bending by cutting the top portion and bottom portion like this a diamond section is strengthened by cutting the portion like this if total length is b then b by 9 if you are cutting oh my god by cutting something it is more stronger abhinav negi sir are you kidding us that cutting the section it becomes more stronger yes it becomes stronger because mor is sigma into z okay sigma max into z so it is sigma max z is i by y max so actually i is reducing by cutting the section i is r square da na r square da so da is decreasing but actually y max is also decreasing because earlier the y max is up to here now y max is only up to here earlier the y max is up to here now the y max is only up to here earlier the y so y max is decreasing and it by cutting it by b by 9 or by by cutting it 0.011d the y max decrease has a more impact on mor and finally finally this impact is not more and this impact is more and finally mor is increasing have you understood this have you understood this have you understood this okay this question take a homework and please all these questions i ask me on the comment section i will be taking all these doubts all these doubts in the comment section okay now please do this please do this please do this of same material let me know the answer let me know the answer let me know the answer everyone bhai 50 50 biscuit kha lu एक फिफ्टी फिफ्टी बिस्कुट खा लू दो खा लो दो खा लू और ओके तो एमओ आर ऑफ अ सर्कुलर बीम एंड एमओ आर ऑफ ए स्क्वायर बीम इज सिग्मा y into z of circular sigma y into z of square okay so both are of same material sigma y sigma y will be cancelled z of circular is i by y of circular and this is i by y of square i of circular is pi d4 by 64 y max is d by 2 and this is i is d b d cube so d4 by 12 and y max is d by 2 guys in circular what is y max d by 2 and in square of d side what is y max d by 2 so this is i d cube by 32 and this is d cube by 6 so this will be 3 pi by 16 this is 3 pi by 16 please guys share the session so that everybody can enjoy it everybody can enjoy it everybody guys come on share the session everyone let more people join this marathon join this movement join this revolution in so marathon okay now mm, these all questions are homework you have to do this one more concept i want to tell you all that 
Mm-hmm. This is time wasting. And now before going, I'm next chapter. I'm starting. Next chapter. I'm starting shear. Oh no, freeze beam is there. Yes, this is the thing I want to tell you. Freeze beam is a composite beam. Composite beam means that will be having combined bending and combined compression and tension for the whole beam. And freeze beam can be of steel and wood. Okay, it is a composite. Centroid will be the centroid will be the exactly at the center. Top and bottom freeze beam. So here, how the stress diagram will be? Stress diagram will be like this, like this, and suddenly it will be dropping. Why this? Why this dropping? Because stress here is in wood. This stress is in steel, and this stress is steel maximum. Now let me tell you one thing very clearly, very important. Please see, this sigma wood is equal to Strain at that location, strain strain diagram will be linear, na? Strain diagram will be linear, like this. So strain at that location into Young's modulus of wood, and this stress in steel is strain at that location into Young's modulus of steel. And we, once you divide sigma steel by sigma wood, strain to strain will be cancelled. It is Young's modulus of steel and Young's modulus of wood. It is called as M, and this is around 10 to 20 times. The ratio of Young's modulus of steel is bigger, 10 to 20 times. So, sigma steel is bigger, m times of sigma wood. So, that is a jump. Why that is a jump? Because strain, guys, guys, is it buffering? Is it buffering? In my mobile, it is buffering, na? MVS no buffering. Is it buffer or what? No, children are not writing. Children are not writing. No, but children are not buffering. Children are saying that they are not buffering. It happened and gone. हो गया हो गया ठीक हो गया ठीक हो गया ठीक हो गया तो change मत करना इसको भी refresh कर दो शायद बुटों को guys it is fine now ना या मेरे mobile में ना mobile data से किया तो चल रहा है okay if it if it got buffers please let me know no ताकत can stop us not even internet not even Ambani Jio not even Airtel Mittel no ताकत can stop us to bring this marathon to complete नहीं तो घर आके पढ़ा देंगे मैं और जीरा सर आप टेंशन मत लो, ओके? So Young's modulus is m times of sigma wood. Have you got this? Fleeced beam is not directly in the syllabus, but yes, the questions are coming in last ten plus years. Okay, okay. So I am again saying guys, strain diagram is linear. So stress here, this is wood. And this is steel. This is wood. This is steel. So in wood, <coughs> stress is strain into Young's modulus. In steel, stress strain into Young's modulus. Once we divide sigma steel by sigma wood, is Young's modulus ratio. Young's modulus ratio is m, and Young's modulus of steel is 10 to 20 times of that of Young's modulus wood. That is why it is jumping. That is why it is jumping. Have you got it now? I repeat it. And by similar triangle, sigma st max by sigma st. Sigma ST max is D by 2 plus T depth above the neutral axis. <coughs> this is D by 2 and this is T. And Sigma ST is at D by 2. So these two things you can apply. And moment of resistance is summation of both. Moment of resistance of steel is Sigma ST max considering whole beam, considering whole beam as steel. So, sigma into BD square by 6. Moment of resistance of rectangle case is sigma into BD square by 6. So, B D plus 2T whole square by 6. This is MOR of steel. But actually, I have, I have assumed that steel is D plus 2T. D plus 2T. But actually, this is not steel. So, remove this. Remove this. Remove this. Minus sigma ST BD square by 6. This is moment of resistance of steel. And moment of resistance of wood is 
मोमेंट ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ वर्ड इज सिग्मा डब्ल्यू बी डी स्क्वायर बाई सिक्स है नाउ गाइस देयर इज इक्वलेंट इफ आई वांट टू कन्वर्ट एवरीथिंग इनटू वुड इफ आई वांट टू कन्वर्ट एवरीथिंग इनटू वुड सो वुड टू वुड वुड चेंजिंग टू वुड विल बी सेम बी एंड डी इफ आई वांट टू चेंज स्टील इनटू वुड स्टील इज स्ट्रांगर आई वांट टू चेंज इन वुड सो मोर वुड इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड दैट मोर वुड इज एम टाइम्स दैट आई एम नॉट चेंजिंग इन आवर सिलेबस एम टाइम्स एम टाइम्स नाउ दिस इज वुड नाउ दिस इज वुड नाउ दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस एंड दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस बोथ विल बी सेम but steel has to be converted by more wood because wood is weaker in, in if i want to convert everything in steel so this steel to this steel will be same bt steel to conversion of steel to steel will be same steel this much steel same steel this much steel same wood instead of wood if i want to require steel instead of wood i want steel steel is stronger so less steel is required and that width is decreased by m times okay got it similarly for case to also you can do you can check the formulas that will give in notes if anything is there let me know your doubts this is homework all this homework we are available on the telegram for taking your doubts guys we are available in the telegram for taking your doubts let's move to the next chapter are you ready guys for shear stresses are you ready Are you ready? Please tell me. Okay. Homework के solution नहीं भेजेंगे हम doubt पूरी video भेजेंगे जो doubt होगा वो बताएंगे धीरे सर please. एक मैंने अभी दिया था सर क्वेश्चन आप भी देते रहना मैं स्क्रीनशॉट लेते रहना हूँ लास्ट में अनाउंस कर देंगे सर बच्चे कह रहे हैं कि होमवर्क के होमवर्क के सोल्यूशन नहीं भाई पूरी पीडीएफ देंगे हम होमवर्क जो आप डाउट पूछोगे टेलीग्राम में बैठे हुए हम यू हैव टू सोल्व द प्रॉब्लम इफ यू फाइंड एनी डिफिकल्टी यू जस्ट शेयर विद दस वी गिव दोल्यूशन फॉर दो कुछ क्वेश्चन खुद से भी करो यार फिर आपका प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल उसमें कितना है है मिनट्स सर आपने बेंडिंग में घंटे से ऊपर ले लिया घंटे से ऊपर ले लिया और क्या हैं देखिए साढ़े तीन से ऊपर हो गया टाइम सही बताओ सर सर इसको मैं ये तो बहुत छोटा सबसे छोटा मतलब सबसे छोटा तो नहीं पर वन ऑफ द शॉर्टेस्ट टॉपिक है तो उसके बाद थोड़ा स्पीड पकड़ते हैं दोनों दो दो सौ स्पीड पकड़ेंगे स्पीड पकड़ेंगे आप ये तो वैसे में स्पीड पकड़ने की जरूरत नहीं है तो वैसे ही छोटा है सर पंद्रह मिनट में आ जाना हम्म हम्म और छोटा चीज और कम करना है दस मिनट में आ जाना थोड़ा स्पीड पकड़ते हैं आप ठीक है ठीक है चलो तो दोस्तों मैं ना कहानी सुनाता हूं आपको उस कहानी से कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड है भोपाल से इंदौर गए दो सौ किलोमीटर चार घंटे दो सौ किलोमीटर चार घंटे तो स्पीड कितनी हुई स्पीड कितनी हुई फिफ्टी किलोमीटर पर आवर पर एक्चुअल में ये एवरेज स्पीड थी एक्चुअल में ये एवरेज स्पीड थी कहानी सुनो पूरा कॉन्सेप्ट से लिंक है भाई पूरा का पूरा कॉन्सेप्ट से लिंक है एक्चुअल में ये In reality, from Bhopal to Indore, if it is 200 km and we drive this distance in four hours, the speed is 50 km per hour. But that actually it is average speed. Actually, this is average speed. The speed here may be 30, may be here 70, may be here 90, may be here 120, may be here zero, may be here 15. Similarly, similarly, suppose this is a beam, and at particular section shear force is coming. Suppose S. Particular section shear force S, and that section is suppose B into D rectangular. So shear stress is shear force by area. This is actually the average shear stress. This is actually the average shear stress. Average shear stress. Actual shear stress is given by this formula. Actual shear stress is given by this formula. That if I want to find out the shear stress, this is the neutral axis. If I want to shear stress at T point, 
T point, then the shear stress at T point is S. S means shear force at that section. A y bar, A y bar is A is the area above this, and if it is below, then area is below this. Area is above that point. Y bar is the move center of that centroid, centroid of that area. I is the moment of inertia on neutral axis, and B is the width of that section. B is the width of that section. Have you got it? Should I repeat again? Let me tell you. Let me tell you again. Suppose this is neutral axis, and I want shear stress at this T point. Cross section is this. So suppose at this cross section x x, at this cross section x x, shear force is S. So shear stress at exactly T point is S. That is shear force at that section. A is A is the area above that point. If point is below, then area below that. Area here, this one. Area this one. And this is the area. S is the shear force at that section. And Y bar is that area center of mass. Y bar is that area center of mass. I is the moment of inertia. B is the width. This is the actual formula. And from this formula, these all values are given. From this formula, we got shear stress always parabolic, always zero at top and bottom, always parabolic, two degree, always zero at the top and bottom, somewhere maximum in interior. For symmetrical section, it is generally maximum at the neutral axis. Now, this when I I am not going into derivation. When I am going this. So this comes, and when I applying this for this, धीरे से चेक करना मेरे को फॉर्मूला याद नहीं रहता. Six s by b d cube d square by four minus y square. This is the section. This is the shear stress at y distance from neutral axis. This is the shear stress at y distance from neutral axis. Okay, and when y is zero, this is maximum. So maximum if y is zero, if put if y is zero, you put it will be three by two s by b d. That is tau max. If y you put d by two, so putting d by two shear stress is zero. If you put y minus d by two, this is again zero. So this one is tau actual. Average shear stress, Bhopal to Indore, fifty kilometer. Average shear stress is this. <laughs> tau average is shear force by area. So this this is tau average, shear force by area. So tau max. This is from this maximum questions are asked. Three by two of tau average. Tau max is three by two of tau average. Similarly, same formula is applied here. Tau max is four by three of tau average for circular section, and for triangular section, where is this triangular section? Tau max is three by two of tau average. But in triangular section, in circular and rectangular section, since they are symmetrical, so tau max is exactly the centroid. But here tau max is at h by two mid depth. Tau max is at h by two. Isi me bollo. Joshi sir ko bollo na. Nee shorts na na hoga na. Aap banana. Hello, aap banana. बाद में ओके देखते हैं टाउ मैक्स इज सोनू सर को बोल दो सोनू सर को बोल दो टाउ मैक्स इज थ्री बाय टू ऑफ टाउ एवरेज ना शेयर सेंटर विल बी कमिंग यार ओके फॉर आई सेक्शन सी गाइस ओनली वन थिंग यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट एट हियर टॉप एंड बॉटम इट इज जीरो वेरिएशन इज पैराबोलिक Variation is parabolic, and soon, suddenly, 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 the word important. Suddenly is very important word. Area is reducing, so suddenly stress is decreasing. Okay, like this. Here the area is more, so stress is less. Here the area is suddenly reducing, so suddenly stress will be more. And this is tau two. This is tau one. Tau two is shear stress in the web. Less area, more stress. Tau one is the shear stress in flange. More area, less stress. And tau two by tau one ratio is capital B by B, and tau max here. Since it is again symmetrical, rectangular, circular, rectangular is symmetrical, circular is symmetrical, I section is symmetrical. So it is at the 
सेंटर ओके नाउ चैप्टर फोर धीरे सर विल बी टेकिंग ओके गाइस सो मोस्ट हियर सीएसटेस इज द इजीएस्ट फॉर्मूला सीएसटेस ओनली वन फॉर्मूला टाउ इज इक्वल टू एस ए वाई बार बाय आई बी ओके दिस क्वेश्चन आल्सो प्रीवियस ईयर गेट क्वेश्चन यू कैन अटेम्प्ट दिस नाउ लेट्स गो टू द चैप्टर नंबर फोर ओके दिस वी हैव डन दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट टेकिंग फिफ्टी टाइम दिस इज डन दिस इज डन सी इज द स्मॉलेस्ट वन ओके नॉट स्मॉलेस्ट देन सी एस सेंटर बट येस इट इज स्मॉलेस्ट देन नाउ धीरे सर विल कमिंग धीरे सर विल बी टेकिंग बोथ ऑफ दम एंड सी एस सेंटर आई विल बी टेकिंग दिस धीरे सर धीरे सर दिस आई विल बी टेकिंग दिस टू विल बी कंबाइनली टेक ट्वेंटी मिनट्स सी एस सेंटर आई विल बी टेकिंग दिस बोथ विल कंबाइनली टेक ट्वेंटी मिनट्स एंड डिफ्लेक्शन इज टेकिंग बाई मी एंड धीरे सर बोथ सो सर डिफ्लेक्शन हाउ विल बी टेकिंग मैं जान ही नहीं दूंगा मैं पकड़ लूंगा चार बज चुका है सर ऑलमोस्ट ओके सो गाइस दिस इज द शेड्यूल फॉर द टुमारो फॉर सिविल इट इज स्टील दिस इज द कंप्लीट शेड्यूल फॉर द होल मैराथन सीरीज एंड दिस इज फॉर थर्मोडाइनिक्स फॉर सोनू सर सोनू सर गेल का बना रहे ओके गाइस दिस इज फॉर टुनाइट ओके सर आप भी एक वो दे देना वो प्राइज वाला क्वेश्चन श्योर फिर उसको एंड गाइज दिस इज मैं शेयर कर देता हूँ अभी आपका वापस अपने टेलीग्राम में इस साउथ सवेर बी कमिंग स्टील टुमारो कंप्लीट स्टील कंप्लीट स्टील टुमारो टेन एम एंड सोनू सर विल बी कमिंग टुमारो टेन एम फुल थर्मोडाइनिक्स ओके सो सर ये एक तो इसमें बार बार ये करना पड़ रहा है ना सो नाउ गाइज सर डिफ्लेक्शन में मैं क्या कह रहा हूँ कि मैंने कल रात को जो पीपीटी बनाई है ये वाली इस तरीके से बनाई है कि इसमें वेरियस मैथड्स क्या है हर मेथड में तो क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करके ही समझाना है तो उसमें तो क्वेश्चन ही हो गया ना ठीक है ओके नाउ गाइस दिस टू चैप्टर्स रेवाती शेयर सेंटर वुड बी कमिंग आफ्टर दिस टू चैप्टर्स प्रिंसिपल्स एस एंड टोर्शन ये मैं ये मैं और ये पूरा आप ये फॉर आप ये फॉर आप ये फॉर मेरे भी तो आप आप ही वे सर ये इसमें कितना टाइम लगेगा थोड़ा बच्चों सो गाइस डोंट वरी नाउ वी विल बी कवरिंग दिस टू टॉपिक्स ओके आई विल ट्राई टू लाइक अभी ना सर थोड़ा सा लो स्ट्राइक रेट से खेलना तो मुझे ज़्यादा से खेलना पड़ेगा तो इसलिए मुझे थोड़ा सा तेज भागना पड़ेगा सो वी विल ट्राई टू थी सी ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग विदिंग � कल से काना साथ लेके बैठू कल से काना साथ लेके बैठूंगा अरे बाप रे सर इसमें कितनी देर का मैं मैं तो दोस्तों आपको पता है सर जब एस एफ डी एम डी पढ़ा रहे थे ना तो हमारा स्टूडियो है सालों दस क्लोज है और ऐसे ही पच्चीस तीस स्टूडियो है हमारे ऑफिस में लगातार है ना तो सर जब पढ़ा रहे थे ना ऐसे तो यहाँ सर बता दो यहाँ नीचे नीचे लेट के सो रखा था जैकेट मुँह में डाल के मुझे थोड़ा जल्दी भी करना पड़ा मुझे लगा सर सोना जाए ठीक है सर चलिए सर ये सर माइक आप यही पहन लीजिए सर बच्चों के सामने आपकी तो बॉडी अच्छी है or quite more <laughs> quite more have you enjoyed this again because uh, i will be taking marathon of uh, sir main uh, smile and survey mujhe aisa lag raha hai mujhe dekhte hi logo ko bhook lag jati hai mere aate hi lunch break ki baat to nahi lagti hai nahi wo dekho dikha raha hai bhook lagi hai sir lunch break de do nahi break Great. will not be na see we are here for the 5 minutes we are discussing with you till then you want to go you can go yes so guys don't worry now within next 1 hour or 1 hour 15 minutes we will complete these two chapters okay then abhinav sir would be once again joining and now i feel abhinav sir will also play like sevag hmm. and finish it fastly full toss full toss full toss so 6 on 6 wali cheez honi chahiye sir devendra singh keh rahe hain question bhi ho theek rehta devendra dekho somna aise 80 70 90 65 70 hours mein hum padhate hai na to अभी यही सब कुछ 
नहीं नहीं तो आपकी वो रिक्वायरमेंट भी तो पूरी हो रही है ना आज सेम डे तो आप आ रहे हो रात में बारह बजे इससे ज्यादा और क्या चाहिए इन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन में से ही पांच से सात आएंगे इसी तरीके के पेपर में ओके सो डोंट वरी फॉर दैट वी विल बी हैविंग सेशन टू नाइट ओनली कहीं भाग के नहीं जा रहे हैं आज रात को ही सेशन होगा बारह बजे तो आप उसमें प्रॉब्लम प्रैक्टिस करिए तो अभी आप जो पढ़ रहे हैं यू विल रिवाइज दैट इन बिटवीन द गैप वट एवर यूर गेटिंग एंड देन वी विल सी द प्रॉब्लम सर ये दो चैप्टर पढ़ा रहे हैं फिर मैं सीएस सेंटर से आऊँ ओके सर ओके सो गाइज नाउ वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग सो थैंक्स अभिनव सर वापस हो रहा हूँ नीचे ओके गाइस सो गाइस दिस चैप्टर जनरली नेम्ड एज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन स्ट्रेसेस एंड आल्सो प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेसेस प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस जनरली मैकेनिकल पीपल्स आर यूजिंग बिकॉज इन मशीन डिजाइन एप्लीकेशन इज देयर फॉर द मैक्सिमम स्ट्रेसेस अदरवाइज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वर्ड यू हैव सीन इन द बुक्स आल्सो सो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेसेस फॉर दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव जस्ट सीन व्हाट आर स्ट्रेसेस स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेन यू हैव डिफाइंड इट एट अ पॉइंट एंड यू हैव सीन दैट इफ वी आर गोइंग टू हैव एनी मेंबर लाइक दिस and that is subjected to various types of loading like axial load bending couple twisting moment because of that different different types of stresses would be coming so when different types of stresses would be coming yes sudarsh welcome so if you will say stress at any point because stresses are shown at a point then my dear you are going to see those stresses and the point in the zoom view you are making it in 3d like this as a cube and 2d like this as a rectangle as in our syllabus only 2d state of systems are generally there stress systems are there so we are talking about a rectangle okay and on that in the first chapter sir i have already told you this is how we show the normal stress this is how we show the shear stress so this is how normal and shear stresses are shown together so this is nothing but a point in its in its zoom view okay so guys now we are starting and for that there are various types of loading possible like uh, you have seen like sir was talking about uni axial loading so if we have this type of loading we will be calling it as uni axial loading and if the loading is of this type you know we are showing it as sigma xx you have seen the stress tensor also so if we are going to have the stresses like this sigma xx sigma xx sigma yy sigma yy so guy what would be the name of this type of loading please tell me what would be the name of this type of loading and this let us see how many of you understand the name of the loadings first one you know that this is uni axial what is the name of others after uni axial yes mayur teju very good so this is bi axial guys very good this is bi axial very good abhishek so what about others very good uh, amir amir i have not made combined yet okay so combined would be this if both normal and shear are coming together then we will be calling it as combined loading very good very good midon manas swapnil so this is the case of pure shear when only shear stresses are acting and this is the name of combined loading when both normal and shear loadings are acting so this is uni axial bi axial combined pure shear avinash very good bhomik very good नरेश बहुत ही बढ़िया सो गाइस दिस इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू गिव द नेम ऑफ दिस लोडिंग एक्चुअली वी हैव स्टडीड इन थ्री डी ऑल्सो बट इन अवर सिलेबस वी नीड टू कंसंट्रेट ऑन टू डी एंड यस उमर यू वर आस्किंग फॉर फ्लिस बीम गेट हैव नेवर आस्ट इन मैकेनिकल फ्रॉम फ्लिस बीम्स सो फ्लिस बीम्स इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग बट इट इज नॉट इन मैकेनिकल सो इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन स्किप इट ओके सो लेट्स मूव फर्दर सो गाइज नाउ वी आर हैविंग अ यूनी एक्सी लोडिंग केस सो वी आर हैविंग ए यूनी एक्सी लोडिंग केस and for this uni axial loading case you know that this would be a section and i want to find out the stress at a plane which is at an angle of theta from this plane so if i would be giving you a member in three dimension like this i am saying this is a three dimension member and you would be saying this is the area and some force p is acting you will say sir stress would be coming out to be p upon a but i am not interested in this plane i am saying that i am interested in a plane which is making an angle theta with the cross sectional area so i am interested in i am interested in the stresses in this plane so my dear you have seen a uh, teju that was uh, that have been there in 2003 or 4 okay so if you will see one kind of that question no, 2001 at that time it was there so it was asked in 2001 before 2004 syllabus was different okay 
so if you still want to go for it you can go for it i also have taught you in the paid courses or the youtube also so if you want to go for that you can definitely go for that okay guys so now let us move further so my dear when we are talking about this you know stress is an internal thing so if it is internal you need to cut the body along this and if you would be cutting the body along this then you know for the equilibrium this was the p force this p can be divided into two component one is normal other is shear so my dear because of normal normal stresses will come because of shear shear stresses will come okay then my dear you can definitely write the normal stress coming would be p by a cos square theta and tau s would be p by 2a sin 2 theta so i am not going into derivation i feel everybody would be remembering these results they are for any any plane which is making an angle of theta anti clockwise with the x face or with the cross section yes deepak singh good evening and my dear you can see normal stress and shear stress both are there and when we are going to see this we are not interested in every stress because you can see p by a cos square theta p by 2a sin 2 theta by both you can say one thing that initially the loading was tensile uniaxial like this so because of normal loading you can see at some oblique plane we are having both normal and shear stresses so you can say that if we are going to find out the stress on an oblique plane the normal force can create shear stresses and shear force can create normal stresses so both the types of creations are possible good evening midun and i would also like to say one thing that if both are possible then my dear both you can say are found to be the function of theta both normal and shear stresses are found to be the function of theta what do you mean by that it means if in this case you are finding out stresses at some plane which is making an angle of theta if you will be changing this angle if you will be changing this angle and you would be making another plane then definitely at different different thetas you would be having infinite possibilities of planes for all those planes we would be having different value of normal and shear stresses so out of those different values of normal and shear stresses we are interested in the maximum value of normal and shear stresses so my dear to find out maximum here we have very simple function so we know that we will be considering three cases case 1 case 2 and case 3 one at 0 degree other at 90 degree other at 45 degree so when you would be considering at 0 degree you know sigma n would become p by a tau s would become 0 okay then similarly my dear at theta 90 degree sigma n is 0 tau s is 0 similarly at 45 you will have p by 2a sigma n and tau s to be p by 2a yes midun deepak teju now i am going to define what is the principal plane so my dear you can see there are some planes on which shear stresses are zero and the planes at which shear stresses are zero are given the name of principal planes and when we are talking about the principal planes at principal plane we have some values of normal stresses sigma n is p by a sigma n is 0 so my dear yes anil yes amir so these stresses these stresses these normal value of stresses are said to be the principal stresses these normal value of stresses are said to be the principal stresses so i feel we understood about principal plane we understood about the principal stresses very good amir so my dear you can see what are principal stresses actually if you see sigma n is p by a cos square theta you know cos square theta can be lying between 0 to 1 minimum value of cos square theta is 0 maximum value of cos square theta is 1 when cos square theta would be varying from 0 to 1 my dear normal stress would be varying from 0 to p by a it means whatever infinite planes we were talking about at all these in infinite plane when you will be finding out the value of normal stress it will vary from 0 to p by a it means this is going to be the minimum normal stress this is going to be the maximum normal stress so principal stresses are nothing but minimum and maximum possible values of normal stresses this is how we will define the principal stresses my dear if you see one principal plane it has zero other is at 90 so we get to know two principal planes will be making an angle 90 degree to each other 
then my dear when we will be talking about the third case here you can see tau s is p by 2a into sin 2 theta the maximum value of sin 2 theta is going to be 1 so maximum value of shear stress is going to be p upon 2a so my dear if that is the case I will say that the plane at which shear stress is going to be maximum this is the plane of maximum shear and if you see like on the plane of maximum normal stress at the plane of minimum normal stress shear stress was zero but at the plane of maximum shear stress normal stress is not zero so what do you mean by that for normal stress to be maximum or minimum shear stress should be zero but for shear stress to be maximum or minimum normal stress can be anything so many students are feeling sir why it is so the reason behind that my dear when you are going to see the relation between normal stress and shear stress you will get to know that d sigma by d theta is equals to minus 2 times of tau what do you mean by that if sigma is y then tau is dy by dx you know when y is maximum when y is minimum dy by dx would be zero but when dy by dx is going to be maximum or minimum for that y can be anything that is why i am saying that you would be getting normal stress to be maximum when shear stress is going to be zero but shear stress can be maximum for that normal stress can be anything we don't have any such type of restriction so amir anil please tell me midun deepak am i going fine everybody is getting it teju yes manas everybody is getting tiksha prince mayur please tell me that wonderful guys wonderful wonderful shashank bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya ajay swapnil bahut hi badhiya so guys uh, with that you can also see one more point very good banoth you can see one more point here theta is 45 degree so you can see if principal planes are at 0 and 90 plane of maximum shear is at 45 it means if you know sigma 1 direction if you know sigma 2 direction then tau max would be lying at 45 to both the principal planes so once you know the direction of any principal plane you can write about others that is a very good question what is normal stress at maximum shear plane actually we have not discussed the mohar circle yet but when you will study the mohar circle you will get to know the normal stress at the plane of maximum shear is always comes out to be sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 or sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 so don't worry as midun asked i have answered otherwise we are going to see this in the mohar circle okay very good very good umar umar nice so guys now we are moving further this was the starting introduction now we can see the same for the combined loading combined loading is said to be the most dangerous case because it is including both normal and shear stresses as both normal and shear are acting it is said to be one of the dangerous case my dear so if we are having this and we want to see that what would be the stress at this plane which is making an angle of theta with the x face you know if this is x axis then any plane perpendicular to it would be said to be x face so you can say this is x face this is y face this is x face this is y face okay so this is how the state of stress is defined now i would be asking you that if i want to find out the stresses on this plane you know at every plane stresses are found to be different so my dear i am assuming that at this plane the normal stress is going to be sigma theta and shear stress is going to be tau theta so i feel everybody have seen this kind of derivation so i would not be going into derivation because you know for gate examination for this revision purpose we do not require these derivation they just use the trigonometry nothing more than that equilibrium plus trigonometry very good mayur so we are going to the direct relations when you will be finding out the sigma theta you would be getting this otherwise student knows that i go the deriv i go for the derivation in the detail session so that is very easy so sigma xx plus yy by 2 plus xx minus yy by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta this would be the expression for sigma theta and similarly when you would be going for the expression of tau theta you would be getting sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 sin 2 theta 
माइनस टाउ एक्स वाई कोस टू थीटा सो गाइज आई एम राइटिंग बोथ द रिलेशन फॉर यू ओके सिग्मा थीटा वॉज ओके सिग्मा थीटा इज इक्वल टू दिस सिग्मा एक्स एक्स प्लस सिग्मा वाई वाई बाई टू प्लस सिग्मा एक्स एक्स माइनस वाई वाई बाई टू कोस टू थीटा प्लस टाउ एक्स वाई साइन टू थीटा वंस यू आर गोइंग टू डिफरेंशिएट इट डी सिग्मा थीटा बाई डी ऑफ थीटा देन वॉट यू वुड बी गेटिंग यू नो दिस टर्म डू नॉट इंक्लूड थीटा डिफरेंशिएशन ऑफ दिस विल बी जीरो this include cos to theta so you can differentiate this is constant it would be going like this sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 okay otherwise this is already done zero to save your time i have kept these equation on the slide otherwise you know i never write this i always do it by my pen so sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 into sin to theta because integration of cos to theta would be sorry differentiation of cos to theta would be minus 2 sin to theta Similarly, tau x y sin to theta would be tau x y cos to theta into two. Okay, so here also into two would come. Here also into two would come, and that two only we are putting it in the denominator. So finally, you would be getting d sigma theta by d theta is minus two times of tau theta. This is the same relation which I have just written here when I was teaching you for uniaxial loading. this is the relation because of which we are getting principal stresses for that shear is zero but for maximum shear normal stress can be anything i feel everybody is getting it so guys these are the results you need to remember for the examination point of view okay these are sigma theta and tau theta now my dear as you know sigma theta and tau theta both sigma theta tau theta are found to be the function of theta so when the theta will change plane will change the value of stresses will change we have okay once i am showing you the relation actually when you would be differentiating the sigma theta with respect to theta then after differentiation you would be getting this term which is equals to minus tau theta so d sigma theta by d2 theta is minus tau theta so you can write the relation as d sigma theta by d theta is minus 2 times of tau theta this is the relation between normal and shear in gate and esc examination you may get the question from this relation as well till now it have not been asked okay so be ready for this type of thing so in sfd bmd i went quickly because already in the first chapter we have taken too much time here also i am going quickly so guys don't mind it otherwise i could go into all the cases of sfd bmd in a very nice manner but as it is revision marathon so to save your time i was somewhere fast there so because i need to show you what are the things we are going to use it otherwise it would be going on till now as you know they are big topics okay so guys you know sigma theta and tau theta are the function of theta so when theta will change sigma theta and tau theta values will also change so it means at different different planes we have different values of sigma theta and tau theta so at different plane different values you would have so infinite plane we have infinite number of values so we are not at all interested in those infinite values for designing purpose we are interested in the maximum values so my dear we wanted to maximize the normal stress as well as the shear stress so you know where normal stress is going to be maximum such planes are said to be principal planes and where shear stresses are maximum such planes are said to be plane of maximum shear so principal planes are those that which normal stresses are maximum and also you can add shear stresses are zero so guys using these definition we will find out the maximum normal and maximum shear stresses you would be getting this pdf where these relations are already highlighted so don't worry about that guys so my dear now we would be having uh, some cases like we have derived the relation of sigma theta tau theta and everything for combined loading there you have written sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta so my question to you guys if the loading is bi axial it means when the tau xy is going to be zero then my dear you tell me then my dear you tell me whether i can use this equation or i need to derive it again 
बिकॉज आई ऑलरेडी हैव द रिलेशन आई ऑलरेडी हैव द इक्वेशन फॉर कंबाइंड लोडिंग आई वॉन्ट टू यूज इट फॉर बाई एक्सी लोडिंग वट आई नीड टू डू वट आई नीड टू डू गाइस येस टेल मी Which equation are used to numerical mostly combined loading? Bobic for that we need to remember principal stresses. Okay, so that I am coming on to, but those equations are derived using this. That's why first of all I am telling this. Very good. So we can use this equation by putting tau x y to be zero. So you would be getting sigma theta to be sigma x x plus sigma y y by two. Uh, I would also like to add one thing. Yes. Uh, the question asked is from the bhomik if you remember this equation for sigma theta this is valid for all that cases uni axial by axial pure shear combined so that is the beauty of this equation so you can write this plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 cos 2 theta so this would be the equation for sigma theta for by axial loading if you want to write down tau theta you would write sigma xx Sigma x x minus sigma y y by two into sine two theta minus tau x y cos two theta. So tau x y is zero for this. So this is the equation for tau theta. Okay. So you just need to put tau theta to be zero. Nay nay, Umar, they are not principal stresses. They are the stresses. Okay. I am telling you about stress at any plane. This I am telling you. Principal stress is what you are saying is correct, but I am writing the expression for sigma theta and tau theta. Till now we have not uh, defined for combined loading how we find out the principal stresses. So that also I will tell you. Okay. So now let us see if you want to find out the principal stresses. Bhomik, now I am coming to your answer, sir. Here theta will be ninety na. <coughs> yes, Teju, just wait for that. I am coming on to that point. This was just the formula I have written. now we will find location of principal plane so you tell me what was the first definition of principal plane when i have defined the principal plane what was the first definition principal plane is the one on which what is zero yes umar teju bhomik midun ajay abhishek manas very good very good tell me Where shear stress is going to be zero, so the plane for which shear stress is zero, that is said to be principal plane. Okay, Abhishek. Uh, actually, till now we have not used anything. We have just assumed this that this is tension, this is tension, and this shear is considered to be positive. That already you know. so this is the positive things we are using this is the convention okay so till now there is no convention yes we have taken one thing that theta should be anti clockwise from the x phase if this theta is not anti clockwise then this equation is not valid if theta is clockwise from x phase then you would be replacing theta with minus theta okay that is the change you need to do i feel everybody understand that let us move to the main mudda so as i said my dear principal plane would be defined as a plane for which shear stress is zero and you know tau theta is given as sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau xy cos 2 theta so this relation is valid if your plane is making theta anti clockwise from the x phase means your plane is of this type making theta anti clockwise from x phase very good ashish so first definition is shear stress will be zero so when you would be equating it to zero you would be getting tangent to theta is equals to tau xy divided by sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 this you would be getting the location of the principal plane why the heading is location of principal plane because using this equation you can find out the value of theta p so that would be telling you that at what angle from the x phase the principal plane will be lying so this is why we have derived this relation very good ashish so my dear the second definition of principal plane is what 
द सेकेंड डेफिनेशन इज द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस इज द नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस इज आईदर मैक्सिमम और मिनिमम सो आई वुड से सिग्मा थीटा वुड बी आईदर मैक्सिमम और मिनिमम फॉर मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ सिग्मा यू कैन राइट डी सिग्मा थीटा बाय डी थीटा टू बी जीरो Now you can once again differentiate sigma theta with theta equated to zero. You will get the same relation. But why we are getting the same relation? Because d sigma theta by d theta is minus two tau theta. So whether we put d sigma theta by d theta to be zero or tau theta to be zero, answer remains the same. Yes, Umar, Ashish, Bhomik, Abhishek, Junaid, Vansh, Ajay, Swapnil. Tiksha, please tell me, are you getting it or not? Then we are moving further. Then we are moving further. Very good, Umar. बहुत ही बढ़िया. So shall we move on? Great, great, great. Very good, guys. बहुत ही बढ़िया. Very good, guys. बहुत ही बढ़िया. So guys, this was the first condition. And when you would be applying, when you would be applying that condition, then you you can find out the principal stresses also. so what would be sigma principal 1 and principal 2 my dear to find out these value you need to put theta is equals to theta p because theta is equals to theta p will be giving us the principal plane and at principal plane normal stress is going to be either maximum or minimum so when you would be putting theta is equals to theta p you would be getting two values because there would be two angles where you will get this situation and that also i would like to tell you you know this is the tangent graph i feel everybody understand tangent the graph for tangent is going like this where this is pi by 2 this is minus pi by 2 tangent have a time period of pi it repeat itself after pi so the second curve would be coming like this so you know if tangent Is going to be forty-five degree and tangent theta is one at this point. It would be same at this point also. So whatever be the value of tangent theta at forty-five degree, the same will be repeated after one eighty degree. So my dear, if we get one value as twenty-two one by two, second value would be coming out. As you know, this is tangent two theta p. So when you will find out two theta p, if one value is going to be theta one, other value will be theta one plus one eighty degree. Dividing by two, you will get if one value is twenty-two by half, second value is going to be this plus ninety. So one, one, two, one by two. Why I am saying this? Because my dear, you can see tangent is repeating itself after one eighty degree. So two theta is repeating itself after one eighty degree. Theta would be repeating it after ninety degree. You already have seen principal stresses, principal planes are making an angle of ninety degree with each other. So when you would be putting this, you would be getting the values. First value you would be getting as sigma x x plus sigma y y by two plus square root of sigma x x minus sigma y y by two ka square plus tau x y ka whole square. This is said to be the maximum value of principal stress, maximum value of normal stress. Then you can also find out sigma two. That would be sigma x x plus sigma y y. Yes, Devendra Singh, are you getting it or not? Reshma, are you getting it or not? So this would be the value of minimum normal stress. Okay. So these maximum and minimum value of stresses are said to be the principal stresses. Very good, S K. So these are the principal stresses. so i am not going into derivation directly giving you result because it is revision marathon and even when you are revising you need not to go into these derivation they are useless for gate okay so this is how we can find out the principal stress is very good shrut so now we are talking about okay malesh is also there very good malesh so now we are talking about the plane of maximum shear if you want to find out the plane of maximum shear For that you can write d of tau theta upon d theta to be equal to zero, and when you will do this, you would be getting tangent to theta s to be equals to it is sigma x x minus sigma y y by two minus sign would be coming outside divided by tau x y. This would be the value of plane of maximum shear location. 
So then my dear, if you would be putting this value into tau theta, you would be getting the relation to be plus minus square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka whole square. This is said to be the maximum value of shear stress. Okay, Minhas. So, this is going to be the maximum value of shear stress. So, my dear, if you see, there is a relation between principal plane and plane of maximum shear. We have already seen. If you would multiply tangent 2 theta p into tangent 2 theta s, you would be getting minus 1. You must have studied in 11th class, 9th class, 10th class. The product of m1, m2 if coming out to be minus 1, it means the curve which are denoted by m1 and the curves which are denoted by m2 are perpendicular to each other. It means the angle between the planes denoted by 2 theta p and angle between the planes denoted by 2 theta s that is equal to 90 degree. So, 2 theta p minus 2 theta s is 90. So, you can write theta p minus theta s to be equal to 45 degree. It means principal plane and plane of maximum shear are at an angle of 45 degree to each other. Ye sab mein bata chuka hu. This is the second time I am doing it. Once we have seen for uniaxial loading, now I am repeating it for combined loading just for your convenience. So, that you do not feel it like we are not revi revising all the things. So, we are revising all the things, okay. So, my dear, we got the value of tau max, this is the maximum shear stress. There is a relation between principal stresses and play and maximum shear stress also. You have seen sigma 1 to be sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka whole square. Then you know sigma 2 is given as sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 minus square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka whole square. This you have derived it as sigma 1 and 2 and you have written tau max is equals to plus minus. In this chapter majorly formulas are there. I can understand that plus tau xy ka whole square. So, my dear, if you try to derive the relation between them, if you will do sigma 1 minus sigma 2, if you will subtract this sigma 2 from sigma 1, you would be getting 2 times of tau max. So, from here we are getting a wonderful relations, wonderful relation that tau max can also be written as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2. Is it clear guys? And this is said to be in plane maximum shear stress. Why it is said to be in plane maximum shear? Because here tau max is found to be in the plane of sigma 1 and sigma 2. Is it clear for everyone? Please tell me that. We have already seen wonderful Tiksha, that's great. Very good. Swapnil, Bahati Badia, Bahati Badia, MVS Bahati Badia, Anbu Mano Bahati Badia, Umar, very good. So, guys, now. We have also seen when we were taking a plane, like when we have seen this as a point and we were taking this as plane. So, here it was sigma theta, here it was tau theta. So, you know if this is sigma theta, this is tau theta. The angle between sigma theta and tau theta is 90 degree. You can also find out the resultant stress from here. So, the resultant stress when you will be finding out, it would be making an angle of phi with the sigma theta. And this angle is said to be the angle of obliquity. This angle of obliquity is very important for civil peoples because it is also used in geotech. Yes or no? Very good, Banot, Vamshi. Thanks for that. Wonderful, guys. Very good, Malesh. So, this is said to be angle of obliquity. If you want to find out resultant, it can be written as sigma theta ka square plus tau theta ka square. And you can also make the parallelogram to define the tangent phi. You can write tangent phi is tau theta upon sigma theta. Is it clear for everyone? Minhas, MVS, bahut hi badiya guys. I am really happy to see your response. 
सो वी आर स्टार्टेड वी हैव स्टार्टेड एट टेन ए एम फ्रॉम दैट यू गाइज आर वेरी मच एनर्जेटिक एंड रियली स्टडिंग हार्ड एंड डेफिनेटली दिस विल गिव यू द रिजल्ट विच यू आर लुकिंग फॉर वेटिंग फॉर वेरी गुड yes sk okay do you want me to write it again do you want me to write it again tangent phi great 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 surendra bahut hi badhiya swapnil very good so dear this is tangent phi tangent 2 theta was different this is tangent phi which is tau theta by sigma theta okay this is the tangent phi formula very good guys so we are moving further now we have seen this now we will see some special cases now we will see some special cases the very first case is for biaxial state of stress here we would be talking about the principal stresses so my dear if you see this state of stress this is like this this is the point and here they have mentioned sigma xx there they have mentioned sigma xx there they have mentioned sigma yy there they have mentioned sigma yy they said sigma xx is sigma sigma yy is sigma by 2 this kind of state of stress is found to be in the thin cylinder so i am telling you application together so that you can get benefit there as well this type of state of stress is coming in the thin cylinders so my dear if you see this sigma xx sigma yy the values are given to us so there are two ways one is the normal way you tell me what is the definition of principal plane what is the definition of principal plane yes umar what is the definition of principal plane yes sk banoth mvs bhomik tiksha swapnil surendra midun anbo priyam what is the definition of principal plane you are saying principal plane is the plane with zero shear the plane with zero zero shear so you tell me can you see any shear stress on this plane can you see any shear stress on this plane can you see any shear stress on this plane on this plane only one normal stress is acting that is sigma xx is equals to sigma so if that is the case i can say this is the principal plane one and you know two principal planes are at an angle of 90 degree to each other two principal planes are at an angle of 90 degree to each other so when you will go 90 degree this will be the second principal plane so you can say that here principal planes are nothing but x and y faces and you know on x face the normal stress value is sigma so that is principal plane 1 principal stress 1 and this sigma by 2 is principal stress 2 so we get to know sigma 1 is sigma sigma 2 is sigma by 2 you can also find out tau max as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 you would be getting it to be sigma by 4 you can also find out if they are 90 degree then plane of maximum shear is 45 degree to both so this is going to be the plane of maximum shear such planes are said to be the diagonal planes so you can say that you can say that this is principal plane this is principal plane this is plane of maximum shear this is how we can define it i feel everybody is getting it nicely what is principal plane what is plane of maximum shear is it clear for everyone or not please tell me that the second way to do that is using the relation of tangent to theta you know that tangent to theta where you have defined it like tau xy divided by sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 you know shear stress is zero so 2 theta is going to be zero it means theta is going to be zero so here also you can find out using this formula that this plane is going to be the principal plane after that 90 degree would be the principal plane you can go by the formula you can go by the direct visualization also both the way we can do it guys just like and share the session guys till a lot more topics are coming so after principal stress we would be having the discussion on torsion also and i'm slightly going fastly so that we can complete it this is the case number 2 and this type of state of stress we would be getting in the thin sphere so guys to speed up can we do one thing i would be asking you for this case can you tell me what is different in this case 
what is different in this case? You know that here sigma xx is equals to sigma yy is equals to sigma and tau xy is equals to 0. So, here if you would be defining the sigma theta value which is sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 into cos 2 theta you know that tau xy is already 0 so tau xy sin 2 theta is becoming useless. So, you will say this term is 0 and sigma minus sigma this term is also 0. You would be getting sigma theta as sigma plus sigma by 2 that is equals to sigma. It is not at all a function of theta. It means normal stress is going to be same at all the planes. Wonderful, wonderful Umar. Bahut badiya bhomik, bahut badiya SK. Very good. Similarly, if you are going to apply very good, very good, very good Amir. If you will write for tau theta. So, Amir, now the speed is fine or not? For your request, I have just increased the speed to anyone. Okay. So, this is sin 2 theta minus tau xy cos 2 theta. So, my dear tau xy is 0 and sigma xx sigma yy are equal. This is also 0. Not at all a function of theta. It means shear stress is 0 at all the planes. Very good, Swapnil. It means shear stress is 0 at all the planes. At this plane, shear stress 0. 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 At any plane, if shear stress is 0, what is the name of such planes? The planes for which shear stress is 0, what is the name of such planes? Such planes are said to be the principal planes. Such planes are said to be the principal planes. And my dear, at principal planes, the normal stress is said to be the principal stress. So, here principal stress is sigma and tau maximum is going to be 0. So, here at every plane, shear is going to be 0. So, there is no plane which is having the shear stress. This is the exceptional Great Amir, this is the exceptional case where plane of maximum shear will not exist. Very good Shreyas, Bahadhi Badiya. So, in the same way in fluid mechanics you study hydrostatic state of stress. For this case also we will say every plane is the principal plane and plane of maximum shear will not exist. This is a condition when for a school every teacher is principal. Okay. This type of state of stress now you can see sigma tensile and sigma compressive. For this case, you can see this and this. Are bhai, seedha bata dena ab to. Yes, everybody is getting or not. You can see at this plane there is no shear. At this plane there is no shear. Yes or no? So guys, these are the principal plane. Principal planes are at 90 degree. Plane of maximum shear are at 45 degree. So, my dear, once again, I will say X and Y faces are principal planes and diagonal planes are planes of maximum shear. Diagonal planes are plane of maximum shear. Very good, Shubham. So, this is how we are going to define the principal planes and plane of maximum shear. Very good, Avinash. <laughs> Very good, Anil. So, guys, here you can say sigma 1 is plus sigma, sigma 2 is minus sigma and tau max you can find out as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So, it would be sigma minus of minus sigma by 2. The answer would be sigma. I feel these calculations you are getting it. Yes, Banot stress can be negative. Negative stress means compressive. Positive stress means tensile. Okay, stress can be negative. Next case is the pure shear. If you are talking about this case, when pure shear is acting, great, great, great. When pure shear is acting, then my dear, for this case, you know, tangent to theta p. You write it as tau xy divided by sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2. Sigma xx is 0 for this case. Sigma yy is 0 for this case. So, you would be having tau xy divided by divided by 0. So, tangent 2 theta p 0 means 2 theta p is going to be 90 degree. Means principal plane would be at 45 degree. 
so it means from x phase i will go 45 degree this will give me the principal plane 1 two principal planes are at an angle of 90 degree this is the principal plane 2 and you know principal planes are making 45 degree with the plane of maximum shear so 45 degree is plane of maximum shear 45 degree is plane of maximum shear so here we can say x and y face would be plane of maximum shear and diagonal planes are principal plane so this is the analytical method we have seen guys i feel everybody is getting it swapnil tiksha manas shubham uh, minhas uh, anbu banoth avinash anil bahut badhiya so guys now we are moving further and we have seen the special cases now the next topic is mohar circle for mohar circle first of all we will see how the circle is plotted i am not going into that detail how mohar get to know it would be a circle because that derivation is of no use here okay very good very good ajay uh, yes mayur are you there or not are you getting it or not so guys when we are talking about the mohar circle it is the graphical method for the same whatever we have seen right now with the formulas with the derivation the same can also be done with the graphical method and that graphical method is said to be the mohar circle where we can see all these detail of principal stresses maximum shear stress with the help of a circle so my dear we will see how mohar circle is plotted but first of all we need to see the sign convention for that to plot mohar circle you need to consider a special coordinate system in this coordinate system on x axis positive we will be having normal tensile stress on x axis negative we will be having normal compressive stress on y axis we would be having shear stress clockwise here we will be having shear stress anti clockwise okay here convention for shear stress is opposite to that of equation okay don't worry uh, i feel here it is same only whatever i have shown you in the previous one you were talking about i feel so this is correct only okay very good very good junaid so this is the coordinate system coordinate system selected by mohar coordinate system selected by mohar okay guys so now we are moving further with this coordinate system how mohar circle will be plotted so if you see that then what was what was the procedure for the same first point was you would be writing the state of stress on x phase and y phase so you can see on x phase this is said to be x phase which is perpendicular to x axis on x phase we have normal stress to be sigma xx because it is tensile shear stress you can see is going now this this is the shear stress it is going anti clockwise so mohar's coordinate system says anti clockwise would be negative so here you would be writing minus tau xy you need to work with the mohar coordinate system for mohar circle he said i would be taking anti clockwise to be negative clockwise to be positive wonderful guys so now if you would be defining now if you would be defining the state of stress on the y phase so the state of stress on the y phase if you will see you can see the point b and here normal stress is sigma yy and shear stress is clockwise tau xy so this is clockwise tau it is said to be tau yx you know that so the first step is write down the state of stress on the mohar coordinate system at x phase and y phase after writing the state of stress on x and y phase you would be plotting these point on the coordinate system so you can see one point is sigma xx minus tau xy other is sigma yy plus tau xy so when you would be plotting when you would be plotting how you would plot i am showing you this is the coordinate system so we have some value sigma xx here and this would be the point which is sigma okay this would be the point which is sigma xx minus tau xy okay and we have plotted the state of stress on x phase denoted with the point a 
then my dear you know the second point here like if this was sigma xx this is sigma yy so here you would be having the second point and that point is sigma yy tau yx because tau xy and tau yx are same so we got both the points one point is denoted by a other is denoted by b then my dear mohar said you would be joining these two take ab as diameter and plot a circle that circle is said to be the mohar circle so this is the way to plot mohar circle which is the easiest one you have written the state of stress on x phase written the state of stress on y phase and after that you are just plotting these points you are joining them and then you are plotting the circle and that wonderful circle is the mohar circle so guys just like and share the session i feel i can understand you guys are tired up bus hum complete kar rahe hain bahut jaldi please tell me are you getting these things or not then we will move further yes let me share the session once again because i feel many people are tired so much okay so unko ek bar yaad dila dete hain ki session abhi chal raha hai so guys please tell me are you getting it or not then we will move further yes wonderful guys wonderful wonderful so we are moving further guys now we are moving further we are moving further very good banoth <laughs> yes thanks dear so let's move further guys so this is how the mohar circle will be plotted now quickly i will be telling you what is the thing mohar circle is telling us thanks guys akash bhomik junaid so let us see what mohar circle is telling us so guys when we are going to plot the mohar circle you know this is the center of mohar circle if you want to write the coordinate for center of mohar circle you already know this distance is sigma x you already know this distance is sigma y so my dear when you would be finding out the coordinate for sigma star yes midun are you there or not you were asking this question so if you want to find out the sigma star this value is sigma xx minus sigma yy this value is sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 so sigma star would be sigma yy plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 putting this you would be getting sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 so this is the value of sigma star so we can write down the coordinate of center of mohar circle to be sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 comma 0 so now you can understand what would be the coordinate of center of mohar circle if you want to write down the expression for the radius of mohar circle you can apply the pythagoras between these two things so you can write this radius ka square as sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka whole square so my dear if that is the case radius can be written as square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka square this is how we can write the radius of the mohar circle very good sk nicely you have written so we got the radius also and you know this is nothing but the maximum value of shear stress for maximum value of shear stress so radius of mohar circle is given by maximum shear stress or maximum shear stress is given by the radius of mohar circle this question is coming every year in gate examination they will give you the state of stress and they would be asking you about radius of mohar circle okay guys so uh, can we discuss uh, an interview question many times i have shared this question with you guys that this question was asked from me in one of the interview there they have asked actually to find out the principal stresses there are three methods first method is the analytical method first method is the analytical method actually the question was asked that beta do you know about principal stresses i answered yes sir i know about principal stresses and i defined the principal stress then when i started defining examiner stopped me beta ruko this is not my question then he said beta what are the three do you know there are three methods to find out principal stresses i said yes sir there are three methods so i was not knowing the third one but i still said yes and because we were having the habit of viva because in viva if you know eight assumption total are 10 you are sure that you are going to get 80% so i also thought i know two methods i will get 67% so i said yes sir the first method is analytical they said stop 
दे हैव रिटर्न द फर्स्ट मैथड इज एनालिटिकल सेकेंड मैथड इज द मोहर सर्कल विच वी आर स्टडिंग राइट नाउ ओके एनालिटिकल वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड दैट इज द फॉर्मूला मैथड वॉट इज द थर्ड वन सो मानस मलेश सम स्टूडेंट्स आर राइटिंग समथिंग समथिंग इन कमेंट्स सो दे सेड वॉट इज द थर्ड मैथड एंड आई वॉज really shocked at that time because at that time such so much sources were not there in the books third method is not written from you also every student may not be knowing the third method and the third method is said to be the eigen value method you can see uh, for the first time when i have given this i was shocked because i was not knowing about the meaning of eigen method we know how what are eigen values how to find out we know that but physical meaning we do not know or and if we do not know that we cannot answer such type of questions so when i get this type of thing in the in the interview after that i also started taking these kind of things on youtube also you can see in 2015 back you would be finding my video where firstly i have discussed about this thing yes great sopni you remember that so eigen value method is nothing but like you have studied the stress tensor one was sigma xx then it was tau xy it was tau xz it was tau yx it was sigma yy it was tau yz it was tau zx it was tau zy it was sigma zz this is said to be cauchy stress tensor this is said to be cauchy stress tensor then my dear for this cauchy stress tensor there are three eigen values so the three eigen values of the cauchy stress tensor are three principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 and three eigen vectors are nothing but the principal planes so this is how principal planes principal stresses can also be calculated with this matrix many of the students would be taking it lightly but just imagine if this matrix is given to you and they are asking you principal stresses and you are trying for analytical in mohar you will never be able to solve it less than 10 15 minutes if you don't know this eigen value concept my dear so this is the real beauty of strength of material this is the application of mathematics how we can use it so if you know what do you understand by eigen value what do you understand by eigen vector it is easy to answer otherwise you cannot okay guys so this is marathon session so i am avoiding these kind of discussions because otherwise <laughs> the syllabus would not be completed in one day so otherwise i have so much these kind of things to tell you like abhinav sir also have taken some things which you have never seen or never listen so likewise we have a number of but the point is the time okay so let us move further guys so we have seen one more thing that this point on the mohar circle this point on the mohar circle any point on the mohar circle is denoted by sigma theta tau theta which is showing the state of stress at some plane and the radius joining that point would be showing that plane so we have seen that when we were plotted mohar circle this a point denote the state of stress that is sigma xx minus tau xy this is for x phase this point is showing the state of stress for y phase which is nothing but sigma yy tau xy you can see the angle between these two is 180 degree the angle between these two is 180 degree yes sk so the angle between them is 180 degree but in reality when you see x phase and y phase the angle between them is 90 degree you can see this angle is 90 degree but here it is shown by 180 degree it means mohar circle doubles the angle mohar circle make theta as 2 theta like if you want to show a plane which is making theta with x phase the same plane here would be shown at an angle of 2 theta with the x phase so mohar circle just double the angle so in reality if if it is showing 180 real angle is 90 then my dear we will see what is principal stresses you know principal stresses are the maximum value of normal and minimum value of normal where shear is zero shear means y axis y is zero on x axis so my dear if you see this mohar circle this mohar circle is cutting on x axis at these two points wherever mohar circle cuts the x axis it means their y is zero shear is zero where shear is zero 
my dear normal stress would be either maximum or minimum so this will show you the maximum principal stress this will show you the minimum principal stress you can see the angle between them is coming 180 degree in mohar circle so the real angle would be what real angle would be 90 degree because mohar circle shows theta to be 2 theta if you want to find out this sigma 1 and sigma 2 it is very easy you already know this value to be sigma star so my dear you can write sigma 1 as sigma star plus radius and sigma 2 as sigma star minus radius you will get the same formulas which we have derived by the analytical method Array by if you would be adding radius to sigma star you will get maximum if you will subtract radius you will get sigma 2 this is the beauty of Mohar circle my dear yes moving further guys moving further moving further we have seen the principal stresses you can see if this is sigma 1 this is sigma 2 then dia of Mohar circle is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 and you can write radius of Mohar circle as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 this is how we will be writing the radius okay so my dear this is diameter and radius in terms of principal stresses so similarly if this is sigma 1 this is sigma 2 diameter is sigma 1 minus 2 and this is radius is sigma 1 minus 2 by 2 so we can also write sigma star as sigma 2 plus the radius radius is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 you would be getting sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 so we got one more golden point that when we are writing the sigma star sigma star can be written as sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 it can also be written as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 from this wonderful thing my dear what you can write you can write sigma xx plus sigma yy is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 it means the summation of normal stresses the summation of normal stresses at two planes which are lying at 90 degree to each other is always a constant so sigma xx plus yy is equal to 1 plus 2 is equal to theta plus theta plus 90 so at any two planes which are lying at 90 degree to each other the summation of principal stresses is going to be constant so this is the beauty you can use it in the questions so my dear next we will talk about the plane of maximum shear you know that if i would be if i would be plotting some verticals if i would plot the vertical lines one by one in the mohar circle initially the height increases then the height decreases the maximum height will be with this with this vertical line which is coming from center and this will denote the maximum value of shear stress so this plane is said to be the plane of maximum shear and if you see this plane of maximum shear at this the point will be represented as sigma star comma tau max so my dear now you get to know the plane of maximum shear the plane of maximum shear you can get only by making a vertical radius from the center so the normal stress at plane of maximum shear is always equals to the coordinate of center of Mohar circle so if you need to write what would be the value of normal stress at plane of maximum shear because at plane of normal stress shear stress is zero but at plane of maximum shear normal stress can be anything and that anything is sigma star and sigma star can be written as xx plus yy by 2 or 1 plus 2 by 2 so this is how we can find out the maximum shear stresses or plane of maximum shear wonderful guys wonderful very good abhishek bahut hi badiya then my dear we are talking about the plane of pure shear we have seen principal planes we have seen plane of maximum shear we are still left with one new type of plane that is plane of pure shear my dear as the name suggests plane of pure shear on a plane you can have either normal or shear in the milk you can have either milk or water when you will call that milk to be pure milk can you tell me that when you will call that milk to be pure milk 
when water is not there obviously when water is not there so my dear similarly plane of pure shear are the plane for which sigma is 0 and tau is non zero means x is zero y is non zero this condition is available with the y axis except origin y axis except origin y axis except origin so my dear if we are going to plot a mohar circle like this a mohar circle like this which is going to cut y axis at two points and my dear this is going to be the center then this plane and this plane represent the state of pure shear because here shear stress is non zero and normal stress is zero so my dear if you want to find out the value of this shear stress at the plane of pure shear it can come in exam directly my dear this value i am denoting it y with tau star you know this is the radius of mohar circle and this is nothing but the center coordinate everything is measured from origin only so you can write here by pythagoras tau square is r square minus sigma star ka square everybody knows radius and sigma star you can find out the value of shear stress at the plane of pure shear this is a new type of question which you can get no dear in this center is not at origin for that only one condition is there if you want the plane of pure shear to exist then principal stresses should be of opposite nature means if one principal stress is tensile then other principal stress should be compressive yes manas teju junaid abhishek mvs sk ajay tiksha are you getting it or not please tell me that so if someone ask you what is the condition for plane of pure shear to exist what you will say sir plane of pure shear will exist if principal stresses are of opposite nature one principal stress is tensile other principal stress is compressive this is the condition for that wonderful guys wonderful so guys now i am coming on to a wonderful case that is the case when plane of pure shear and plane of maximum shear are coinciding with each other very good banoth so my dear there is a special condition when the mohar circle is plotted like this that the center of mohar circle and origin remain the same if the center of mohar circle origin becomes the same then you know the radius from the center is the plane of maximum shear and the plane which cuts the mohar circle where it cuts the y axis is the plane of pure shear so this condition plane of pure shear and plane of maximum shear coincides you can write for this sigma star is becoming zero so tau star which was the shear stress at plane of pure shear you will be writing r square minus sigma star ka square it would be coming out to be radius alone so this time the shear stress at the plane of pure shear and maximum shear stress they are going to be same and this is the condition for pure torsion which we are going to study wonderful guys very good swapnil shrut bahut hi shandar tiksha swapnil mvs sk bahut shandar so this is how mohar circles point have been discussed now so this is the condition to get plane of pure shear here plane of pure shear does not exist does not exist okay so plane of pure shear will exist when principal stresses are of opposite nature and here they will coincide so what is the point here here principal plane i am showing three types of plane plane of maximum shear and plane of pure shear so for the first case plane of pure shear will not exist they will exist they will exist for the second case all the three will exist for the third case all the three will exist and first and third are going to be coincide everybody got it all three mohar circle very good anil bhomik wonderful tiksha here sigma 1 is not sigma 2 actually sigma 1 is equals to minus sigma 2 okay this and this they are equal in magnitude not in direction so if one is plus sigma other is minus sigma very good malesh bahut shandar 
so guys we are completing it now we are going to see the last point if you want to write the state of stress at any point you can write sigma theta tau theta so this distance is sigma theta this distance is tau theta so you know the angle between resultant and sigma theta is phi that is angle of obliquity and my dear this is the resultant stress resultant stress can be written as square root of sigma theta square tau theta square so guys you also know the phi would be maximum for this case but that phi maximum kind of thing would be more uh, useful to you guys in geotech and all not in strength of material much okay so i feel everybody is getting this beauty and this is how the mohar circle can be explained sir class ke baad pdf jaldi bhej dijiyega taki bilkul class khatam hote hi aa jayegi pdf amir don't worry koi delay nahi hoga that is my promise to you so guys now uh, can you make mohar circle for any case i am giving you one question now okay i am giving you one question now for this case you need to tell which of the mohar circle is correct okay for this case you need to tell which of the mohar circle is correct option a b c and d and this question would be counted for that cash price okay this question would be counted for the cash price thoda sa ruk jao amir option to dene do so first mohar circle is this second mohar circle is this third mohar circle is this fourth mohar circle is this okay just wait wonderful so which one is correct look at the values sigma and sigma by 2 this is sigma tensile this is sigma by 2 compressive soch samajh kar answer kariye soch samajh kar answer kariye okay and your first attempt would be <laughs> would would be taken care of okay second attempt would not be taken care of pehli bar agar kisi ne galat diya to galat hi count hoga wo nazim teju abhishek divakar sachin bahut badhiya bahut hi shandar guys ali nazim dinesh so guys the answer for this is going to be d the answer would be d because this is tensile this is compressive so if you are going to make this you can see on x phase the stress is sigma comma 0 on y phase minus sigma by 2 comma 0 so you know you will be joining them take abs diameter and plot the mohar circle answer is d for this answer is d for this okay tell me do you want one more question of this type do you want one more question of this type Do you want one more question of this type? Please tell me. Yes, Shreyas. Great, great, great. Yes, Nazim, both are acting. That's fine, but one is tensile, other is compressive. Very good, Vijay. बहुत शानदार. तो चलिए एक और question ले लेते हैं हम लोग. We will take one more question for this. okay here i will take that question here i will take that question next question is the state of stress is like this the state of stress is like this sigma sigma the cases for mohar circle are one is this point option number a option number b option number c ऑप्शन नंबर डी इस बार देखते हैं कितने लोग सही आंसर करते हैं मानस फिर जल्दी कर दी फिर जल्दी कर दी ओके बहुत बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया वेरी गुड चंद्रा बुलेशु सो गाइस द आंसर फॉर दिस विल बी स्वप्निल बहुत बढ़िया तीक्षा आशीष बैनोथ 
नजीम ओके नमस्कार भाई मनदीप सो द आंसर फॉर दिस विल बी सी अरे भाई इफ यू सी द एक्स फेस इफ यू सी द एक्स फेस Here you have normal stress sigma shear stress zero. On y face, normal stress zero, shear stress zero. So when you will make the Mohr coordinate system, this is going to be point A. This is going to be point B. Join AB, take AB's diameter, make a circle. This is the Mohr circle. And the answer for this is going to be C. Very good. Gyanendra, very good. Swapnil, very good. अब इसको देखते हुए मुझे लग रहा है एक और क्वेश्चन ले लेना चाहिए ओके आई विल टेक वन मोर क्वेश्चन आफ्टर फाइव मिनट्स जस्ट वी विल कंप्लीट दिस टॉपिक ओके सो माय डियर नेक्स्ट इज इन प्लेन एंड एब्सोल्यूट मैक्सिमम शियर स्ट्रेस यू नो देयर कैन बी थ्री प्रिंसिपल प्लेन वन प्रिंसिपल प्लेन इज सिग्मा वन अदर प्रिंसिपल प्लेन इज सिग्मा टू अदर प्रिंसिपल प्लेन इज सिग्मा थ्री यू नो दैट मैक्सिमम शेयर यू कैन गेट एट फोर्टी डिग्री टू द प्रिंसिपल प्लेन सो वन मैक्सिमम शेयर वुड बी कमिंग इन द प्लेन ऑफ वन टू ओके अदर मैक्सिमम शेयर वुड बी कमिंग इन द प्लेन ऑफ टू थ्री ओके एंड अदर मैक्सिमम शेयर वुड बी कमिंग इन द प्लेन ऑफ वन थ्री यस उमर आर यू देयर और नॉट तो देर आर थ्री टाउ मैक्सिमम सो माई डियर यस जुनेद सो देर आर थ्री मैक्सिमम शेयर यू कैन सी सो यू नो इफ यू आर हैविंग थ्री मैक्सिमम शेयर This principle, this maximum shear would be one minus two by two. This maximum shear would be one minus three by two. This maximum shear would be two minus three by two. Civil people can leave this because for civil this have never been asked, but for mechanical it can come. So you can see there are three maximum shear stress in the three planes. One is the plane of one two, other is plane of one three, other is plane of two three. So if we see the maximum of these three, that is said to be absolute maximum shear stress. It is like local maxima and global maxima. Gali ka gunda, shahar ka gunda. So guys, this is maximum in one two plane, maximum in two three plane, maximum is one three plane. All around the maximum of these three will be said to be absolute maximum shear stress. For designing and theory of failure part, you need to use it. Theory of failure is there for civil in engineering services only, so civil people can leave it for gate. But mechanical people are having this in gate also, so they need to consider. So I have told you because for mechanical it is there. Very good guys, very good. Ha, Abhishek, ye aapne bahut acha question pucha hai. To Mohar circle mein point kab aata hai? Wo bhi main aapko bata deta hu. Thik hai? I am telling you, if we have this sigma. Sigma, sigma, sigma. For this case, if you see the x face, the state of stress is sigma comma zero. If you see the y face, the state of stress is sigma comma zero. So, my dear, when you are going to plot the Mohr circle, x face will be coming here, y face will be coming here. Joining two points will be coming here. Center would be coming here. So, the same point is a comma b comma c. You will take AB as dia, C as center, plot a circle. You will get a point. So for this, Mohr circle will be a point, and both principal stresses are equals to the sigma. So this is the case for which we are getting point Mohr circle. In case of fluid mechanics, for hydrostatic state of stress, this is denoted on the negative side because fluid is under compression like this. Okay. So the same way you can make it. Everybody is clear. Shall we move on? We are at the completion. We are at the completion. So Mohr circle for three dimension also can be made. Like this Mohr circle is made for sigma one and sigma two. This Mohr circle is made for sigma two and sigma three. And this Mohr circle is made for sigma one and sigma three. So for three D state of stress, you can make three Mohr circle. some people feel for 3d state of stress we will make mohr sphere it is not like that it would be mohr circle only but in three dimension it would be three mohr circle okay guys so even in two dimension when you put sigma 3 0 you can make three mohr circle with keeping sigma 3 to be zero but this is also not required for civil people so this is only for uh, mechanical i have told you and this is over now we would be having one question okay and this 
is completion of uh, principal stresses topic. Now we would be having the last topic torsion. Abhinav sir is there with us. Sir, Again. you told that I take too much time in bending, sir. Sir, I am doing double time in this. Sir, I was doing double time in this. So, guys, uh, sir will be telling now this uh, torsion. Right? And then after torsion, I will be coming uh, for Haan. shear center. Sir, torsion I will complete it fastly. Column. Uh, aram se sir. Shear center, column, bending stress. And deflection. Pressure vessels. And deflection you will not be taking. So I have class from 6.30. <coughs> okay. So this plus deflection will be taking. I feel 8 will be taking. 8 will be taking. Guys, we are having again uh, 12 in the midnight today hmm. session. So we will be again coming for their uh, numericals. Sir, where will they take the office? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's Everything that the uh, <laughs> everything that Mary sir, जो सब आसानी है अगर आप ढंग से पढ़ लेते तो everything that Mary sir is teaching is simple and easy and I hope you all are enjoying my uh, chapters rather than uh, you are मैं क्या कहना चाह रहा हूँ कि सर दो दो enjoy enjoy कर रहे ऐसा नहीं है sir बच्चों से पूछिए जब ज़्यादा enjoy कर रहे हैं आप लोग यार देखो आप क्या थे यार अभी लोग सर इस बैग वो तो आप नहीं बन रहे चलिए सर ये कंप्लीट कर देता हूँ मैं टोर्शन फिर आप मेरे को हटने के लिए बोल रहे हैं इसका मतलब इन डायरेक्टली नहीं नहीं सर एक्चुअली स्टूडेंट्स हैं वांस फर्स्ट में देख रहा था सही है कि नहीं ओके प्राइस वाला क्वेश्चन दिया सर प्राइस वाले दे दिए सर दो फोटो किसलिए हाँ फोटो किसलिए सो द प्रिंसिपल्स ट्रेन्स � अच्छा चलिए बढ़ते हैं आगे गाइस सो फॉर दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन व्हाट इस प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस व्हाट इस शीयर स्ट्रेस बिफोर वी गो इनटू दिस क्वेश्चन आई फील एवरीबॉडी हैव गिवन द राइट आंसर इट इस गिवन एस एब्साइलेंट वन टू बी वन थाउजेंड इनटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस सिक्स एब्साइलेंट when we are talking about the strains, they are always divided by 2. So, you would be writing gamma max by 2 as epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 by 2. So, whatever the formulas we have written for stress, they are equally valid for the strain. But for that, what you need to do? You need to replace sigma by epsilon and tau by gamma by 2. So, when you would be replacing that, all the formulas are equally valid. For example, I will tell you one formula. Like you write tau max is equals to sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 ka square plus tau xy ka square. You can see this and similarly you can write for strain. You would be dividing by 2. In case of shear we need to divide it by 2. So, gamma max by 2 would be written as epsilon xx minus epsilon yy by 2 ka square plus gamma xy by 2 ka square. So, my dear it is similar to like when we are talking about this question. You know tau maximum is given as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. Similarly, we can write epsilon max by 2, 1 minus 2 by 2. So, I feel D is the right answer those who have given. So, uh, Vamshi Krishna, is it clear? You got it? Yes. Abhinendra Pratap Singh, good evening bhai. Kaise hai aap? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, guys. So, now we are not wasting the time much. These questions are for your homework. You can go for it. Now, we will be entering into the torsion. Now, we will be entering into the torsion. Okay. So, guys, uh, one more thing I would like to tell you. Do you want to know about the strain measurement? That is also a new topic which was added. So, do you want to have the strain measurement? Please tell me that. Then we are going to have a discussion on that as well. Quickly, we will see what is strain measurement. Okay. Yes. So, let us talk about the strain measurement. Yes, 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 Shreyas. So, when we are talking about the strain measurement, my dear, there is a device known as, there is a device known as strain gauge. Okay. Let me select the pen. There is a device known as strain gauge. So, strain gauge is used for the strain measurement purpose. When we are talking about the strain gauge, what it is actually? It is a bakelite bulb. It is a bakelite bulb 
एंड इट्स साइज इज सिमिलर टू द पोस्टेज स्टैम्प सो दिस बैकेलाइट बल्ब इज ऑफ द साइज ऑफ इज द साइज ऑफ पोस्टेज स्टैम्प एंड माई डियर वेन यू आर गोइंग टू हैव दिस बैकेलाइट बल्ब इन विच सम कोपर कोयल इज देयर इन दिस सम कोपर कोयल इज देयर and that copper coil is stick to this and my dear this device is said to be the strain gauge previously we were using copper coil now it is we are using some standard materials which are advanced material they are said to be nichrome and karma so now it is we are using nichrome and karma which are the alloys of nickel and chromium so we are using these material nowadays and what we are going to do if we have a specimen of tension test like this we are going to stick this strain gauge onto this so when we are going to stick this strain gauge onto this definitely when the load would be applied you know resistance is given as resistivity into length upon area so when this load will be applied obviously the length of wire will change so when the length of wire will change the resistance will also change we will apply this with the wheat stone bridge i feel everybody understand the wheat stone bridge so we will use this with the wheat stone bridge how we would be having one resistance like this other resistance like this this is going to be the same what we are talking about the strain gauge and here we would be having the variable resistance so we are having this p q r and s so there is a galvanometer my dear there is a galvanometer so my dear in the balance condition yes 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 uh vamshi krishna it is for both okay strain measurement is for both many times i feel abhinav sir also have taken the session on strain gauge rosettes so this is for both and it is important topic okay this is for both and it is important topic so my dear when we are talking about this p q r and s there is a condition when my dear we will be saying galvanometer will be showing zero reading this is the condition when balancing is there so there you have seen we can write p by q is equals to r by s here s is the rheostat which is variable resistance so we are going to use it in this way that s is variable resistance r would be coming from this now what will happen initially when loading is not applied this is balance condition as the load will be applied the length will change length will change the resistance will change and my dear if resistance will change then this ratio will not remain same then you will get p by q is not equals to r by s because r is changed to r dash now so my dear what we will do how we will get to know that this ratio is not equal at that time galvanometer will be showing non zero deflection then we are going to vary this s because this is rheostat so we will vary it in such a way that once again the ratio becomes equal so when the ratio will become equal once again galvanometer will become to zero but for that we have changed s to s dash so now we can say p by q is equals to r dash by s dash so you know you know the ratio p by q you know the value of s dash so from that you can find out the r dash from r dash you can find out the change of resistance so change of resistance but a original resistance divided by change of length but a original length this is said to be strain gauge factor which is defined for every strain gauge in some of the books they are divide they are defining just opposite to this so by looking at the value they would be mentioning in the question whether it is delta r by r l by l or delta l by l r by r so delta r by r will be known to you strain gauge factor known to you you can find out the strain length is known to you you can find out deformation so this is how we would be using this in the strain measurement you know strain is a measurable quantity whereas stress is not a measurable quantity is it clear so you understood smart trick uh dear ye dono branch ke liye hai mechanical or civil this is for both the branches we have seen this is strain gauge this is theoretical topic everywhere is not taught that's why i have taken this this is for both the branches okay this is for both the branches is it clear guys for everyone is it clear guys for everyone yes okay so now my dear 
great 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 now my dear we are talking about the next device that is strain gauge row set actually these strain gauges can help us in finding out the normal stresses but we cannot find out we cannot measure the shear stresses with the shear strain with the help of this strain gauge so for that we are using the combination of strain gauges and you know there are three combinations of strain gauges are used in general the first combination is said to be rectangular strain gauge in rectangular strain gauge we are having three strain gauges one is at 0 degree to x axis other is 90 degree to x axis other is 45 degree to x axis and in this we are going to write the equation epsilon is equals to epsilon theta is equals to epsilon x x plus epsilon y y by 2 plus epsilon x x minus epsilon y y by 2 cos 2 theta plus gamma x y by 2 sin 2 theta so my dear when you would be using this equation we have three readings of strain gauges when you would be putting theta to be 0 you would be getting one equation when you will be getting theta to be 90 degree you will get another equation when you will put theta to be 45 degree you will get third equation because you have three readings 1 2 and 3 so using three equations we can find out the value of epsilon xx epsilon yy and gamma xy once you get these three value you can find out principal strains principal strain is given as xx plus y y by 2 plus minus square root of x x minus y y by 2 ka square plus gamma x y by 2 ka square okay guys so i feel you understood what we have seen there okay so this is giving you principal strains epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 then my dear you already know sir in delta e x delta e y will be that i am uh, sir in delta epsilon x and epsilon y will be what dear epsilon x x is the strain in x direction this is strain in y direction so this theta would be the reading of the strain gauge so epsilon x x is the strain in x direction strain in y direction and gamma x y is the shear strain okay so my dear now what we have done we found out principal strains now you know the relations epsilon 1 is sigma 1 upon e minus mu times sigma 2 upon e you know that epsilon 2 is sigma 2 upon e minus mu times sigma 1 upon e using these two relation you can find out sigma 1 and sigma 2 once you get sigma 1 and 2 you can go for design because for design we wanted this dear this is rectangular strain gauge row set if you want to talk about delta strain gauge row set delta strain gauge row set in this one strain gauge is at 0 degree other strain gauge is at 120 degree and third strain gauge is at 60 degree so 0 degree this is 60 degree angle is measured with the positive x-axis 120 degree is it clear for everyone guys this is delta strain gauge row set and the third one is the star strain gauge row set for star strain gauge row set one is making 0 degree other is making 120 degree okay and third one is making 240 degree so i am going slightly faster in this topic it is not very very important but it is a different topic and added in 2017 so chances are there that you may get question from this that is why i have taken this okay so let us move further now it is over so you just need to make three equation you need to find out x x y y gamma x y then you can find out the principal stresses and that is what you need actually so is it clear for everyone is it clear for everyone so with this we have completed it guys now we are moving to the torsion topic now we are moving to the torsion topic everybody is fine okay amir just uh, actually i am uh, leaving you in 10 minutes from my side okay so you can see this is the schedule of marathon so guys everybody understood na strain gauge row sets actually i went very fast in the strain gauge row set because uh, I feel only formulas are generally required for that. Yes, sir. So this is the schedule for civil engineering marathon. Today SOM is going on. Then we will be having steel, environment, geotech. Okay. And by 16, it would be completed. 
for mechanical tomorrow is thermodynamics would be taken by sonu sir then production then tom then fluid likewise we will be completing it and tonight we are going to meet at 12 okay so for this midnight practice session of strength of material so i feel everybody is getting it so guys once again i will ask like abhinav sir how's the josh hi sir <laughs> so i feel everyone yes great so guys now we are starting the torsion topic okay so now we are starting the torsion topic i am taking it from here torsion khatam ho gaya nahi sir ab shuru ho raha hai par jaldi kar dunga main time ho raha hai actually strain gauge reh gaya tha sir to wo batane lag gaya tha okay guys so now we are starting it torsion like you have studied the bending great great priyam vamshi junaid Great, great. So, guys, everybody understood the strain gauge rho set. I went there fastly because uh, I have taken it as a doubt as some of the student asked. So, now we are talking about the pure torsion. Like we have seen the bending equation. Bending couple was a couple perpendicular to the plane of cross section. Twisting couple is a couple which is acting parallel to the plane of cross section. So, like there you have derived the equation m <coughs> upon i sigma b upon y. E upon R. Here, torsional equation can also be derived like T upon J is equals to tau maximum upon R. You can also write it as tau by small r is equals to G theta by L. I will tell you, don't worry what it is actually. So, my dear, T is the twisting couple applied. T is the twisting couple applied. Theta is this angle of twist and this phi is the shear angle or shear strain. J is nothing but the IZZ. This is the polar area moment of inertia. And as this equation is valid only for circular cross section, not like bending that we can apply on other cross section also. This can be used only for circular. So that is why for J value I can directly write by perpendicular axis theorem it is IXX plus IYY. So if you have a circular section in bending, sir, I have already told you the value of I with XX and YY axis. It is going to be equal for circle. So, it is going to be 2 times pi by 64 d key power 4. So, you would be writing pi by 32 d key power 4. Is it clear guys? Wonderful. Very good. So, guys just like and share the session. Uh, this is how we can find out the value of j. And what does this term indicate? g is the modulus of rigidity, l is the length of the shaft. My dear, from this part of the equation, many time questions have been there. That tau max upon r tau upon r if we have a shaft then my dear you have already seen tau is directly proportional to r and if that is the case we can show the shear stress distribution how to show shear stress distribution we need to consider any one diameter so if this is the center and this is how the twisting couple is acting you know stress would be just opposing the couple will, will just oppose the force or couple so if you are going to have couple is in this direction so you would make the shear stress distribution like this radius perpendicular and you will join them because at center shear stress would be zero because tau can be written as c times of r r is zero tau is zero so this is the distribution of shear stresses like in the bending sir i have shown along the length as this is shear it is shown along the cross section. So, this is the maximum value of shear stress, maximum value of shear stress. So, my dear, if you want to understand the shear at any radius small r and this shear stress which is the maximum, this is at capital R. So, for that relation is given as tau by r is equal to tau max by capital R. In the exam, you can have a question, you can have a question that if the shear maximum value of shear stress if the maximum value of shear stress is 100 mpa for a shaft of radius 50 mm then find out the shear stress at a radius of 30 mm so guys can you answer this please tell me that can you answer this question if only this is given to you you need to find out the shear stress at a radius of 30 mm can you find out that you have done this type of question in bending also so i am expecting that you would be answering it yes what would be the shear stress at a radius of 30 mm 
आमिर मिदुन जुनेद बहुत बढ़िया तेजू प्रसन्त बहुत बढ़िया शशांक ओके सुमंत सिंह जीरो मानस विजय आमिर वेरी गुड गाइस सो यू नो यू जस्ट नीड टू यूज दिस इक्वेशन यू नो टाउ मैक्सिमम इज हंड्रेड रेडियस इज फिफ्टी टाउ यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट एंड स्मॉल रेडियस इज गोइंग टू बी थर्टी सो फ्रॉम दैट यू वुड बी गेटिंग द टाउ वैल्यू टू बी सिक्सटी एम पी सो वंडरफुल गाइस बहुत ही बढ़िया Now, my dear, we are going to analyze it. Yes, Midun, you can use the similar triangles also. That is also uh, very much correctly you have seen, you have said. Okay, let us move further, guys. So, when we are talking about the pure torsion condition, we have derived the equation T by J is equals to tau max by R. So, first of all, I am using this like you have done in the bending. On the similar note, I can write tau max is equals to T into R divided by J. and i can write it as tau divided by zp here zp is said to be polar section modulus okay polar section modulus and it would be depending on the shape and size only it would not be depending upon the material yes but my dear the point is here we need not to go for various shape we are going for torsion of circular shaft only so we must be aware we must be aware of the z value of the solid and hollow circular shaft nothing more than that so if you want to find out zp you have written the formula to be j by r j can be written as pi by 32 d ki power 4 divided by d by 2 so you can write it as pi by 16 d ki power cube so this is the value of zp for the solid shaft and when we are talking about the hollow shaft then you would be writing zp is equals to once again pi by 32 d not ki power 4 minus di ki power 4 divided by d not by 2 you can say pi by 16 because this 2 will cancel out 32 d not ki power 4 will be common it is 1 minus k ki power 4 divided by d not so the answer is pi by 16 d not ka cube into 1 minus k ki power 4 so this is how we can define it for hollow one a uh, very good ajay bahut hi badhiya pawan bahut hi badhiya smart trick bahut badhiya so this is how we are going to find out the value of z now we are going to compare the shafts okay the first comparison we are going to do between the shafts one is solid other is hollow when we are going to compare two person there should be some conditions like gate examination is comparing you based on the gate marks there are some condition which are fixed for everyone like you are getting 3 hours time you are getting the same paper you are getting the questions throughout from your btech only so these conditions are kept fixed for everyone okay it is not like from someone they are asking something else from other they are asking 12th class physics from other they are asking masters level thing no so guys the same way if we are going to compare a solid and hollow shaft actually a question comes which shaft is going to be better majority of you have studied in the college that solid is better or hollow as better yes will you answer it guys solid shafts are better hollow for same weight and same area sir aap aap mat bataiye to mujhe lag raha hai sir ne aapki help kar di pehle hi bilkul milega price sir aap to aap to dene wale price great depends bahut badhiya like tiksha have said hollow Vijay have said hollow. So in general, my dear students are saying hollow is better. This is generally students are remembering. So I would like to say this is not correct all the time. So it is like if I ask you knife is better or pin is better, it depends on application. If you want to kill someone, if you want to cut vegetable, knife is better. You cannot do that with the help of pin. Or if you are doing that, it will take a lot of time and effort. So guys, for different different condition, different things can be said to be better. So here also for this condition, when you will be talking about. For shaft, if we want to say which one is better, shaft are meant for the power transmission. So the shaft which is capable of transferring more power is said to be the best shaft or better shaft. So my dear, for that we can go for a derivation where we can find out the ratio of solid and hollow shaft, ratio of power transmission capacity of solid to hollow shaft, and you would be getting this ratio to be one by one minus k k power four. Here k is written as di by d not di is the internal diameter d not is the outer diameter which is equals to the diameter of solid shaft so here what are the condition under which we are doing this derivation the condition is 
both shafts have same outer diameter both shafts are made up of same material both shafts are running at same speed under these condition we are going to have the ratio of power transmission capacity to solid and hollow is this so just by putting the value of k you can get this otherwise i am also telling you if you forget about this formula always the ratio of solid to hollow will be equals to solid torque to the hollow torque will be equals to the zp of solid to the zp of hollow if you remember this relation for any condition you can apply this okay so just use this if you forget about anything or the conditions are getting changed using this you can go for any comparison and for this case if you are talking about solid is better or hollow is better you will say that 1 minus k4 is always going to be less than 1 so power of solid is going to be what more than power of hollow so for this condition solid is going to be better i could go into derivation of this but i feel this would be wastage of time okay yes 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 once tell the sign convention okay dear i am going into sign convention if we are having a section like this okay and twisting couple is shown like this shown like this then this means this means clockwise from right hand side if i just imagine a clock here if i am looking from here this is clockwise if the same clock which is rotating like this if i watch it from this side i will feel it is anti clockwise so the same rotation from here is clockwise and from here is anti clockwise so that is why my dear here also we need to see that what is the view from where we are looking at so if i am writing here clockwise from right hand side so when i am looking from right hand side it is clockwise then this is how i would be showing it okay this is how i am showing it and if i am using right hand thumb rule the direction would be coming inwards so for such case i will be showing the torque with double arrow like this this is what amir was asking so if this is clockwise from right hand side this is just opposite to that i would be writing it as clockwise from left hand side so from here if i make the clock this would be clock this would be the direction towards the section once again i will make like this and the second convention would be of this type like this on the similar nodes you can use any of the convention guys any of the convention you can consider this to be positive this to be negative it is of least importance in gate they never ask about plus and minus in the gate for the torsion cases okay so banod is asking the power transmission formula power transmission is given as 2 pi nt by 60 or you can also write it as t into omega okay this formula is also used okay and one more thing analysis part 2 if we will do this is the case number 2 for this case also you can write power transmission of solid to the power transmission of hollow is torque of solid to the torque of hollow is equals to zp of solid to the zp of hollow this is the case when we are having different diameter outer diameter and weight is same this is the case where outer diameters are different and weight is same for solid and hollow shaft so this is the universal which you can use anywhere anytime so you use for every case this you would be very because these two formula i have already given to you okay so when you would be using the equations using the conditions you can get the final result okay for this case uh, when you will find out hollow are found to be better than the solid shaft okay so for this case we will be saying hollow shafts are better and if i remember the formula sir can you help me in this formula for this case uh, this is for uh, equal weight ps by ph 10 by 8 16 by 10 yaad nahi mere ko ye wala tha na kuch is tarike se nahi nahi main to jo bata raha hu for same weight uh, same area and uh, same average diameter matlab uska d0 plus d1 by 2 is equal to solid ke d ke barabar <laughs> okay guys so this is the case uh, uh, this is i feel coming more than one so i feel the inverse of this will come inverse of this will come okay 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 very good teju so it is going to be 1 minus k square upon 1 plus k square but i feel there was a square root this is the answer yes i i remember now yes malesh i have written opposite actually so great i feel if you remember the formula also then what is required 
<laughs> great guys so the last thing i would be writing now t by j g theta by l using the it you can write theta is equal to t l upon g j like you have seen a e is the axial rigidity g j is the torsional rigidity g j is the torsional rigidity okay panch minute okay so guys g j is the torsional rigidity and this is said to be the angle of twist formula this is said to be the angle of twist formula so my dear g j is said to be the torsional rigidity torsional rigidity and like you have also seen in the first chapter that a e by l is the axial stiffness a e by l is the axial stiffness so we can write g j by l as torsional stiffness so guys i feel these are the things we have discussed now after that only we are left with one thing that is series connection parallel connection so i feel that we have already studied in the first chapter so there is no point in repeating that that will waste your time only so now i feel i shall invite abhinav sir again within 2 3 minutes so that he can continue the other topics and you will get the entire sum so please tell me guys up to which whatever we have discussed are you satisfied with that or not some topics i have went through fast because you know that you also wanted a quick revision there okay okay torsional uh, you are talking about torsional stiffness once again so dear like uh, if you are going to have a spring you are applying a force f onto this you are having a bar you are applying the same force f onto this here you can write f is equals to k into x here you can write f is equals to k of bar into delta so you can equate them because for both the cases the stiffness of bar how you will be defining it actually you can define k of bar as f divided by delta so you can write it as f divided by f l upon a e so from here you would be getting a e by l so here you have seen the stiffness of the bar is a e divided by l that is axial rigidity per unit length similarly when you would be going for the torsional stiffness you would be writing the torsional rigidity per unit length this is torsional stiffness okay you can also take a torsional spring for that okay the same thing can be done sir schedule show kar do mechanical ka screenshot le leta hu okay actually wo telegram par bhi shown hai already amir chaliye ek kaam karte hain jaate jaate ek aakhri question aur is baar ye bhi count hoga aapke cash prize ke liye dekhte hain how many of you give the right answer for this this is also counted for cash prize they do series and parallel i feel they are similar to like series and bar of uh, series and parallel of bars so that's why i feel from that you can take reference of yes the last question from my side dinesh is saying the answer to be a ashish a sorry c great 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 tiksha is saying a okay so my dear i want answer from all of you teju junaid very good what about others surjit is saying a vansh is saying a yes swapnil a bahut badhiya vamshi b malesh a prashant d bhomik a shubham a sk a bahut badhiya so guys i would like to say they are asking something the outside diameter of a hollow shaft the outside diameter of hollow shaft is twice that of inside the ratio of torque carrying capacity of solid shaft to the hollow shaft so they are asking you the capacity to that of solid shaft of the same material okay so they are asking you th by ts this is the biggest problem students are facing in this question we have seen the formula for power of solid to the power of hollow torque of solid to the torque of hollow and it was coming out to be 1 by 1 minus k ki power 4 this was the formula but they are asking opposite to that th by ts so this is going to be 1 minus k ki power 4 so it is going to be 1 minus 1 by 2 ki power 
So the answer would be 15 by 16. A would be the right answer. So ek cheez notice ki those questions who are for uh, which are for cash prizes, everyone have not given the right answer. That's why these questions were special. Okay. So I feel, sir, here I shall leave to you now. Please continue. Sure, sure, sir. Mike. Every day complete subject will be done guys and I hope that from the coverage of today's syllabus you will be getting that at what depth we are going. Sir, Okay. So this is for mechanical and this is for civil guys. Okay. This is for mechanical. This is for civil. Okay, uh, Sahu sir will be coming 10 a.m. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. Okay, so complete schedule every day for civil, for mechanical. And guys, uh, tonight we are again coming. Okay, midnight, 11.55 p.m. 11.55 p.m. Okay, and Sahu sir tomorrow and then Sonu sir will be tomorrow for mechanical. Okay, so guys, so, maza aya? Abhi tak, have you enjoyed? Are you enjoying? Okay, many students, guys, literally, me and sir are switching the sessions one by one. We have a time to relax. Okay, although we have put a lot of effort uh, yesterday night, but today we are switching the session, but I am seeing many students, Swapnil, Tiksha, Ajay, many students who are here from the beginning. Yadav sahab, okay, many, many students who are here from the beginning. Hats off to them, guys. Hats off to them, guys. Okay, so this is there, this is there, so, this is the bending stresses. This first chapter, I and Dhiraj sir both have uh, taught you, and we have done it. 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 So, guys, uh, please share the session to everyone so that more and more commandos can join in. Okay, now we are moving to the chapter number six. Now, every chapter is much except deflection. Every chapter is now small. Uh, shear center is 5 10 minutes topic, pressure vessel 10 to 15 minutes topic, and spring is 5 to 10 minutes topic. Now, every topic is small, and deflection will be going purely to the numerical wise. Dear sir? Okay. So, uh, oh, why this is coming again and again? How is the Josh commandos, everyone? How is the Josh? Sir, you PDF share the students are asking Okay. Deflection will be going through numericals. Okay, thoda down hai. Josh. Josh thoda down hai. Sir, you have to give some motivation, guys. Give some motivation, sir. Hi, sir. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, who is in speed? I am here, sir. Who is taking, uh, teaching you in more speed? Let's see, sir. What do you say, sir? If 400 slides, 50 are those, timetable only, sir. Okay. Sir, what do you say? 400 slides, 50 are those, timetable only, sir. Not 50, but yes, uh, 3 slides for every chapter. Thin, thin ka, ka, radial wala derivation, nahi, hoop or longitudinal wala bolo na, radial to jo inside pressure rehta hai, wohi rehta hai, thin mein. Ye kis ka jau dhe rehe, slow ka? Maybe fast ka dhe. Ye dhira sir, jo aap answer dhe rehe, slow ka ya fast ka dhe rehe? Slow ka ya fast ka? Fast pucha tha, mene kya? Acha, fast ka dhe rehe, fast ka. Fast to be made on the back, he is on the strike rate. Okay, fast considering. Okay, so that means I have to also increase speed. Fast to the slow way. Okay, fast to the jada paradia to slow way. Okay, Zira sir, fast 155. Perfect partnership. It's like which ate sweetest from Jalebi and Jamun. Okay. No, sir, fine with you. Okay, thank you, PM, for accommodating me. 
Okay. And everybody, please write your again cities and uh, which city and which branch. They like Gwalior, comma mechanical, Shimla, comma civil. Umar Malik hai. Umar Malik hai. Kya likh rahe hain? Samjha nahi main. Umar matlab? Bhilai civil. Vijayak civil. Kolkata M E. Aurangabad C. Hyderabad civil. New Delhi. New Delhi mein kahan se? Lucknow mechanical. Bhilai civil. Mechanical from German. Wow. Thammam C. Vidisha. Smart tricks. I I I guess you I know you. Mechanical. Mechanical, Trichy, Hyderabad Mechanical, 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 Pune Mechanical, Bihar Civil. Take your time, sir. Okay, Kharagpur Civil, Tamil Nadu. Okay, Hisar Civil. Civil Salem, where is Salem? Hyderabad Civil. Hisar, sir. Hisar, that's from Ashish Sharma. Ashish Sharma is also, many students are from the beginning. And we are switching the session. We are having time to little bit relax. I was saying, sir, he is also from Hisar, my hometown. Yes, that's right. He's from the morning, sir. He's from the morning, sir. I remember the name. Salain is in Tavil Nadu. Okay. So, that means you are saying that I should also increase the speed. Richa Mam City. Akash also I know. Richa Mam City, Bhilai. Okay. Should I also increase my speed like sir? Or is it let, let it be like it only? Acha, smart tricks is my offline student also. When I was teaching in offline. Yes, yes, no, no. Yes, yes, no, no. Okay. Your partnership like Gail and Kohli. Gail, who is Ruko jara, sabar karo. Teju Singh. Okay, let's begin guys. One small request. Please share the session so that everybody can join in. Okay. Aap ho Gail. Bhai, itna kala hoon kya mein? Isse Gail aise aise bhi kuch dance bhi karta hai na? Kirke dikha du kara. Sir, meko aata nahi. Messi and CR7. Okay. Bhai, aap Gail keh rahe ho, Kohli keh rahe ho. Dono ki humari ton nikli bhi hai. Both of us are heavyweight. You can call us heavyweight champion, but how Gail, how Kohli. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, SK, let's start. Now, let's come to the small, small topic, spring, shear center, column, pressure vessels, okay, then we'll be going to deflection. Now, see, guys, uh, spring, okay, our, uh, this type of spring uh, that you have studied till now is called closed coil helical spring. Okay, this closed coil helical spring. Okay, now, in closed coil helical spring, Guys, when I am elongating with P force, the strain energy, okay, the strain energy stored is, the strain energy stored is 32 P square R cube into N into G into D ki power 4. Everybody now listen to me. 32 P square R cube into N G D ki power 4. Now, this is the strain energy. What is strain energy? What is strain energy? Suppose guys, I am elongating my cheeks like this. So, I have done some work. F, F dot D. I have done some work. That work has stored as strain energy. That work is stored as strain energy. Once I re remove the load, once I remove the load, strain energy released. Okay. Again, I am applying the load. The load is stored as strain energy. Okay. Once I remove the load, strain energy is released. So, whatever work I am doing, elongating a bar, twisting a bar, Bending a bar, that work is stored as strain energy. Okay, now the strain energy is when I am applying the P force, this is this 32, you know, P is the load applied. R is distance of here, N is the number of turns, G is the shear modulus of this material of which spring is made, and D is the diameter of this wire. Now, according to Castiglione's second theorem, deflection in the direction of load is del U by del P. So, del U by del P is 64 P R cube into N into G D ki power 4. And from here, what is the stiffness? What is the stiffness? Stiffness is P by delta. So, once we do P by delta, so P by delta is G D ki power 4 into G D ki power 4 
इंटू सिक्सटी फोर आर क्यूब इंटू एन प्लीज चेक इफ आई डू पी की पावर डेल्टा जी डी की पावर कमिंग फोर आर क्यूब एन सो फ्रॉम हियर वट वी आर गेटिंग दैट के इज इक्वल टू जी डी की पावर फोर सिक्सटी फोर आर क्यूब इंटू एन फ्रॉम हियर इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट इज जनरली आर्स दैट एवरीबडी हैज टू रिप्लाई नाउ Everybody has to reply now. This will also be counted for your this. Mm, what is this called? Man, cash prize. Suppose this is the spring, and the stiffness is k. And suppose I cut it in two equal parts. And suppose I cut the it in in two equal parts. Now the spring is this. Now what is the stiffness of these two springs? What is the stiffness of these two springs? Everybody on the comment section, guys. What is the stiffness of these two springs, guys? Come on, and let me take the screenshots of your answer also. Increases, okay. Doubled, okay. Increases. I am asking exact value. I am asking the exact value. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Sopnil, Prashant, Dinesh. Okay. Anbu, Amano, all are correct. I have taken the screenshot, guys. It will be two k. Why? Because, guys, k is directly proportional to number of tons. From here, and number of tons are half. Number of tons are half, so it will be double stiffness. Because when we cut, material is not changing, diameter of the wire is not changing, sixty-four is not changing, R cube is not changing. Okay, so it will be doubled, and you can feel it. A long spring you can elongate, but a small spring you cannot elongate that much easy. Okay, now spring in series, it is like this. You can find. I am not going to derivation, but delta is equal to delta one plus delta two. Let me do derivation also. It will be very fine. So k equal and delta p delta is p by k, na? So delta of this should be equal to delta of these two. So delta is p by k equal and is equal to p by k one plus p by k two. So from here, one by k equal and is one by k one plus one by k two. And if there are more springs, it will be like this for series condition. Okay. Hello, Gusain Sir. How are you? Now for parallel, parallel means what is the meaning of spring uh, series? Series means p is same. Here it is acting by p force. This is also p force. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of parallel? Delta is equal to same. Okay, if it is come here, delta of this and delta of this both are same. Okay, delta is same. So now if here is the p force, here it is going p one, here it is going p two. So net force is transferred into p one and p two. So deflection here is p is equal to k delta, k equivalent, and deflection here will be k one delta delta are same, k two into delta. So from here we easily we have done the derivation k one plus k two, and if there are more springs, it will be like this. Okay. Now can you please give me this question? This will also be counted as the marks. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody on the comment section, guys. This will also be counted. This will also be counted, guys, for your prize. Everyone, everyone, guys, come on, 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 come on. Chalo, chalo, chalo. Everyone, three, two by nine. In terms of k, you have to tell na. In terms of k, you have to tell na. Please. Please, okay, 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 okay. I am taking the screenshot and let me tell you again. The champion here is uh, Anbu. Anbu is getting correct. K by three. See these three are in series, and in series the K equivalent is one by K plus one by K plus one by K. From here, one by K equivalent is equal to three by K. So k equivalent is k by three. So all these can be written as k by three. All these written as k by three. All these written as k by three. Now these three k by three are in parallel. So three k by three are in parallel. So the value here are k. Then again this k by two k by two parallel. K. Then again k and then three k's are in series. Then k equivalent is again k by three. So final answer will be k by three. Have you got it? Have you got it? Now this is leaf of laminated spring. Okay, but this will not be asked in your exam. No need to do time waste here. 
this is behind the trucks okay now let's come to the shear center <laughs> guys shear center is a very vast topic but of course we'll be studying according not according to psd we'll be studying according to the gate examination please see shear center is that point through which if load passes there will be no twisting okay however bending may or may not occur but there will be no twisting like here <coughs> if you apply load here it will be exactly at the center it will be compressed but twisting will not be there if you apply load here twisting can happen 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 but if you apply load like this at this point twisting will not be there however it can go like this but twisting will not be there okay now moving further okay now how to locate shear center there are three golden rules there are three golden rules now first rule is first rule is that shear center will always lies on the axis of symmetry suppose this is the section so shear center will also lies always lies on this is the axis of symmetry and this is also axis of symmetry second rule says first rule says the shear center will be on the axis of symmetry second rule says if there are two axis of symmetry this is also axis of symmetry this is also axis of symmetry so shear center will be on the <coughs> junction on the junction let me give you one more example suppose this is a circular section so shear center will lie on the axis of symmetry this is axis of symmetry this is axis of symmetry if there are two axis of symmetry it will be lining on the junction it will be lining on the junction now let me give you one more example suppose this is a i section in i section or in any section shear center will lie on the axis of symmetry if there is existing this is also axis of symmetry second point says that if there are two axis of symmetry then shear center will be lining on the junction these are the two golden rules now third is that if a channel is made up of two narrow rectangle plates yes yeah, shear center will be lining on the axis of symmetry but if it is made up of two narrow rectangle plates then shear center will be on the line joining the axis of symmetry of individual rectangle plates here like this third golden rule let me again tell you the third golden rule that if guys see the, here in this section there is no axis of symmetry so when the two a narrow rectangle plate there are two narrow rectangle plates then shear center will be at the axis of symmetry of both the rectangle plates like this have you got it please give me yes or no please give me yes or no please give me yes or no everybody on the comment section please everybody on the comment section have you understood this have you understood this <coughs> please let me know okay now apart from these three golden rules apart from these three golden rules these are there these sections like here this is axis of symmetry so axial center lies on axis of symmetry but where here 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 where here 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 where where shear center will lie because there are not two axis of symmetry na so apart from all these three golden rules just remember these values just remember these values for these three cases every question in examination will be either coming from these three golden rules or these three values yes these three values can be derived but for that we have to go beyond syllabus okay now some will say sir how it is out how shear center is at e distance away so i am not getting this sir how it is out how shear center is out let me tell you where this is a hollow circular section this is a hollow circular section where is the where is the where is the center of mass where is the center of mass center of mass is here at the center where there is no mass actually where there is no mass so shear center is also can be where where there is no mass okay now combined stresses topic i already told you in bending bending chapter you have you remember that one where i told this one where i told this one m 
एम ओके एंड पी इज ऑल्सो कमिंग पी इज ऑल्सो कमिंग सो कंबाइंड स्ट्रेसेस वी हैव डन देयर ऑल्सो ना सो गाइस देयर इज अ कर्न कर्न इज दैट एरिया थ्रू व्हिच इफ लोड पासेस देन देयर विल बी नो टेंशन व्हाई वी आर सो वरीड अबाउट टेंशन व्हाई वी आर सो वरीड अबाउट टेंशन बिकॉज ब्रिटल मटेरियल्स आर नॉट स्ट्रांग इन टेंशन लाइक कंक्रीट लाइक कास्ट आयरन ओके सो माय फ्रेंड्स shear center is that point through which if load passes then there will be no tension so suppose these are the two symmetrical axes suppose this value is b suppose this value is d so by the calculation of bending stress and direct stress not going into the derivation it should not be b by 6 here not far away from this eccentric should not be more than b by 6 not more than b by 6 here not more than d by 6 here Not more than d by six here. So this total b by six, b by six is b by three. D by six and d d by six above d by six here. D by three. So actually this region, this region, this region like this is called kern. Kern is th that area through which if load passes there will be no tension. <coughs> कब ऐड करते आमिर देखो आमिर देखो आप क्या करोगे सी आमिर सपोज दिस इज अ कॉलम प्लस माइनस भूल जाओ सपोज दिस इज अ कॉलम एंड इन दिस कॉलम सपोज दीज आर द टू एक्सेस ऑफ सिमेट्री सपोज इन दिस कॉलम देर आर टू एक्सेस ऑफ सिमेट्री दिस इज एक्स एक्स एंड दिस इज वाई वाई ओके नाउ Suppose the load is acting here. The load is acting here. So direct stress is compression throughout force by area. I am not talking of bending stress right now. Direct stress is force by area. Sigma direct is force by area. This is compression. And bending stress is m by i into y. So p into e moment e is eccentricity about y by axis. Moment of inertia bending is about y by x is so i about y y into distance. New distance that is compression also tension also. So you can easily see that these two sides are compression going inside and these two sides are coming out tension due to the rotation about y y x is like this. Due to the rotation about y y x is like this. Due to the rotation about y y x is like this. These two are going inside. compression and these two are tension so for these two sides this and this both are added both are compression and for this side this is compression and that will be an opposite sign have you got it guys please let me know in the comment section have you got it this is also called middle third rule b by 6 here b by 6 here total b by 3 d by 6 here d by 6 total d by 3 and the shape of kern for other shapes are like this but in examination it will be asking for either rectangular and for solid circular section the kern is circular for solid circular section the kern is that area through which if load passes there will be no there will be no tension so d by 8 here d by 8 here so kern is d by 4 d by 8 here d by 8 here so kern is d by 4 okay so either they will be asking of rectangular or circular or at most hollow circular okay now guys there are mostly two types of failure mostly there are two types of failure either there is a crushing failure like this this is a crushing failure that means the stress is more than the permissible limit the sigma is more than the permissible limit okay then these types of stresses are there okay now when this is crushing failure and one is that actually the material is not failing but it becomes something like this that is buckling failure that is buckling failure usually the short column usually crushes usually the short column will crush and a long column may buckle of course this may buckle like this this may buckle but in this if i apply load it will be crushing very less chance that it will be buckling but yes this can buckle this can buckle okay but this will be more chances of crushing okay so usually short column crushes and long column buckles
So Euler gave a theory, but that theory is only valid for long columns. And according to that theory, that can be derived from double integration method, that critical load is this. At this much load, the column will fail in buckling. Okay. Number of buckling loops can be 1, can be 2, can be 3, but in our syllabus always there are 2 supports. So, we, do, we only remember this formula. PCR is equal to pi square E I minimum into L effective ka square. I minimum is minimum moment of inertia. I will tell about I minimum. I will tell about I minimum. Okay, actual formula is this, but we only study the simple cases with N is equal to 1 only. So, we study only this force. Now, why it is I minimum? Suppose guys, there is a column and there are two axes, I xx also and I yy also. Suppose I xx is greater than I yy. So, there will be a PCR, a Euler's load that is also called as crippling load that is also called as neutral load about which this column will buckle about yy axis. And for xx also there is a value. Of course, that which will be the minimum that we will taking as a failure. Nah. Guys, I can buckle like this also. And I can buckle like this also. Whatever is the minimum load that will be taking now for designing. Bilkul Amir. Have you got it? Have you got it guys? Have you got it? That um, I can buckle like this also. I am a column. I can buckle like this also. So, whatever is the minimum value corresponding to that, I will be taking, na? Corresponding to I X X, P C R sub is 60 kN. And corresponding to I Y Y support is 45 kN. So, I will be taking 45 kN as the design load, na? Everybody, come on, yeah, please put a hard sign. Just show some energy, yeah. From morning, I am, we are teaching, yeah. Come on, yeah. You are not replying, yeah. Come on, just show some energy, yeah. Come on. Rahul Kumar says, sir, which protein shake you consume? Yes, let me tell you answer. Let me tell you that. A protein shake, the name of that protein shake is SL. That I drink. Do you know SL? What is the name protein shake SL? Do you know the protein shake SL? Do you all know the protein shake SL? Don't know. Anybody knows SL protein shake? Yeah, Sandbook, how are you? No, SL is a protein shake whose, let, let me just derive, let, complete this and I will take, I will tell. Okay. So, guys, I minimum is equal to A of cross into R minimum square. So, this can be written as, P, this is for n is equal to 1. This can be written as P is equal to pi square E A into R minimum. And R minimum can be written as here, denominator. This is P C R is equal to pi square E A L effective by R minimum. L effective by, K2 please share the session. L effective by R minimum is lambda. Lambda is slenderness ratio. More lambda means long column. Smaller lambda means short column. Generally for steel, if lambda is more than 88, 88.8, .8, it is termed as long column. Less than 88.8 .8 is short column. Okay, long column is more liable for buckling failure. Not necessary. And short column is more liable to for crushing failure. I am saying more liable, not necessary. Might be this also may be buckling failure, crushing failure. Okay. So, <coughs> This is the value. Now, if somebody says, the uh, what is, sir, buckling stress, at which column will fail? Buckling stress is force by area, PCR by A, that is pi square E upon lambda square. Have you got it? Have you got it? SL is a protein shake. It comes with so much hard work. It is highly costly. And to drink SL for large amount of time, you have continuously to do effort. And the meaning of SL protein shake is students love. For students love is my protein shake. Student loves is my carbohydrate energy. Okay. Now, L effective is the effective length between the two supports. That is the distance between the two point of contra flexures. So, L effective when both are hinged is L by 2 is L both hinged. One fixed, one free. <coughs> L one fixed, one hinged. It is L by root 2. 
okay now for validation of Euler's theory it should be a long column for Rankine theory is never come in the gate exam that this is the failure load 1 by PR that is 1 by crushing load plus 1 by critical load okay can you tell me this or should we take quotients at the uh, night only should we take quotients at the light only oh, please do this let us do this circular column having its n hinge head the slender ratio lambda is equal to l effective by r minimum that is 160 l effective is l when both are hinged when both are hinged l r is i is equal to i minimum is equal to a into r minimum ka square so r is under root i by a so 160 is equal to l under root i i is pi by 64 d ki power 4 divided by pi d square by 4 is equal to l by under root pi to pi cancelled it will be d square by 16 so d square by 16 will be d by 4 is equal to 160 so l by d will be 40 l by d will be 40 excellent excellent tiksha share kar diya tiksha ne bahut jagah share to kiya i have seen that tiksha please uh, once again share shreyas from himachal swapnil for wanangabad ahmed vishal everybody guys please share the session so that more more commanders can join in okay these are other questions that you can take okay so tomorrow will be this south steel and thermodynamic solution this will be tonight now let's go to the chapter 7 that is that is that is that is Chapter 7 is, I already told you now that will be very small chapters. Okay. Now, chapter is pressure vessels, then we'll be going to the deflections. Okay. Ready for pressure vessel, guys? So I'll be doing derivation here also. Everybody, please let me know. Ready or not? Ready or not? Okay. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Pressure vessel may derivation, yes, it will be important. Okay, guys, when anything, is it cylinder, is it sphere? If thickness by diameter ratio is less than 1 by 10, 1 by 15, 1 by 20, there is not any fixed value. Okay, so it is termed as thin. Otherwise, it is thick. Otherwise, it is thick. Okay, there is no fixed value 1 by 10, 1 by 15, 1 by 20. In every different manual, different values are there. Now, suppose a cylinder. Suppose... A gas cylinder is having some pressure P. Suppose a gas cylinder is having some pressure P. Now, due to this pressure P, there are, guys, see, this is a gas cylinder. Now, in this gas cylinder, oh, very heavy. <laughs> this gas cylinder, there is some inside pressure. And that inside, which is very heavy air, very, I guess, high pressure gas is there, carbon dioxide. Now, in this gas pressure, in this gas pressure, there is very high pressure, this is very heavy. So, this material can burst. This material can burst. So, we have to design the, this material. We have to design this material so it will not be failing. Okay. We have to design this material so that it is not failing. Okay. Now, this is gas and it's, it is filled with P pressure. Now, what are the stresses? Let us cut this from here. Xx. Let us cut this from here. Xx. Okay. This is Xx. Suppose thickness is T. Thickness is T. Stresses will be coming, of course, in material, not inside. Okay. Stresses will be coming in material, not inside. Now, my friends, here is the diameter D. Okay. Now, suppose the length is L. Okay. So, this is filled with gas inside, high pressure gas. Suppose I take a very small element here. This. Suppose I take this element. Now, see guys. One is the pressure P here. And guys, if, tell me, if in this gas cylinder, if in this gas cylinder, there is pressure, there is pressure, so inside pressure, so this will, this material is in compression or tension, 
दिस मटेरियल विल बी इन कंप्रेशन और टेंशन दिस मटेरियल विल बी इन कंप्रेशन और टेंशन एवरीबडी दिस मटेरियल विल बी इन कंप्रेशन और टेंशन कंप्रेशन 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 ओके वेट दिस इज गैस सिलेंडर वट विल बी दिस टेंशन और कंप्रेशन टेंशन और कंप्रेशन कंप्रेशन और टेंशन टेंशन फॉर इन साइड प्रेशर देयर इज कंप्रेशन अगर मेरे पेट के अंदर मेरे पेट के अंदर इन साइड से प्रेशर हो रहा है तो ये एक्सपैंड करेगा इट विल एक्सपैंड टेंशन इफ बाहर से आ रहा है फोर्स इट विल बी कंप्रेशन इन साइड द फोर्स इज कमिंग इट इज टेंशन Got it or not? Got it, guys. Please let me know. Okay, you are not giving motivation, so I have to do certain things in between. Otherwise, why this kind of energy I am continuously applying, or suddenly I am applying this energy so that I get charged up. Otherwise, my this will not be this. Okay, okay, good, Ashish. So this is P. Due to this tension, there are stresses. One is the hoop stress. and here in this direction this is the longitudinal stress what is hoop stress and one is longitudinal stress now these all are the principal stresses okay guys in 2d in more circle there is two principal stresses but in actual life it is 3d in actual life it is not circle it is ellipsoid so there are three principal stresses now in this three principal stresses please see that shear stress in every plane is zero it is principal stress so p sigma h and sigma l now what is sigma h i will derive summation fy is equal to zero guys this cylinder is in equilibrium this cylinder is in equilibrium so sigma l is increasing its length sigma l is increasing its length in this direction and sigma h is increasing its diameter sigma h is increasing its diameter Sigma L is increasing its length. Sigma H is increasing its diameter. Okay, so now, 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 summation F is guys. This is in equilibrium, na. This cylinder is in equilibrium, na. So summation F Y is, my friends, this is stress into area, vertical force, upward. Sigma H, T into L, and two. Two because here is also T into L area, and here also T into L area, and downward force is pressure. What is the guys? Pressure is in all direction, ah. Eh? Pressure is actually in all direction. Pressure is in all direction. So this pressure acting here, pressure has no direction. It is in every direction. So this is P into this area, P into this area. So this area is D into L. P into D into L. So from here, sigma H value is P D by two T. Everybody on the comment section, please give me yes or no. Everybody on the comment section, please give me yes or no. Have you understood this or not? Have you understood this or not? Now this is sigma H, and this sigma H is increasing its diameter. Sigma H is increasing its diameter. Increasing its diameter. Okay. Now. Coming to sigma L. Now, coming to sigma L. Coming to sigma L. Suppose I cut this cylinder from here, and it is looking something like this. So longitudinal stress is like this, increasing the length. Sigma L, and pressure is like this. So summation f x is equal to zero. Summation f x is equal to zero. So right side sigma l into pi d into t. Since it is thin, so we can write it pi d into t. And left hand side force is p into pi d square by four. So this 
So from here, sigma L is equal to PD by 4T. Sigma L is PD by 4T. So sigma H, I am talking of cylinder, is PD by 2T. Sigma L is PD by 4T and radial pressure P and P is very, very less than sigma H and P is very, very less than sigma L. If 2D we are talking, we will be only talking of these two since P is very, very less. If 3D we are talking, we are calculating all, all three. Now the question comes in your mind that why this P is negligible? Because from this formula, T, this is thin, thin, thin. T is very less. T is very less. So sigma H is very, very greater than P. Because denominator is very less. Thin cylinder. Okay. Now, this is sigma H, sigma L. What is hoop strain? What is hoop strain? A, a, a poison ratio. Hoop strain is sigma H by E minus mu sigma L by E. This is in 2D. In 3D, it will be sigma H by E minus mu sigma L by E minus mu P by... No, P is increasing actually. Na? P is like this. Na? P is in p is increasing this so plus now you can put the values and get the answer that will be in the formula book also now after this we are cutting to longitudinal strain okay longitudinal strain that is epsilon l so it will be sigma l by e it will be sigma l by e minus mu sigma h by e. if you are talking of 3d it will be sigma l by e minus mu sigma h by e and due to contraction of this p Contraction of this P, it will, L length, it will be increasing. So, plus mu P by E. You can put the values of sigma H and sigma L that I have derived and get the values. Okay. So, radial direction may strain ka derivation. Radial direction may. Malala, radial direction may, malala, you are saying of P direction. You are saying the P direction, Amir. You are saying this epsilon in the direction of radial. In the direction of P, it will be, of course, your poison ratio, na? same poison ratio. Sigma H is coming at here. Mu sigma H by E. Got it, Amir? Got it, Amir? Got it, Amir? Put the values, get the answer. Now, volumetric strain is, <coughs> volumetric strain is, volumetric strain is, 2 epsilon h plus epsilon l. Okay. So, epsilon h and epsilon l you have calculated here. And unless mentioned, we will be talking of 2d. Okay. And then we can find the volumetric strain. All these we will be giving in the formula book. Now, shear stress in plane. If plane means 2d. In plane, it is sigma h minus sigma l by 2. So, pd by 2t minus pd by 4t. So, that is pd by 4t. By 2, it is PD by 80 in 2D condition. In 3D, condi absolute means 3D condition. Okay. So, it is in 3D condition. What is the shear stress maximum? Maximum of sigma H, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2, comma, sigma H minus P by 2. P you have to take 0 as compared to sigma H, sigma L minus P by 2. You know, now in 3D, it is maximum of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2, sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2, and sigma 3 minus sigma 1 by 2. From here, what is the maximum value? Sigma L, Sigma H. So, it is PD by 40. This is the answer. Let me hire this fire extinguisher. You want this? Nah. You want this? Nah. Okay, it will not be hiding now. Okay. Have you got it, guys? Have you got it, guys? Okay. Now, for sphere, similar derivations you can do for the sphere. And since it is a uniform section in length and width wise, so sigma h is equal to sigma l is equal to pd by 40. Volumetric strain here is 3 epsilon h and 3 epsilon h and epsilon l both are same here. Okay, one more thing. What hoop strain is causing? Change in diameter. Delta d by d is epsilon h. What longitudinal strain is doing? Delta l by l. Okay. So in here, all our values are same. Epsilon H, Epsilon L, everything is same. Okay. Thick, I am not doing right now because Lamy's derivation, empirical thing is there. Nothing to derive in hoop. Even Lamy's has also not derived it. Okay. So, and also not asked in the syllabus as well. So, please tell me guys, are you ready for now the last chapter, the last chapter deflection? Are you ready? 
Till now, which chapter you like most? Which chapter increase your performance? Sir, free party. Sir, in Tau Max case, radial lengi na, civil door. Ah, 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 ah. Sir, Rahul Kumar ka sab question pad lo. Rahul Kumar ka question pad lo, bahut achcha question hai. Everybody now, whatever I am talking is very, very important. Very, very important. See. See. In 2020, Rahul has asked a very good question. <coughs> In 2022, civil engineering, gate PYQ, a question is asked where sigma h something is given, sigma l is given. They ask tau max. Now the whole India is confused. Should we answer? Should we answer for 2D or 3D? Because for 2D, it is PD by 80 and for 3D, it is PD by 40. Okay, this is the case. This is the case. Okay. <coughs> now let me tell you. Everyone, this happens. Guys, please subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it till now. This happens. Now, gate has given some answer, I guess, from 2D. Now, the students are challenging because we also on the behalf of students challenge. And let me tell you before, guys, I am telling you very important information. Very important information. Nobody will give you this. And I have made a video on this also. Guys, before 2022, Listen me very carefully. Before 2022, if a question is challenged and it was found successful challenge, then marks to all is given. M T A marks to all before 2022. First time. In 2022, it has happened that such questions are challenged and out of A, B, C, D, marks to all is not given. Gate IIT Kharagpur thinks that okay, the challenge is correct, but still only two answers will be there, no? one according to 2D and one according to 3D. So why to give the marks to other two options? So, instead of marks to all, they have given only two options as correct and others they will be giving negative marking. One option was corresponding to 2D, one option was corresponding to 3D. Yes, in this situation, but only one drawback is there. The student who has not understood the question, he knows the answer, but he has not understood that which to opt and by the fear of negative marking, he has not attempted it. So, that is, he got zero marks. Because he was in fear, although he knows the answer. So, guys, now what will happen that due to they accept that they have not written in the question, so they have given both answers correct. So, either they will write the question in 2D or 3D or sometimes by the language of the questions you have to find out. Like, like they are asking that how the volume of cylinder is changed. That answer must be according to 3D formula. Volume is related to 3D. If they ask that what is the tau max in cylinder, cylinder is a 3D thing, you have to write the answer corresponding to 3D. Got it? Got it? Now, guys, let us come to the last chapter that is slope and deflection. Now, let us come to the last chapter that is slope and deflection. Please see here. <coughs> Okay, we'll take the questions in the night, na? We'll take the questions in the night. Now, please see guys, before coming to all this, what actually is deflection? When certain load is applied anywhere, might be here, might be here. Since the first thing I taught you today, that strength of materials, the first thing I taught you today, that strength of materials is a deformable physics. Here, there will be deformation. So, the body will deform like this. 
body will deform and then straight line. Why straight line? I will tell you. So, how much it has changed its position? That is the deflection here at the free end. Deflection here will be this much. Deflection here will be this much. Deflection at the fixed end will be zero. Why this is straight line? Because here what is the movement? What is bending movement here? Zero. From right hand side you can say there is nothing. From right hand side you can see that there is nothing. So, bending movement is zero. And you know that sigma by y is equal to m by i is equal to e by i. So, if m is 0, e by r is equal to 0. If m is 0, e is a determinate value. Therefore, r is equal to infinite. r is equal to infinite means straight line. r is equal to infinite means straight line. Therefore, whenever there is no bending movement, it is a straight line. Okay. So, deflection is how much it is moved here. Deflection this much, deflection this much, deflection this much, deflection this much, deflection this much here, this much here, this much here, this much here, it is 0. Now, I will tell all this later. Now, what is slope? What is slope? Suppose this is a beam. Suppose it is like this and the deflected shape is now like this. So, what is slope? Suppose I want slope at the free end. So, draw a tangent. Suppose I want slope at the free end. The tangent. Original position was horizontal. So, this is the slope. Suppose I want slope here at B point. This is B dash. So, draw a tangent here. From that tangent, from the original position, this is the angle of the tangent. That is the slope. Of course, here the tangent is this. Original position is here. So, theta is 0. So, at fixed end, delta is 0, deflection is 0 and slope is also 0. Deflection is also 0 and slope is 0. Suppose y is the equation of deflection. y is the equation of deflection. Then, guys, the theta slope is dy by dx. Okay. Certain points I have to tell before coming on this. Now, friends, suppose this is a beam. This is a beam. This is P, this is L by 2, this is L by 2, deflected shape is something like this. Now, always see that deflection due to bending movement in a beam with respect to deflection due to shear force is proportional to length upon diameter, length upon length of the beam upon depth of the beam whole square. And you know, the length of a beam is very, very greater than this. Just see above your head in your room, length is too much. <laughs> depth is less. So, that means deflection due to bending movement, deflection due to bending movement is very, very greater than deflection due to shear force. So, in this chapter, deflection is treated as only due to deflection due to bending movement. Now, guys, everyone, please see, please see that for a symmetrical beam, bending movement is symmetrical. For, for, a uh, for a uh, symmetrical beam, symmetrical loading, symmetrical supports, always SFD is anti symmetrical, anti symmetrical, and BMD is symmetrical, BMD is symmetrical, okay. See, whatever the beams you have seen till now, like this, see SFD is anti-symmetrical, BMD is symmetrical. You have seen beam like this, SFD is anti-symmetrical, BMD is symmetrical. And deflection depends on bending movement. Deflection depends on bending movement. And for symmetrical beam, bending movement is, bending BMD is symmetrical. So, deflected shape is symmetrical. Because deflected shape depends on bending movement. So, for every symmetrical beam having symmetrical loading and symmetrical supports, the deflected shape is symmetrical. And once the deflected shape is symmetrical, guys, here delta will be 0. At A and B, delta is because there is support now. How it will deflect here? How will it deflect? It will be 0. And since this curve is symmetrical, so what is slope? Slope is draw a tangent here, draw a tangent here from original position, that is the slope theta A. From original position, that is the slope theta b. So, since it is a symmetrical deflected curve, 
सिंस इट इज अमेट्रिकल डिफ्लेक्टेड कर सो थीटा ए इज इक्वल टू थीटा बी थीटा ए इज इक्वल टू थीटा बी गॉट इट ओके एंड सिंस इट इज सिमेट्रिकल सो स्लोप हियर इज लाइक दिस एंड ओरिजिनल पोर्शन इज ऑल्सो लाइक दिस सो थीटा सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो Got it, guys. Okay. Now one more thing I want to tell you here that, <coughs> my friends, that if something is like this, this total length is, this is a, and this is l minus a. So you know the deflected shape will be here like this, and here it is straight line. So this is a. this is b so deflection of b is this much this is equal to deflection at a this is deflection a na this is deflection a na this is deflection a na plus alpha so deflection at b is equal to deflection at a plus alpha deflection a from standard result we know now deflection at b is equal to deflection at a plus alpha is given as theta a Into l minus a. Theta. This is also used in strength of materials. How this comes? How this comes? See, tan theta a is perpendicular. That is alpha upon base is l minus a. And guys, the slope in your beam in your home is very very small. Good morning, Mayur. How are you? देखते देखते सो गया था. Okay, Mayur. Okay. So deflection is very very small. Deflection is uh, or slope is very very small. It can be written as theta a. So alpha is theta into l minus a. Alpha is theta into l minus a. Have you got it? Please give me yes or no. Please give me yes or no. Please give me yes or no. Everybody on the comment section. <coughs> Everybody on the comment section. Everybody on the comment section. Give me yes or no. Yes or no? My battery is not over, but the charger of my phone is over. My battery is not over. See, human battery is not over. This phone, a decent phone, char battery is over. That is the power of human beings. Okay. Now, these are some standard results. We'll be giving you this as PDF. Now, let us do some questions. One by one, every, there are various methods, na. And from strain energy, you can do every question. Every method has some limitations. Like moment areas method is used where there is a zero slope. Zero slope is in fixed beam, in a, in a cantilever beam, at fixed end, and in symmetrical simply supported beam. At center, theta is zero. So the moment area method is here it is zero, na. And at fixed beam, it theta is zero. So moment area method is used where theta is zero. Like in cantilever and symmetrical simply support beams. <coughs> Double integration method is used. Double integration method is used where Double, <coughs> double, double integration method is used, where we can <coughs> write a <laughs> bottle is over na, and I don't want to waste five minutes time. Somebody will come with water. <coughs> See, chinoda is means, but somebody said it's chinoda. माय हेल्थ इज गुड होल वो दो तीन दिन से जुकाम लगा हुआ है नो 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 आई डोंट वांट टू वेट डिस्टर्ब माय मोमेंट आई डोंट वांट टू सी क्या कह रहा था मैं हाँ डबल इंटीग्रेशन मेथड इज यूज्ड वेयर यू कैन राइट अ सिंगल इक्वेशन फॉर द होल बीम ओके Area moment is used where theta is zero, like cantilever and symmetrical supported beam. 
Okay, let me give you a, a chart so that you can do this. I can give you a chart. Strain energy is universal. Universal. Okay, cantilever, frames, prismatic, non-prismatic, everywhere applicable. Double integration is applicable for prismatic beams. Prismatic. Kahan kahan apply kar sakte hai? Is prismatic. No discontinuity, no hinges. And single bending moment equation. Single equation representing whole beam. <coughs> okay, Maclaws means is used when the beam is prismatic and different sections have different bending moment equation. This is Maclaws. Now, area moment is used where where we have it can be used in prismatic and non, non prismatic means cross section may be changed ei can be changed ei can be changed but is preferred preferred on cantilever this chart will be helping you and symmetrically simply supported beams okay okay so strain energy is universal and one is there uh, <clears throat> strain energy double integration maclaws area moment unit load method is not at all required okay so these are the things and conjugate beam method conjugate beam method is can be used but calculations are might be calculation might be lengthy i recommend you that if you have studied some from very beginning and if you studied strength and from very beginning and you study all subjects is fine but if you are only focusing on important things right now you should be focusing on strain energy area movement method only these two strain energy will do everything strain energy will do everything okay let me save this also yaar kahin baad baad mein wo na ho jaye ho gaya सेफ बीच बीच में सेव कर लेना चाहिए ओके ज्यादा नहीं बचा है ओके नाउ मूविंग फर्दर फ्रॉम हियर अब सब करेंगे क्वेश्चन करेंगे एक एक करके करेंगे लाइक दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो सपोज फ्रॉम हियर एट एक्स डिस्टेंस I will do this question from two three types. Let us you, you will understand this. Bending moment at x x is equal to from right hand side you can see it is minus m. Double integration method says that d two y by d x two into e i is write the bending moment like this. Now integrate this e i d y by d x is equal to minus m x plus constant integration c1 at x is equal to l dy by dx is equal to slope is 0 here at the free end so 0 so c1 is equal to ml now again integrating this ei into y dy by dx means theta dy by dx means theta so, E i into y is minus m x square by 2 plus C 1 integration is m l integration will be m l into x plus C 2 at x is equal to l y is equal to 0. So, 0 minus m l square by 2 plus m l square. So, m l square by 2 plus C 2. So, C 2 is equal to minus m l square by 2. Now, suppose I want theta at B. Theta at B means dy by dx at x is equal to 0. So, this is Ei theta A, no, theta B. 
theta b x is equal to 0 it is only c1 so it is ml so theta b is ml by ei okay now suppose i want delta b delta b means y at x is equal to 0 so y this is delta b ei at x equal to 0 this is 0 this is 0 only c2 minus minus means downward deflection ml square by 2 so delta b is equal to guys please give me have you understood this ml square by 2 i everybody please let me know have you understood this okay this was from the double integration method now let me do this from area moment let me take a new slide here kaise lete hain new slide abhi ban ja Mm-hmm. New slide. Okay. Now, what happened? Now, new slide. Now, let me do this from moment area theorem. So, first of all, in moment area theorem, suppose this L L E I. First of all, we make bending moment diagram. Bending moment diagram is like this. After this, we draw m by e i diagram. So this is m by e i. Now area moment first theorem says that theta of what was this a and b difference of theta between two points is difference of theta between two points is area between m by e i diagram. Okay, so this is m by e i into l. Theta a it is fixed it is zero that is why we used in cantilevers because one theta is zero that is why we use in simply symmetrical simply supported one theta is zero theta b is ml by e i <coughs> okay now second theorem says that deflection of b with respect to tangent at a Dif so this deflected shape is like this and since theta is zero so tangent is also this. So actually, this is called deflection of B with respect to tangent at A. Tangent at A is this, and this is actually deflection at B. So from here, what we got it is area ka moment. What is the area? M by E I into L. Area is M by E into L. Moment about this point. So this area can be assumed to be here into moment about this point where we are finding the slope into L by two. So it is ml square by 2e i. Have you got it? Have you got it? Everybody, come on, guys! Please keep sharing. Please keep sharing. Okay. Now comes the method which I recommend you to use if the question is tough. Okay. That this is like this, guys. Everybody will tell you that. Everybody will tell you that find u then del u by del p, find theta, find u then del u by del m will be theta. No, I am giving you a shortcut. And please, I recommend you, I recommend you all, watch my strain energy daily dose or watch my strain energy normal video. <clears throat> okay, watch my strain energy daily dose and watch my strain energy. Normal video where I have told that whole that like I have a an method for SFD BMD na, like I have a an method for SFD BMD na. Similarly, I have a shortcut method in strain energy also that will reduce your time by one third. Please do watch that video. What I told that theta is equal to m x bending moment at any section, then differentiation of that with respect to m n. Into E i upon E i, and wherever the slope is required, name that a special name. I have told everything there. Wherever the theta is required, name it a special name. M n. Okay. So the bending moment at any section from right hand side, you can see minus M n. At the after this step, we can name original name. Original name was M. <laughs> Differentiation with respect to M n is minus one. Integration from zero to L, so it is now M N can be M, M by E I into L. 
गाइस दिस टेक्स ओके इन दिस व्हेन स्ट्रांग क्वेश्चंस और हार्ड क्वेश्चंस विल बी कमिंग ना व्हेन स्ट्रांग क्वेश्चंस और हार्ड क्वेश्चंस विल बी कमिंग ना इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस दिस विल बी इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस दिस विल बी सॉल्व्ड ओके इजीली ओके इन हार्ड क्वेश्चंस इट इज वेरी वेरी इजी नाउ सपोज आई वांट स्लोप सो सो डेल्टा डेल्टा इज एम एक्स वट एवर यूर रिटर्न हियर दिस इज अ शॉर्टकट वट एवर यूर रिटर्न ने डिफ्रेंशिएट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू पी एन इन टू डी एक्स बाई ई ओके नाउ here wherever deflection is required there is load should be acting and that no load should name should be pn in actually there is no pn so at the end we'll make it zero so integration of what is the at any section xx what is the bending moment bending moment is minus pn x <coughs> minus m whatever written here differentiate with respect to pn minus x dx by ei now after this step you can make pn equal to zero because actually there is no load actually there is no load so it is m by ei x square integration will be l square by 2 this is deflection at b have you got it have you got it no no strain manager uh, method is applicable there double integration method falls there <coughs> okay guys winner announce uh, uh, okay one more example okay anu like guys till now whatever data we have anbu prasan lt okay sapnil kiska prasan lt bol diya anbu okay sapnil these are the some leading students exact data will be telling you in the night okay exact data will be telling you in the night okay prince okay Okay, Prince is also there. There, there is Mayur is at the beginning, but then Mayur sleep. Okay, there are four five students. I, exact data will tell you in the night. Okay, but I already told at the beginning that will be very rough. Price is not important, guys. This cash price is much more important is that thing. What is this? Gate result. Agree or me or not? Agree with <coughs> agree with me or not? Okay, suppose I want the deflection at B. so what strain energy method says <coughs> okay what strain energy method says that wherever the load is requ required deflection is required a load should be acting pn since exactly there is no pn so at the end we'll make it zero okay now deflection wherever deflection is required load should be pn and wherever the slope is required moment should be acting mn so deflection is mx whatever written here differentiate with respect to pn into dx upon ei so at xx section see from right hand side <coughs> the bending moment is pnx pnx Minus W X square by two. Whatever written here, differentiate with respect to P N. Minus X into E I. Okay. Now after this, after this step, this को अपनी औकात पे ले आओ. It is zero. After this step, you can put the original values. So it will be W X cube by two E I. dx so putting the values 0 to l wl4 by ati okay got it got it and if suppose geometry is changing like this here it is ei here it is 2 ei like something like this then we have to do this process in parts suppose this is l by 2 so 0 to l by 2 plus writing all these again and again all these things And then L by two to L. We'll take that question in the night. <coughs> okay. Got it. 
got it now this is a nice question a this is b this is w not sin pi xl find the slope at a guys here you cannot apply strain energy because to write strain energy you have to write mx na to write to write strain energy you have to write mx na how you can write mx to te ud jayenge mx nikalte nikalte reaction nikalte nikalte to te ud jayenge okay reaction nikalte nikalte to te ud jayenge okay see at x is equal to 0 at a x is equal to 0 so w is equal to 0 at b x i am measuring from here at b x is equal to l putting l sin pi w is equal to 0 like this like this okay now guys here strain energy method moment area everything is filled very huge calculation will be coming here what to do guys you know that E i d 2 y by d x 2 is equal to m. Now, this you know. Now, differentiate this E i d differentiation of bending moment is shear force. Now, again differentiate this E i d 4 y by d x 4 is equal to load intensity and load intensity is downward. That means minus W naught sin pi x by L. So, we have to start it from here. Because W is known. Shear force bending moment is not that much easy to find out here, guys. <coughs> got it? Got it or not got it? Please let me know. Please let me know. Guys, I am having full power. Full power. Okay, so we'll start it from here. How many of you have uh, done this question from me uh, before also? How many of you have done this question from me earlier also? Please let me know. Now, here integrating this, it will be E i d 3 y by d x 3 integration of sine will be minus cos so w naught cos pi x by l into l by pi plus c1 d3 shear force d3 shear force at x is equal to l by 2 symmetrical sine loading is symmetrical from 0 to pi at x equal to l by 2 shear force is 0 because for symmetrical beams it is here sfd is anti-symmetrical la so, it will be passing from 0, 1 side plus 1 side minus. So, at x is equal to L by 2, it is 0. So, this is 0, this is shear force, this is 0 at L by 2, so C1 is 0. Now, again integrating this, E i d 2 y by d x 2, integration of this will be L square pi square w naught sin pi x by L plus integration C2. D2y by dx2 is bending moment. Bending moment at A is 0. At simply some potato beam. So, at x is equal to 0, this is 0. At x is equal to 0, this whole term is 0. This is 0. This is 0. So, C2 is 0. Okay. Now, again integrating this. E i dy by dx, integration of sine will be minus cos. So, minus L cube pi cube W naught integration of sine will be cos pi x by L <coughs> plus integration constant C3. Okay. Dy by dx is slope for symmetrical beams. BMD is symmetrical. BMD is symmetrical. So, deflected shape is symmetrical. So, at x is equal to L by 2, slope is 0. So, this is 0. L by 2, this is 0. So, this is 0. Now, E i theta a, dy by dx is theta a, is putting here x is equal to 0. So, this cos becomes 1. 
is equal to minus minus means the simple clockwise l cube pi cube into w naught and that value becomes 1 so theta a is equal to minus w naught l cube pi cube into ei this is one type of question this can be done by those students either he is very very intelligent looking like brazil teams logo na either he is very very intelligent or he has done this kind of questions before have you got this have you got this <coughs> okay so guys these are the homework questions that this black color assignment questions you can ask us okay so guys this is the schedule of civil engineering i'll be giving this pdf in uh, dhira sir telegram and my telegram just after 10 minutes just after 10 minutes i'm giving you this <coughs> okay so tomorrow steel structure by sahu sir and in mechanical it will be sonu sir please on the comment box let know let me know that have you enjoyed this let me know that have you enjoyed this this is our telegram mechanical by dhira sir and civil by abhinav sir okay mechanical by dhira sir and civil by abhinav sir this is tonight this is tonight this is 10 am tomorrow complete steel guys subscribe now for more such sessions and this is tomorrow 10 am for mechanical okay please let me know in the comment section have you enjoyed this have you enjoyed this session and for the coming marathons what we can improve what we can improve one is this here i'll be sharing the telegram uh, pdf of this session just in 5 minutes and what not civil not civil here it is mechanical by dhirat sa excellent faculty one telegram is this here i'll be sharing the telegram and also i'll be sharing here also i'll be sharing here also okay and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed till now okay <laughs> अभी पर फाइव मिनट्स में आपको दे दूंगा आई नो द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ पी डी एफ बिफोर वाटर आई विल गिव यू द पी डी एफ बिफोर वाटर आई विल गिव यू द पी डी एफ ओके 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 वन थिंग इज स्मॉल ब्रेक्स ओके यस इट मे बी अराउंड दैट मच ओनली डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सिलेबस ओके वन थिंग इज ब्रेक ओके अदर लेट मी चेक इफ ऑल थिंग्स आर सेव्ड और नॉट सेव्ड सेव्ड saved everything is saved okay what we do here file save as save as or save save as or save what we do what we do here ab likhte kaise hain isme chalo baad mein kar lunga abhi tum ye sab kya dekh rahe ho कैसा लगा भेज दूंगा अभी अभी टेलीग्राम में भेज रहा हूं भाई थैंक यू विजय थैंक यू हैव यू ऑल इंजॉयड ऑल इंजॉयड मजा आया नाइन आवर्स हो गए क्या आई एम नॉट कैलकुलेट नहीं किया मैंने लेकिन अभी एक दो घंटे की और जान बची थी भाई कहूं तो प्रैक्टिस भी अभी करवा दें प्रैक्टिस भी अभी करवा दें टेलीग्राम का लिंक कह रहे हैं बच्चे को ना आजकल ऑनलाइन में इतना बिगड़ गए हैं बच्चे प्यारे प्यारे बच्चे कि इनको अब मतलब टेलीग्राम का नाम लिख दिया लेकिन लिंक दो सर हमें एकदम मतलब लिंक लिंक चाहिए लिंक के बिना हम टाइप नहीं करेंगे हम, हमको तो ऐसा कुछ दो कि मतलब हम एकदम क्लिक करें हम टाइप भी नहीं कर सकते सर आपने नौ घंटे पढ़ा दिया लेकिन हम टाइप नहीं कर सकते सिविल बाय अभिनव सर तो मैं आपको दोनों टेलीग्राम का भी दे दे रहा हूं और संडे का फंडा और डेली रोज देखते हैं आप लोग 
संडे का फंडा और डेली डोज देखते हैं आप लोग कैसा लगता है <coughs> सब्सक्राइब कर लेना गाइस ये रात का सेशन को भी कर लो रात के सेशन का लिंक है ये रात के सेशन का है रात का सेशन बहुत बड़ा नहीं होगा संडे का फंडा डेली रोज पसंद आ रहा है और मैंने एक रैंक वर्सेस मार्क्स का एक वीडियो बनाया था देखो जो जो वीडियो में बोलता हूं ना वो देख लिया करो काम का आएगा रैंक वर्सेस मार्क्स रैंक वर्सेस मार्क्स बनाया था एक कितने रैंक में कितने मार्क्स आ सकते हैं ठीक <coughs> है और थ्री डेज हाउ टू बिकम टॉपर इन थ्री डेज पर्टिकुलर फॉर टू थाउजेंड स्टूडेंट दैट ऑल्सो आई बी टेकिंग कितने रैंक्स में कितना मार्क्स एक्सपर्ट किया जा सकता है अगर ये नहीं देखा है तो मैकेनिकल वाले सूरज सेशंस के लिए धीरज सर कल कल या परसों में सेशन लाएंगे ओके ओके जेके एस का भी टू बी वेरी फ्रेंक कोई प्लान नहीं है और आप कमेंट बॉक्स में आपके जो भी सजेशंस होंगे जो भी फीडबैक होगा जो भी आपको अपकमिंग सेशन चाहिए होंगे प्लीज लेट मी नो ओके सो दिस इज अभिनव नेगी साइनिंग ऑफ आई होप You enjoyed this video a lot, okay? And uh, tomorrow is your next session of mechanical by Sonu sir and civil by Sahu sir, and this will be at the midnight, okay? <clears throat> sir, in mock test, I am getting seventy to eighty marks. How can I improve more? Seventy to eighty is first of all, it's very good. How can you improve more? That depends on. That is stable. You are getting less marks. That two subjects are incomplete. Then of course that means nothing other improvement is required. You have to cover those topics or these things. And since two subjects cannot be done in the last month, so it's better to go for the only important topics. And if your all syllabus is complete, then you have to judge either that mistake is conceptual, time management, silly mistake. Let me be very frank. Nobody can tell you that how to improve. Because you only know that this mistake is due to silly mistake, due to lack of concepts, lack of syllabus coverage. You all, you all, you are the only one who knows this. <coughs> okay. Yes, guys. Anything else? Thank you, thank you all, guys. Take care. Subscribe the channel for more such sessions, guys. Okay. Thank you, thank you for your wonderful support, wonderful love that you have given us in this session. Many of you were here from last nine hours continuously in the comment section. Even me and Hiras are switching. We are having time to uh, get relaxed, but many of you are here continuous. Okay, so thank you guys. Take care. All the best, and always remember, Gate gives a good career, but a good career is not only by Gate. There are multiple more exams. If gate is cleared, excellent. Otherwise, there are many more exams coming in the new future in the next couple of months. Thank you, guys. Take care. All the best. Thank <laughs> you.